college football at the beach is hit or miss. Some teams like Miami in the 80s caught fire and changed the game. This is often not the case as teams like FIU or Hawaii would rather catch a wave than get serious about a national championship run. Laid back, not serious, mediocre, just a few labels that beach schools often get labeled. And unfortunately for the beautiful city of San Diego, no professional sport has been able to bring home the ship. Plus, the Chargers abandoned them. Besides a recent March Madness run in basketball by the Aztecs, putting faith in Aztecs football to win a national championship seems far-fetched. That's where the newest college football program comes to play. Tony Hawk and Blender's Eyewear, two San Diego purists, have teamed up together to invest $101 million into starting its new college at Salona Beach with the goal of bringing the city a championship football program. Sponge make up a vibrant ocean ecosystem across the San Diego County. From gray moon sponge to rare glass sponge, scientists have recently uncovered a new poisonous sponge species, the killer sponge, right off our beaches here in Salona. Hence, the Salona Beach sponges were born. A team full of walk-ons and ex-flag football players. Salona Beach was graciously invited to the Mountain West. However, they are the worst team in college football. 134 games later, will that still be the case? Or will a beach school go on one of the greatest runs in college football history and do something that has never been done before? Welcome to Salona Beach Sponge Football. It is time to soak them up. For Salona Beach, Tony Hawk's first order of business was to hire Philip Rivers as the coach to lead this team forward. Let's go ahead and meet the team. Quarterback Dylan Wave in his final year of eligibility was actually a senior leading the flag football club at the University of San Diego before receiving a call from Philip Rivers and co. He made an immediate impact as a walk-on during the spring game and secured the starting role. Wide receiver Kenny Shoulders, former high school track star, has some burst to him, but the five foot seven senior receiver will have a tall task at hand to lead the sponges in their inaugural season in the Mountain West. Brent Martin, a fourth string sophomore receiver transfer from Rutgers, majoring in biochemical engineering, wanted to get some play time on the gridiron, so coming back home to Salona Beach was an appealing move for the sophomore. He should lead us onward as the seniors graduate. Tight end, Rock Boston, what a name. Like Brent, this is another young gun, a freshman who has potential to shine going forward in our rather unimpressive first year roster. Offensive line is just rough across the board, if we're being honest. Dennis Broxton, a freshman defender defensive back and former two-way high school athlete followed his girlfriend to school from Illinois to San Diego. He thought he done gave up his dream to play and settle down. Wrong. He got done dirty, but Philip Rivers thankfully was there at the right place at the right time. Dennis began his gym arc and was given a second chance to play again for Salona Beach. Cam Brown, a junior linebacker from Mississippi, will lead the linebacking core for the next couple years. Brief look at the rest of the defense. We have a lot of holes and we're gonna need to start addressing that in recruiting. Can't forget the best player on the roster, Kai Smallwood, but there's nothing small about his leg. Let's jump into the recruiting board. There are a couple stipulations for the series. Until we win a bowl game, we can only recruit three-star prospects or less. And stipulation number two, we can only recruit prospects from a state that borders an ocean. And it's not just the Pacific Ocean here in Cali. We can go ahead and get them from the Atlantic Ocean or the Gulf of Mexico. This is the sponge way. Wherever you can find a sponge, those are our guys. Okay, well, this is easy to avoid our first stipulation because uh, no one's interested in us that's higher than a three-star. I think we just need reinforcements. So I'm just gonna start and target anyone that's just interested in us. I think any of these three stars would be a major help. Most of these guys will be upgrades. So I say we just start giving some scholarships out. Thank goodness Brandon Moore, a nice looking three-star athlete is from New Jersey because I see 84 throw power, 75 accuracy among some other promising trades. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Salona Beach opens up against Hawaii in a battle for the basement in the Mountain West. Salona Beach taking on the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors, man. This is gonna be a fun one. Absorbent Field is the site for this one in Northern San Diego. I applied some of the realistic harder sliders to make the experience more challenging. All right, who's ready to get this party started? Let's hand it off to Horde. Two yards. There it is, the first play in school history. We're gonna need to settle in with the accuracy because that was crazy as Brent Martin bust one through and a stiff arm, keep it going, oh man. Here we go, new set of downs. I'm going deep for Rock Boston. And that's an interception. There we go, 
Oh, man, he's going deep. He's going deep. Make a play. Broxton, what are we doing? We got it all covered. We got it covered up. Come on. Yes, let's go, Broxton. Oh, my goodness, big pick. Cut back. Let's go. Just about to crack into the red zone. There we go. We got it to shoulders. He's got a burst. He's headed down the sideline. Third and goal. We're dialing up the sprint. And I see Brent. Oh, man. We settle down and just take our three. And there is the first points in Solana Beach history. Send in the blitz. Get Brown in there. Push. It's going deep. This could be a good play for us. Yes. Gene Lewis making the play. Taking it back our way. Let's go. Play actions are a big part of our game here, but there's just nowhere to go. Can I throw it away, please? Thank you, game. And that's intentional grounding. Absolutely brutal, man. So brutal that the ticker for second down can't even tell me what down it is. And Hawaii with a strip sack fumble. Touchdown. Big third down here. Let's make something happen. There we go. The curl route. Gaiman is open. Over the middle. Wheeler says, give it back to me. I will get that first down. Risky, but I'm going to run a quick slant. Let's see what happens. Outside. We got a man. Wheeler, four, six. There it is. Sponges on the board. Dylan Wave throws his first touchdown pass. We're right back in this game. The defense has been holding. Offense finally gets the job done. We're not finished yet as we're going to go for two to narrow this thing down to a three-point deficit. Got to cash in with the right play. Let's see if we got it here. I'm going to drop it off. Ah, defense by Williams. Let's hit up Rock Boston. There we go. The freshman tight end makes his first catch over the middle. Yes, Wheeler, the man that scored the touchdown and having a great game. Let's see what we can do. Dumping it off to Horde. There it is. Six. Come on, man. We're going for two. Let's see what we can do here. We're going to dump it off to Rock Boston. Get through, big fella. Oh, man. This game's not over yet. Has what a dive by Ashlock. All they need is field goal range. And uh, they're working their way down. He's going deep. He's got him. Are you kidding me? Tackle him. Tackle him. Tackle him. Oh, oh no. It's not over till that final whistle blows. But uh, do I have a chance here? We don't have the arm to get it to him. Solana's got a road ahead of them. I was encouraged at some things, but I was expecting some heartbreak just like that. Despite the heartbreaking loss, somehow Philip Rivers levels up like four more times. I don't really get that, but I can't complain. Brandon Moore, let's scout him out. He is a gem after all with great speed, throw power. This man will probably be the QB of the future. Here we go. Alex Brown, speaking my language, gem prospect. Let's juice up those points. Week two against the Lobos. And uh, you know it's rough when the Lobos make you look silly and have a 10 point overall differential than you. Week two back in Solana Beach going against the Lobos in this one. Dylan Wave looking to be much more efficient in this one. He doesn't want to go down like one for 11 in his passing line like he did last week. I think Phil Rivers wants to go down as one of the most aggressive coaches in college football because uh, we're going for it. Fourth and nine. We're past midfield. It's the whole past midfield mentality. Like what much difference does it make? And I didn't even want that to happen. I'm going to be a buck. Like, I thought I was throwing a bullet pass, and that thing lobbed up in the air for far too long. Hello, old friend. Pass midfield, fourth down play. We're doing it again. Fourth and 11. Blitz is coming in hot. And I just couldn't even throw it. Cam Brown. A little too late. Christian Washington. Four, six. Second and one. I feel pressure, but Wave gets out of the way and gets his way down the sideline. A spin move. Wave putting on a show. Dylan Wave is having a way today, and he just gets the six. Back to Wheeler, the go-to man who scored one in the last game, gets another in week two. Eight seconds left. Lobos somehow get their way down here really fast. This will send us into halftime with a six-point deficit. Lobos score awfully fast, so we need to get to work on offense and... Yeah, I don't know what type of read that was. Third and goal, motion, receiver. Let's make a big play. The slip screen really did fool us there. Can he get out of his tackle? This one is out of reach. We're getting embarrassed by the Lobos, which is embarrassing to say, to say the least. We lose 34 to seven to the New Mexico Lobos. Look at the stats. Honestly, man, it's just ugly all around. Couldn't get the run game going. Couldn't get much going in general here. Back to the recruiting board we go. Thank goodness we're pulling away with Brandon Moore. All right, all right, it's rivalry week. Taking on Coastal Carolina. 
in the Battle of the Beaches. This year in week three, both of our schools are 0-2 in the young season. Someone's got to get their first win in this rivalry game. What a scene on the teal field. The sponges are in town. First time on the road for Phillip Rivers and the squad. There's got to be some work done in this game. Dylan Wave is injured and Sherman is getting the start today. This is a significant downgrade, but let's see if he can at least show what he's worth in this game. As he finds game and nice, desperately needing Dylan Wave back as the offense is just stuttering all around. You tell me, is this a cry for desperation? Because realistically, we're not getting this fourth down conversion. There's just nowhere to go again. Even worse, we get sacked and they have better position. Defense was not going to be able to hold forever. It's first and goal, and McCall is just going to keep it. Touchdown. Shut out by our rival. Only able to muster up 106 total offensive yards this game. We are going to have to suffer for two more weeks without Dylan Wave as he's dealing with a broken toe. So far, dead last in offensive points per game. But we're headed back to Salona Beach for this one against the Roadrunners. Well, shoot, I'll be darn for a boss. Bottom ranked offense, the Roadrunners just annihilate us on defense and score easily. Well, you haven't missed much of importance here. We're down at 19-0, only mustering up 46 total yards compared to their 250. First and 10 in a little bit of desperation mode. We're going to go deep. We have a man. He has a step. Gaiman breaks a tackle, and that's a touchdown for the Sponges. Why not just last gas, throw up a Hail Mary for good old sake. Gaiman try to come back to it, but yeah. It's out of reach. It's going to be a step in the right direction the day that we can score more than two touchdowns in a game. We had to remove a few guys from our board that we were losing the race on, so I'm going to add a couple more guys. And out of these three-star players right here that I'd like to recruit, I can only recruit Douglas because uh, Stallings and McBride are from states that do not border an ocean. We got a rainy one up next at Colorado State. Let's see if the sponges can soak up this rain. Dylan Wave is back, making his return for the sponges, scrambling out. He's got a receiver and he throws a wobbly <laughs> inaccurate ball. Third and 22. Just need to dial up something to get a lot of these yards back. And that might do. Shoulders couldn't hold on. Sponge is still looking for that ever elusive first school win. And let's see if Brent Martin and the Sponges can get a nice sustaining drive on this one. Remember, Kai Smallwood doesn't have a small leg. He should have a big leg enough to shank that one. Second and goal. Got some slants across here. I'm... I read that like in, in Madden with the 10 foot vertical jumps and, and lurking, like that would have been a user lurk. Second and 10, there we go. Up the middle looks open. Bundy's got it. First and goal. This has been a killer drive right now. We just need to, oh, I had a guy. And are you serious? Are you really serious right now? Third and nine. We are moving it slowly, but surely. Let's hit the curl flat. Brent Martin shrugs one off, makes a nasty move. An abysmal three out of 12 times have we converted on third down. Thankfully, Shoulders redeems himself there. It's sad, yes, but the reality is I haven't been able to trust our kicker at all in these conditions. Lovely. They should nail this, get a two possession lead, and we're gonna fall. Again, anything on the table here. Let's just throw it deep. See if Brent Martin come back for it. Nah. Hardridge is the one that comes back for it, makes the pick. Vamos sponges onward to North Texas. First and goal. Touchdown. Here we go. First and 10. Let's hit it out to Perkins. He holds on. Dylan Wave dropping back to survey the field. He goes outside. He's got Kenny shoulders. Second and one. Play action. Looks like Perkins had a little bit of room there. No, he didn't. Let's just be real. He didn't. I really haven't wanted to waste your time showing you much of this one because it's been a blowout. Third and 10, a little flat here to shoulders. Just wave and shoulders not on the same page. That's just been the story of the season so far. Perkins though, getting us right down to the goal line. Third and goal. Over the middle, I see someone. Make a play, Perkins reaches for that one. There has been no questions for the North Texas faithful and uh, they're just putting it, putting it on us, man. Mean green all over the place. San Diego State has had it easy here in San Diego being the only team, but now a new rivalry is born with Salona Beach looking to be the premier and go-to San Diego school. But honestly, it might be a minute until Salona Beach is in the conversation because the Aztecs, well, they're still a better team for now. First and 10, they got a running back in motion. It's a handoff anyway. I was there, but just whiff. And Davis runs right through us. 
and he is into the end zone. Well, that's another opening drive with our defense giving up points, but Gaiman breaks free on the first play on offense. He has got a lane. He is headed down the field for a 51-yard catch and run, and just like that, we also mean business, and Perkins says, I also mean business, and we're down into the red zone. Nothing doing on this drive. Kai, I need you, my friend. Please hit this. Third and seven. Just need someone to come up here. Let's just drop this one down low. Shoulders, thankfully, gets right past the defender. Second and ten here. Britt Martin across the middle of the field. Wide open. Can he keep it put chugging down to the first and goal? Let's just take our three once more. Kai cashes it in. 13 seconds left in the half. I'm going to go over the middle to Martin. Brent, touchdown. First and 10. Sprinting out with the QB. Going to throw this one down to shoulders. He's got a massive lane. And he's going to keep it churning. Oh my goodness. Fourth and 11. I think we're just going to run the classic deep attack. See if something works. And that is going to work. Shoulders. No, my goodness, man. I was just calling complimenting you guys on offense. You had a wide open six. This game is this close to slipping out of the hands of our guys as we're just crumbling. All the hope that I had and encouragement is pretty much gone. Fourth and three. Rock Boston, you're open. Why don't you make a big play for us? Stiff arm that man. Keep it moving. Second and 10. Let's just chuck one up. Is that shoulders? He's got the step. This time he comes through. Just like that. Don't count the sponges out because we're down within the red zone. I got an opportunity to scramble here. Dylan Wave got a block. He keeps it in himself. The sponges refuse to back down. And we're going to just take Perkins here to get us some yards. First and 10. Looking to scramble out here. We got some room. Let's just keep it ourselves. Dylan Wave got the legs, keeps it upfield, moves around a guy. Fourth and one, game on the line here, effectively. Yep, 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 yep. Timmons, way to go. Second and goal. Let's look out for our tight ends here. Rock Boston keeps it, plugs up the middle. I don't know how they're going to tell me that he was short, but I don't like this call. I'm calling a timeout. Let's get Phillip Rivers on the sideline to draw something up. Okay, this is what we're going with. The pressure looks immense. Fourth and goal. I'm going to scramble out. I got room. Dylan Wave. Six. First OT action in sponge history. This is a historic moment for the series. There will probably be plenty of OT games to come in the years to come. And uh, we want to come out victorious, but Kristen's just going to make us look silly. QB keeper. I called pass because, well, the gun empty there really fooled me. Dylan Wave having the game of his lifetime. He would love to top this one off with a dub. And on the run, he finds Perkins. Second and goal. Who is going to step up for us? Couple options here. Brent moving. Brent's open. Touchdown. Back on offense for double OT. Rock Boston down below makes the grab. Second and four, another big overtime drive needed here. Perkins gonna run that man over. First and 10, play action. There's some pressure coming in. This looks scary, feels scary. On the run, had a guy, but the receiver gave up on it. Apparently I ran out of space. Not sure when my recording just randomly stopped, but it's uh, triple overtime and Maiden is just continuing to make it look silly out here. Triple overtime rules, you have to go for two. So this could be make or break. If we can get a stop here, this would be incredible. And that was good coverage. It has been a tough ask in itself to keep up on offense, but now we got to keep up even more. Timmons, wave to Timmons as he was getting destroyed. Second and goal, back to the air, across the middle. Looks like Perkins has, would have had it. Third and goal, let's drop it out to the curl flat. That was dangerous. Oh man, I'm sweating. Fourth and goal, triple overtime. It has been an impressive showing just to get this far, but I would love to keep this thing going. Perkins. We're going to go down to the Aztecs in this inaugural rivalry game, but man, there will be fireworks for years to come. Check out Dylan Wave's stat line. 443 passing yards, three touchdowns, and then he added two rushing as well. This lessens the heartbreak just a little bit. Brandon Moore has officially committed to Salona Beach, and this is our first big time recruit. San Jose is next as we try to shake off heartbreak against the Aztecs. We're not even really going to bother with this game. Look, at that score. Y'all don't need to see what's going on here. Just close your eyes. It'll be much better as Rock Boston cashes in for six. But hey, we're only down by 40 now. Traders, Andrew Hall, Ethan Washington, two top corners on our list committed to our rival. Finally headed back to Salona. We got some recruits visiting us as we take on the one in seven Bulldogs. Feels good to be home. Yes, we're 0 and 8, but we got some Salona Beach faithful in the stand still rooting us on. Third down here. Hank Bachmeyer looking for something. He's going 
going deep. He's got a man so open out there. Get off the block there. That read option is causing some problems as Hank Bachmeyer looking like Vince Young running a cover three sink here on third and goal. See how it does. I just whiff right by Allen. Thankfully, we still hold him for fourth down. Couple big plays. All they get, though, is three out of it. Hurrying it back up to the line. Let's catch the defense off guard with this one. Brent looks so open. Gets hit hard, but he holds on for that big first down. Let's scramble out here. There's a little bit of a zone coverage. Dylan Wave, though, got the leg. Slides down for the first. If Dylan Wave can replicate how he played that one game against the Aztecs, I think we're going to win a ball game one of these days. Second and inches, looking for someone again. Over the middle, looks like Rock, and Rock holds on. What a catch. What a play. Huge stand on defense. Turns to more offense as we get a wide open Perkins. He's becoming a favorite target. First and 10. Over the middle, looks open again. And guess who? It's Perkins. All right, we're not going to get too greedy in this one because we want a win after all. Tech getting close right outside the red zone. We need to make a stop. That is not the stop. Third and 10. Middle looks open once more. That's Wheeler, who's got some space. He's trying to get down the sideline. He's got an open lane, fighting all the way to the last yard. He is right there, just outside the end zone. Encouraging play here. Going across for the slant. I am a doofus. Third and 21. Just want some yardage here. We're going to go over the middle. Perkins is a machine today. Perkins, the senior tight end, literally like the only reason we're still in this game. Brandon Moore is a great recruit to bring in and all, but I really need offensive line help. We're taking our field goal. I am a little worried because Smallwood sometimes has a small wood when he's kicking it, but he's got that one third and 10 if we can get the stop here we'll get the ball back so this is encouraging stuff to see dropping him for a big sack sponges get this ball back second and 10 for the sponge crew dropping it down for the curl shoulders makes the catch over his shoulder i don't want to sound like a whiner but uh waves got to be one of the most pressured quarterbacks in the nation second and 10 this team's got some heart we're going outside gaming catches it what a snag first and goal come on we need some points and uh, rock boston under underneath get in big fella yes well the sponges just two timeouts remaining we gotta not let anything else happen and well let's just let him score Louisiana Tech starting to chew the clock I'm gonna hold on to our last couple timeouts for as long as I can I actually just let him score we are honestly as sad as it sounds better off hedging our bets with the offense and our two timeouts to go so let's get to work we got a man, Brent, big play. There we go, hurry up, 15 seconds. I still got two timeouts, so I'm keeping that in mind. In the back of my pocket, I found Gaiman. Second and 10, nine seconds left. Who's gonna get open? Sacked. All right, fourth and 18, last play here. Hail Mary, we're gonna go deep for the end zone to Brent, to someone. No one's there, we lose heartbreaking again man i'm telling you three prospects commit to us after that heartbreaking loss and adam allen wesley mcfadden chris young get ready because you guys are going to be thrusted into a starting role this is problematic a black hole has appeared i don't know why my college football revamped is a black field for unlv um i tried rebooting it even a couple times same issue persists so i'll have that looked into for at least the next season but for now we just send this one out and it looks like we're going to go down 21-7. Back for some more against Utah State. The Aggies come to town against Salona Beach. Utah State already bowl eligible. Man, what a dream it would be to be one of those schools. Martin behind the defense. They couldn't react in time. First and 10. Coming out slinging again. Brent looks open once more. He has gotten involved early. It's quickly become the all Brent show as he's open again for the third catch in a row. Will Brent be the one to take us to the promised land? We want a dub. Going deep. Brent is there. Touchdown. Second and 10. Rock Boston. You're open, my friend. Break through and go all the way. Throw a mean stiffy. Do what you got to do. We've played conservative in the past, taking our three points but look how far that's gotten us i think we just got to put the pedal to the metal fourth down we're going for it and we're going to go to the slant man gaiman had it in his hands and i don't regret not going for three because you should have caught that ball fourth and short just need something small here anything will do but i'm just going to keep it with my own legs i can do this and i got the block and i'm going to put on a move and i'm going to stay up okay we do got one second left and that's for you kai going up and in get through someone tackle that man we're down they are loading the box on this one and i see a wide open man streaking down the field gaming again you're selling me dude you're you're gonna be gone i hope you're a senior and you can graduate and go your own way we had something close and it turned out to be a utah state thumping another week another couple recruits committing to us so 
exciting times for the sponges, at least for year two of the dynasty. The season finale and senior day for sponge seniors. This is the final game of year one. For the final game, we have a handful of recruits visiting us, so it'd be nice to go all out. Salona Beach looking to cap off year one on a positive note. For all the seniors on this team, we have got to come alive. I don't want to let down our good friend here, Dylan Wave. Boston says, I got you, man. Second and 12. I'm going to do a QB sprint out, see if anyone gets open. Drop it down. Sioli just read me like a book. Third down, second half action. It's honestly kind of a miracle that we're still in this game right now. I'll call the bench. Why not? Shoulders. Makes the play. Second and 10. Anyone going to spring open? Tight end. Looks like he's got it. Perkins. Big touchdown. Nevada just sustaining an efficient drive all the way down the field. Big stop here. Cam Brown with the stuff. The junior linebacker has been one of the really only consistent pieces out here on defense. There hasn't been much to really hang your hat on throughout the season. And lie to just sheds a man. Four, six. Going for two because they want to get this game back within seven. And... We just don't want this to happen at all. And we'll stuff that all day. Now, I don't know what it looks like on paper, but Philip Rivers' fourth down conversion throughout this season probably hasn't been too great, but I guarantee you half of them are because our receivers can't catch the ball or make a play to leap or attempt to catch the ball. A field goal here, though, makes it, what, a, a bigger deficit? And he's got it. Man, and that is going to be the smell of defeat. We're on to bigger and better things next season. Absolute worst case scenario for the sponges going 0-12 this season, but hey, it was almost kind of expected when you're 50 overall. Dylan Wave, 2,300 passing yards, 13 touchdowns, 17 ints. He was sacked 37 times. There is literally nothing to write home about in the rushing department. Our top three receivers were all seniors, so they're gone. Brent Martin and Rock Boston, two young guys, are going to have to lead this team forward. LeBron Mallory came away with eight sacks this season. That's nice. And then two picks for Devontae Jean Lewis. Dennis Broxton, our young DB, is going to need to keep hitting the gym art because he's going to have to step up big next year. Phillip Rivers' job security is understandably low at 0-12. Tony Hawk is patient enough to still give another season because he believes in the process. Look at all the graduating seniors. My goodness, are we going to even have a team? There we go. Mark Wood, Alex Brown, both come into Salona Beach. And then we did get Dallas Andrews as well. Despite being the worst team in college football, we still managed to pull off the 94th best recruiting class. The off-season training went well. Brent Martin plus five, Cam Brown plus five, Timmons and Rock Boston plus five. Love to see it. So yeah, the quarterback room Room, scary. It's time to start year two and let's start it with a bang. Before we kick off the season with some gameplay, Philip Rivers identified some studs to add to the roster if we can just recruit them in. Jim Hicks, Justin Welsh, two Cali DBs with 90 plus speed would be great to bring these guys in. Vince Manning, Eric Mooney, William McConnell, just a few more names to keep an eye on. Plus six overall from last season, the upward ascent begins now. Back in black for opening week, we mean business and we're taking on FCS West in a rainy San Diego night. And now we get a first look at the offense with Brandon Moore and Turner underway. Dylan Wave was severely handicapped with what he had at running back last season and uh, Brandon Moore, oh my goodness, put him on a spin cycle. Second and long, let's drop back. And we get sacked again. The offensive line still a pain point. And all of a sudden, it's third and 34. We're going to go across the middle. Just deflected. Yo, where's Brandon Moore? Did he already get hurt? Thankfully, we picked up Adam Allen out of the recruiting portal. So we have a comparable freshman backup as well. Breaking news. Moore bruised his sternum. So he will be out for the game. Freshman quarterback Adam Allen and Turner, the running back, will get most of the load. Fourth and four. Big play coming up here. Adam Allen scrambling out. He does have a receiver, so he's going to dump it to him. And Bembry, what a catch to keep this drive alive. Clock winding down. End of the first. We're going to get a playoff to Rock Boston and get another first down. We're going to go out to Brent Martin. He's got some space. He throws one man down and keeps it pushing. Do a little receiver motion here. Read option. Handing it off to Turner. He's going to go up the middle. What a carry. I feel like I can almost get a tear to my eye just how effective the running game feels third and eight I can imagine yep the pass is coming I got this all covered up 
Who's he going to go to? He's going deep outside. How does he even come down with that? Oh, yeah, we had a man. We still do. We have him. Wow. We had him just sitting there waiting for us. Three points is better than nothing. Let's let Kai do his thing and cash in so we can take the lead going into half. 21. Can you do something for me? All the way to the end zone for me, baby. Third and goal within the five. We're going to keep it with Adam's legs, pushing it in. And thanks to some key defensive stops, this is the first time I'm able to say this. This. We can really just ice this one out. Oh my goodness, Kozart. Where were you in this historic moment of time? Salona Beach, year two, week one, gets the dub. Donnie Turner, player of the game. We are one step closer for a dynasty. Maybe it's just a matter of time until these stands are packed with fans that don't just want to come for the free sponges. This is not a drill. The Salona Beach sponges are 1-0. Some early recruiting wins with Welsh, Manning, and Avery, then losing on a pair of Derricks. Week two, it's Texas Tech week, and this will tell an awful lot about our season to come. Brooks at running back will give our defense fits, but it don't matter. Our defense ready to soak it up at absorbent field. Maybe we can get the stop here and get off the field and dropped again. No, he got out of it, and he's still going to launch one up. Oh, Oh my goodness are you kidding me i'm just sending the house up the middle option play what a stand Taj brooks got dropped off by gene lewis we love to see it and the defense stands at the goal line third and eight what's it gonna be is this curl gonna get open Bembry still hauls it in somehow philip rivers and the coaching staff clearly not comfortable with our kicker in this situation so let's just hand it off get through turner we love it all right more dropping back to pass let's see what you got over the middle yes sir mccorter third and goal let's scramble out play a little backyard football here i'm gonna dump it oh i had a chance not gonna get too greedy let's just take three and tie it up first and goal raiders drove down pretty easily willis tops it off second and six like to see someone get open here we do have brent on the outside making a nice snag first and ten outside receiver is gonna have a chance here it's bembry he breaks free doesn't look like too much pressure up the middle. Hand off to Cozart. What a play call. Touchdown. Second and 10. Gonna drop it underneath. I am a fool. Just pure stupidity on my last play call there. And thankfully, though, we're gonna get one more chance. We're just gonna look for someone to get open. Scrambling out. No one's open. I'm just gonna keep it with more. He fumbles it. And that's gonna be ball game. Despite my costly errors here at the end, I'm pleasantly surprised with how the team stuck with it. That didn't feel good. But you know what will feel good? Winning the Battle of the Beaches. This time, we are in San Diego. Down by a touchdown. Rock Boston. <sighs> It was a good read by the DB. I'll give him that. But man, look at the score now. But seriously, no need to waste any more time on this one. We got our butt handed to us as the backups are just getting reps. Has it really even been a rivalry yet? We haven't scored any points against Coastal. Just got done booking travel for a few of our main guys like Vince, Avery, William, Jim, and you already know, Mark Coleman. But now we get to move into Mountain West Conference play. Rams up first. Both squads struggling. One in two starts for the Rams and the Sponges. Third and long. Are we going to have even a chance to get this one off? I think we do. On the run, Brandon Moore to Bembry. Moving the ball right down the field. We're going to keep it pushing. Bembry just runs over a man for a insane touchdown. Definitely skeptical of play actions, but we're going to try again here. Rock Boston, you got some room. Make a play. Break free. Keep it going. Third and three. Going to jump it down to Brent. He's got it. Crucial first down conversion there, and Kozar is just going to do the rest. Here we go. Third and goal. This is big. He's going to scramble out. We couldn't stop him. A very pass-happy drive, and we're going to go to Boston across the middle. He secures it. Sprint, big fella. He's got six. Fourth and five. This is incredible. We have them going for it. We have to make this stand in this game. is just about stamp. One positive to this is that at least the clock's getting churned up as they're moving down the field. The team's going for two. If they can't convert, it is going to be a nine-point difference, which is two possessions. So this is a massive two-point play. We're, we're boxing that up. No, they don't get it. This was a turning point for the sponges, man. Brandon Moore, very efficient on all sides of the game. 
got it done today as we take care of business. Sweet, sweet victory brings its rewards. We can upgrade Phillip Rivers. Let's give him kitchen sink. Week six, rivalry game with San Jose State. This is a big one because we have a lot of recruits visiting. Ah, back to the beautiful city of San Diego and Salona Beach. Third and two, running a speed option. Just gonna keep it ourselves. Brandon Moore says, get in there. Down right to the red zone we go. Read option, Brandon Moore's keeping it. He's running through people, but now I can't help but notice our troop bruised his ribs on that last play and is going to be out for one whole quarter. Enter Adam Allen, the backup freshman quarterback, getting some snaps here, going across to Brent. You know, I believe Adam can also run a nice read option on fourth and goal. I think we want to go for it. Bruh. All right, it's official. I regret going for it. Is uh, they got down here and scored a touchdown within seconds. Man, oh man, how do we get here? Back against the wall once more. We're gonna have to scramble out. I do see a lot of open field. We could probably get this first down on our own. Yes, sir. Third and ten. Just gonna dial up some slants. We're gonna scramble. I think Bembry's gonna get open, and I threw that too early. That's on me. Why is the running back so unstoppable? Come on. San Jose State gets the win in this rivalry game. We are yet to beat our rivals in any game so far. Losing always hurts, but let's see if the Phillip Rivers effect was in full swing and we were able to convince any recruits to come to our school anyway. We got a few good ones, but unfortunately, some of the bigger names, I don't think we got many points. Two and three on the season. Let's get right against the Wolfpack. Traveling to Nevada, the sponges are on the road looking to get right. Another option type motion play there. Hayes just gives the stiff arm and scores. Brandon Moore is out for the game with a concussion. So Oh, it's over to Adams we go. This is definitely a real opportunity for Allen to prove he can hang and can make some plays happen just like this one. And when you're looking for Rock, he'll get it done for you. Second and 11. Brent over the middle might be the right play. We got him and he is short again. Let's not be silly. Let's just hand this ball off and score. Big turn of events and great field position here. Going deep for Brent. He's got it. Second half action. Let's see if Allen can keep it alive for the sponges. Gonna go deep. He's got him man. Brent makes the catch man oh man we're so close let's just hand it off on the stretch to turner walk in touchdown well shoot i knew philip rivers had something to prove but hey did you think we would come in here and be three and three in our first six games of year two this is already above expectations and it looks bright with these freshmen at the helm boom the cherry on top chris thomas nick battle are committed and coming to salona beach the battle for san diego comes to salona beach this year and if you saw last year's battle for san diego it was a movie if it gets anywhere near like last year this is gonna be crazy second inches we're gonna just run a triple option here and i got stuffed let's give that play a second try i think we can make it work and absolute terrible decision hey what's a rivalry without a little bit of suspense a boy brent making a move what a filthy play nothing like getting jiggy with it and breaking some ankles along the way rock what you got for me what a bounce back drive we are putting together after a costly fumble first in goal no problem back to turner he just plunges in for six. Third and 11 four verts why the heck not gonna go deep i think we got a man can he connect brent martin for six i just need someone to rough someone up man Let's give him a pound town. Nope. Second and four, dropping back. It's a handoff draw, and that's going to work extremely well. Almost better than I thought. We're aggressive on fourth and goal. This one might be a little dumb, to be honest, because three points would be good right about now. But hand it off. <laughs> I swear, if we lose this game because of that boneheaded mistake, I'm not going to be able to live it down. What? That's even better. Let's do a little showboat. Do a little dance. Fourth and 10. This year's rivalry game comes down to this play. Who's going to host up the Surfers Cup? It's going to be us. Our first ever victory over a rival. This one is sweet. This pick six was the nail in the coffin. He just couldn't get anything open. And Spell said, thank you, sir. Love to see a post game screen looking like this. A few commits coming to the cause. Reloading our board. We got some more guys we can scout out. Brent Burrell, nice looking running back here. Let's go ahead and give Brent a scholarship and max amount of points. Matt Smith as well. And lastly, Kyle Taylor looks good too. Taking the fight to Troy. We're on the road. Let's give it a go. They're out in the empty set. Could be a design QB keeper is my thought. 
Nope, it's a pass after all, and he's got a wide open Ross. Third and seven, dropping back. Boston, that's for you. Second and 12, a little bit of play action. I think Brock Boston's got a good play here. He holds a Han. No play actions here, but Rock Boston, there is that man again. When we needed the tight end most, he is stepping up for us, and I see him in the back of the end zone. We're going to find him. There's a drop. Could have tied this thing up on that one, but we're just going to hand it off. I think Cozart wants to get the job done for us anyway. Last time we went to OT was the battle for San Diego last year. This time is against Troy. Third and eight. This is a big down. He's going to go outside. He's got a man. Lewis goes all the way. Crucial third down here. QB sprint out. See if we can get outside. We're going to cut it back up the middle because I think our legs can get that first down. Fresh set of downs and fresh set of Turner action, cutting his way in and out for a touchdown. Let's see who's got that dog in him on double OT and Rock Boston across the middle. Do you got that dog? Yes, sir. In double OT, there was this glitch, this glitch right here where they give me the ball back after scoring. And you know what happens? They give me the automatic win because they assume Troy did not score. Absolute devastation for the Troy Trojans. And I feel like I just cheated myself to this win, but there's really nothing I could have done. Salona Beach is now five and three. Take one dub in the game and take a second dub in the recruiting portal. I have been avoiding these for a little while now. Let's try out the all limes. Air Force Academy is in town. Salona Beach is the location. Running the play action. Got an open rock. Rock, Boston, rumbling his way to first and goal. Falcons with a stingy goal line defense. It's working out for them right now, and they're going to get a stop. Phillips not going to be uber aggressive as he usually is. He'll take his three points. Should be easy for the Falcons kicker here to just get three points. Third and four. Where is this Falcons offense coming from? Broxton gets just manhandled. All right, no more Mr. Nice Guy. We're going to have to get this thing pumping and... That's pumping the wrong direction. I am choosing to go for it here and now because we're so close, and I think this is our best chance. Turner got decked. I thought he had the touchdown, but he got us close enough. He'll finish it off. Fourth and one. I'm handing the ball off to Cozart. I'm ballsy like that. I want the win, not just a tie. Literally going to go back to the stretch for a third time, and it's open. Cozart breaks free. What's new? What can I say? Salona Beach victory. I'm getting used to this. This is sweet, sweet victory. We're bowl eligible now. This year tube turnaround and performance by Phillip Rivers in the 63 overall sponges needs to be studied. At six and three three in year two with the 63 overall squad get espn and their crew to make a documentary on this hawaii so far doing a good job protecting their home turf it hasn't been easy if i turned my head around and play the ball it could have been a different story but uh in this case the hawaii rainbow warriors driving down to the goal line first and goal looks like it's gonna be a handoff up the middle wasn't really prepped for it on defense honestly safe to say we're out of reach here if we get a big pick that's one thing but if they score again it's over didn't feel like we needed to waste much more time in this one Braden shager gave it to us and we lose big time to Hawaii. The sponges feel a little bit like Jekyll and Hyde as you might get a good performance in a dub or you might just get blown out. Which version of the Salona Beach sponges do we have in this matchup against the Lobos? Second and two, Turner in motion. It's a fake pitch, jumping it out to Cozart. Our other running back makes a nifty play and yak. Third and six, getting very close to the end zone here. I'm gonna scramble with more. See if we get the legs to cut it back up field. The, oh, fourth and short. Phillip Rivers wastes no time down on this play. He says, read option. We're going for it. And bang. Right before the first quarter ends, they get the playoff. It's an option. Hopkins takes it himself. Second and seven. Rock Boston looks so open. Good catch. This time I'm calling for a slant play. Brent Martin wide open in the end zone. Third and five. He's going for a big play. Gene Lewis could have come down with an interception. So here it is, fourth down, field goal attempt. That's good. First and 10, a little curl flat action. Brent Martin putting some spins, trying to get his man confused. All right, Kai, this is about as far as I let you go. 39 yards. It's up and he nailed it. Third and five, handoff once more. Up the middle, gets around a guy, keeps his balance, stumbles forward for that 12-yard gain. Getting the Lobos to burn their timeouts in the process is a cherry on top. This almost feels like a guarantee. Giving it to the fullback. Up the middle, Timmons goes. 
pounding his way for a touchdown. Phillip Rivers has this team dialing in on so many fronts. The season concludes here at home against UNLV. UNLV's eight and three, we're seven and four. I guess there's potential implications here for the championship game. And yeah, I'll admit it feels a little silly for me to talk about championship game with a 63 overall team that is seven and four on Heisman difficulty and difficult sliders. Playing a little bit of defensive checkmate in this game right now as Boston breaks through. Little slow to get up after that one. Adam Allen is gonna have to come in spelling the quarterback. Moore is gonna be out for the rest of the game with a sprained wrist. Kai Smallwood misses a chip shot. A minute left before half, UNLV is cooking, trying to score going outside he's got two open receivers pick your choice 38 seconds left in the half we're down our starting quarterback and down our starting running back at this moment and holy cow i think i misclicked on my controller user errors are proving costly so far in this one so it's important for us to get our team back into scoring position feeling a bit of the pressure we're gonna have to go for it here on fourth down and i see brent martin great catch third and four play action it's a Power O. I see a few options, but the main options back here, it's McLeod. Toe tap and six. Another big chance for us here on third down, running the cover one. He's going over the middle. Pauling, big pick. Yes, sir. Let's get some good position here on the field. Taking it back like a champ. Fourth quarter action, starting off with some curl flats. It's Brent and he's gonna get a first down. Dropping back is Allen once more across the middle, looks open, that's McHorter. All right, you know what? We'll give a chance for Kai Smallwood to get his wood on this one, and he nails it. The field goal helped us last drive, but now it's a must-win scenario where we have to score and win. Field goals won't do. Second and 11, just under a minute to go. I'm gonna go across the middle. I played that well. Boy, oh boy, a field goal won't save us now. Fourth down, read option. I'm gonna keep it with Allen. He's gonna go up the middle. What a brilliant play call. Clock winding down. We hurry back to the line. Another read option inbound. Another keeper by Allen, and he fumbles. And that is gonna be the ball game. Closing out the season with an opponent getting three forced fumbles on us. That just can't happen. Conference championship week. The Salona Beach Sponges finish third in the West. Carson Beck wins the Heisman, congrats. We are headed to Jimmy Kimmel's LA Bowl right here in Cali, so that's a bit of an advantage. Well, we got to our first bowl game, but we need to win the bowl game to unlock the rest of the recruiting conditions. Washington is going to be a handful. Seventh best offense in the nation, second in yards per game, first in passing per game. A good offense will still expose our 63 overall defense. But it's time for the Jimmy Kimmel Bowl, Washington Huskies, Sponges, all white second and seven dropping back we're gonna hit the man down the sideline that's brent martin breaking free from a couple tackles it's an absolute must to limit mistakes when you're going up against the huskies and we got wide open kozart just take your time with it i'm gonna choose to draw first blood and let kai do his thing Thank you, sir. We just need everyone to step up here on defense because it's going to be really hard to stop these guys. Like, look at that. Shrugs off a sack. Finds Cuevas for a big 36-yarder. Jalen McMillan in the Huskies stops short. The kick looks good. He got it. Second and goal. I'm going to call cover three because I thought it was a pass, but the option was actually the play. Big plays are needed to be made in a bowl game, and big players need to step up. And that's exactly what's happening here. Third and 19. Going to need a massive play here. And Brent Martin, I'm calling your name. He caught it. That play right there is a big swing for the sponges. And King scores a touchdown. Touchdown ties it up, but reality sets back in. We have to play defense. It's the Huskies in their offense, after all. They are hurrying up to the line. And I think they have a guy here. With Cam Brown, I was all over that. That is the definition of unfortunate right there. We were on it. Didn't matter anyways. McMillan just mossed us. Second and goal for the Huskies. They easily cash it in. And now that it's the fourth quarter, a little bit of urgency is needed as we fumble the ball. Second and goal. He's dropping back. He's looking for someone. He's got a wide open tight end. Worst case scenario for the LA Bowl is coming true, but as defeating as this feels, I can't help but to honestly just reminisce and be glad 
about what this season brought for the sponges. Like we were predicted to be dead last in the basement. No one even thought we would get here. And now look at us keeping it interesting. Despite the loss, I'm proud of Salona Beach, proud of what this team was able to accomplish in year two. Another season in the books. We are at the end of the year. It's time to do our last bit of recruiting, roster changes, and get us all prepped and ready for year three. Look back on the season, 1,500 passing yards, seven touchdowns for Brandon Moore. 670 for Adam with two. Rushing wise, a much better balanced attack this season. The redshirt junior Brent led us in receiving. Rock Boston right behind. Freshman Willie, seven sacks, 14 TFLs. That's encouraging. Graduation is here and a massive shout out and tribute to Cam Brown for leading the linebacking core over the last couple of years. Aaron Spell, Devontae Jean Lewis. Transfer request coming in from Mike Jennings, a freshman receiver, 69 overall from Illinois, Monterey Park, California. He is one with Sponge, I think will allow it. With 10,000 points to allocate in the offseason, Mark Coleman is priority number one. I'm giving this man the fattest NIL bag I can cook up. So here's the breakdown. I'm giving 70% of the pie to Mark Coleman, a quarter of the pie to Jim Hicks, and the last smidgen to Brent Burr hoping we can ensure all three of these guys. It's a Christmas miracle. We get everyone we were looking for. What a step in the right direction. The 62nd best recruiting class. And you see that correctly, a second prestige star. This is exciting to dream on. Mark Coleman, the big signee, 76 overall, 92 speed. He's got a little two-way in him. He can play some receiver as well. Who knows? Maybe we just found the next Travis Hunter. And hold on, Vince Manning, an athlete, 67 overall, has a little two-way in him as well because he is a 71 overall at running back, but a high 70 at DB. I'm going to put Vince Manning at strong safety, but let's not forget he can also run the Brock. Training results are in and Brent Martin in his redshirt senior season up to an 86 overall. Bembry also taking a big leap to 81. Brandon Moore, Adam Allen take the next step in the progression. Kozart and Turner, a formidable one-two punch. Receiving room well balanced here with a handful of seniors at the top. And then we got sophomores at the bottom four. Rock keeps rocking. Last year, we didn't register any recruits, but this year we can go ahead and register a few guys. Definitely want to save their eligibility for when they're ready to go. Just like Chris Thomas, Mike Jennings, McFadden will need their eligibility. Filling out the remainder of our recruiting board, we targeted the highest ranked three-star prospects on the board. And of course, we're mindful to the ocean borders. Let's get rolling with week two. Salona Beach taking on the Texas Tech Red Raiders on the road and outmatch the Red Raiders will be a handful in this season opener. Texas Tech already lost their season opener and they're trying to look to get right against the sponges. Slowly but surely, we're building the troops, building the team, and making them look awfully impressive along the way. Brendan Moore on the first play of the game, kicking it all the way down the field for a 46-yard rush. The Lavender in Lime is alive and well out here in Lubbock, Texas. Quick slant to Bembry, the senior strikes first. I say with third and short, we just bring a blitz, even though it's an empty split, and it works out to perfection. The defense is able to recover, and we hold them to just three. Red Raiders knocking on the door. It's second and goal. What are they going to dial up here? Probably just a quick handoff. If I had to guess up the middle, easy. Boy, oh boy. No one said this was going to be easy as Willis just gashes us again. First and goal back up the middle. They look going out to the slant. Evans had it and two other guys were there too, just chilling. The read option worked earlier in this game. I'm going to go back to it and I think that's going to open it up for Turner to just bust right through the middle and get a convoy with him. He is going to go all the way, almost. Fell just short with the stamina running out, but that's okay. Cozart's going to finish it off. Looks and feels like one of those games we're going to have to go blow for blow if we want to keep this thing interesting. Third and goal, let's send it up the middle. Stop the quarterback on the option pitch. No, Willis cashes in. Third and two, little curl flats. Goodness gracious, their coverage was all over the place there, and he's going to take it back. And because of that costly mistake, Tech's going to add three more. Making some silly reads early. But uh, Bembry, that's not a silly read as he just runs over his man. He's going to put a move on. Just keep going down the sideline. Oh my goodness, what a fight. The big play has been ever present in this one as we've gotten at least three. I'm going to see if Texas Tech's going to let us go right back to that well. If not, we got Brock Boston over the middle. 
another pick. This is so frustrating right now. We could have had so much more in this game. That is an ugly first game in the books. Not exactly the tune-up we were looking for before rivalry week. Now we're headed to Coastal Carolina for the Battle of the Beaches. It's time to bounce back in a big way. This rivalry is in for its third edition. This time we want to put points on the board. Not only is this rivalry important for beach bragging rights, it's also important because both teams are winless so far and whoever wins kicks off their season with a dub burst in 10 pressure in our face scrambling out on the run what a throw to Bembry that was textbook second and one out to Brent just caught undercut by Slade another poor pass from Brandon Moore he makes the big one that gets me all hope and encouragement and then we do something like that and let Slade take it back for a major pick six just about midfield handing it back to Donnie He's got room to work, and he's got room to mow over a guy or two. And this is our first look at Adam Allen, the backup quarterback already called in for duty here. Finds McLeod. Moore just had the wind knocked out of him, but we know Adam Allen is capable as well as a quarterback, as a scrambler, dual threat, whatever you need from him. Adam Allen dropping back, and he's going to find a man. That's McQuarter. Touchdown. We're on the board. Let's hold it here. No more points. Nothing. Finn busting through the middle, causing some pressure. Unfortunately, Medlock has enough. Now they're at the one-yard line, just looking to cash in, and I just run right through him again. Second and 18, back to the QB sprint out. Just scanning the field, scanning the field. I see the slant across. So that gets open. It's McLeod. The clock is winding down, but that is good for us as we won't want to take the time and cash in. Snapping it off. Let's see if Donnie can get in for us. He sure can. I don't think anyone's denying here that we still get sacked an awful lot. There we go. What a pump fake and keeper. Can we get all the way back to a first down? Diving for it. Just short, but that's a big play. So far, so good in the red zone out here. Not even a chance to breathe. Brandon Moore knocked out again after that last sack. He's got another third and super long here. Nothing doing. It's up to Kai Moore, our kicker, to see if he can nail this one and get us closer. All right, we got 97 yards to work. We got to get all the way down the field in two minutes to do it. All right, it's third down now. We do have to get it pushing a little bit more urgent here. And Bembry, what a comeback catch. Let's hurry it back up, see if we can send the guys on a streak. If not, we can keep it ourselves and just scramble. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And now we got so much teal field in front of us. Let's step out. It is crunch time right now. We're going to go over the middle. Birch just picks us off. Oh my goodness. It looks like we had room to get that ball in there. 20 seconds left. That's honestly not impossible as this big play is going to get us the first down and a lot of yards closer. We have outdone Coastal in yards, in first downs, in a lot of things. There's Brent. Step up for me. Let's go. Hurrying the team down with just 10 seconds left. We're in the red zone. We can strike and strike fast. Let's go. QB sprint out. Let's move it. We had Brent there. Give us the block, Brent. Yes, sir. First down, four seconds left. Man, oh man, at the four-yard line, we just need to dial up the right play. And if we're quick, we might have a second chance. But really, let's try to cash in right here, right now. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm, I'm out. No, the time went out. No. Oh, my gosh. I thought we had time left. This is devastating, man. We're taking steps back. Ugly, ugly start. Uh, now is a pivotal time to just take out all of our aggression on this FCS opponent. This season has not gotten off to the start I was expecting. 0-2, but there's still a lot of time to turn it around in Mountain West Conference play. Over the middle, that looks like Rock Boston. Big play to get this thing going. Second and 10. I'm gonna scramble out once more. Brent Martin, though, on the run, creates some movement there. Looking for a bounce back here. We're calling the same play that cost us the game in the last one. And that was so inaccurate, Brandon. You did not come close to your target. If Brandon Moore keeps making some poor decisions, I might be forced to go to Adam Allen on the bench. Let's run the play action, going across to Boston. He just stays up and gets right down to the two yard line. McLeod, forearm fracture out for the season. With one one of our senior receivers out for the season. Let's cash in just for him. Donnie, make it up for the guy. There we go. Middle attack. It's King. He comes down with it. Second and three. Brandon Moore once again calls his own name. Let's just keep plunging. Third and goal. Let's just send it across the middle. That's Brent Martin for six. Defense making another play here would be great. And McCullough, the freshman linebacker, just lurks that one out of the air. Dropping back. Over the middle looks so open. That's McCorder. 
busting his way through first and goal. This was more of the narrative I was hoping to see. Up two touchdowns, now three. See what we can do here. Over the middle, that's McCorder. He's so open. Just take it all the way, big man. Touchdown. FCS East Cash is in some meaningless garbage time points, but my goodness, that fumble as we're trying to ice the game was not meaningless. Kozart has been having a hard time holding on to the ball in the early season. And that is a big pick. Lampkin comes down with the deflection. Stiff arm out the whole way for a pick six. What was that? And that is the ball game. Salona Beach comes out on top. Our freshman middle linebacker with two ints in the game. Sponge is on the board with a victory. Royale, we're one and two. Now going up against the Rams back on the road. Colorado State 0-3 without their quarterback. He's injured. We are ready to rumble. We're back in black with the cursive script helmets. You know that already means we mean business, and Brent Martin means business. Brandon Moore is on a little bit of thin ice here for me as he's thrown quite a few picks early in the year. Coming out with a lot of motion, a lot of play action. That's Rock Boston with a monster play there. What a spin. Looking really efficient on this drive. Jumping this one out to King. Can he get in? Yes, sir. Third and 10 on the opening drive for the Rams. They are going to go across the middle and find Fox. Wow, that's a fine. Mark Coleman and this young defense looking to bounce back after giving up a first down. And while that was a tight window, he got it in somehow. Dropping back. He's going to scramble himself. I read that though. And I do what I do again. How am I just running and rubbing shoulders with these guys? Second and 17 coming out here. I think Rock Boston should get open it's just a matter of time we find him so let's call up slants and see if we can get one of our guys to get open it's okay brandon will take it himself brandon such a physical runner hasn't been penalized too much for not sliding so that's always good on our end as bembry comes back for it across the middle let's get king in motion here turner going the other direction strip sack fumble quinn's probably got momentum there to Go further, but no, he falls down. Rams finish the job, cash in, and uh, we're forced now to throw one up. What in the world? Team is malfunctioning right now. Played some clean football in the first quarter, not so much in the second quarter. All right, I went to the sim as they were punting, and uh, we got a punt return touchdown. So special teams does their job for the sponges. Back on defense, we can also do our job if we get a stop there. And third down conversions have literally been just so costly in multiple games, not just this one. Now it's third and one, more than likely a handoff here to the right side. Up the middle, that's a touchdown. Fourth and six, calling up a curl flat. Brent Martin makes the catch. Second and five. Over the middle is so open, and we couldn't get him. Well, because of that, I'm not going to get greedy. I'm just going to take the three points. Kai drills it. Third and ten. There we go. We got a connection. That's Bembry, who throws a man down. Can you keep it moving? Sheds two guys. Hit a little juke. Maybe three. Coach Phil Rivers says, go for it, and I have to agree with him. And uh, Brent Martin also agrees fourth and goal let me know in the comment section should we get brandon more out of here and try adam allen for the second half of the season because the connection just isn't working i mean on the bright side brandon's got the legs to just make stuff like that happen we have got to have everything that the defense has got in the tank left on this drive it is all down to this honestly colorado state can chew out this clock and take their field goal i i think that might be the approach they go for fox breaks through first and goal these guys are gonna look to probably hand it off even though i just called pass commit thankfully we're there for it it's unfortunate our defense got to this point but thank goodness we get a chance this has been loads of fun am i right brock boston is open over the middle and that was the most inaccurate ball in history of Solana Beach. I kid you not, I was going for Rock Boston. I'm going to go with Adam Allen for our next game because Giles Pooler and the Rams able to beat us. Absolutely ridiculous mistakes. Talk about throwing your guy to the Wolves. Philip Rivers has decided to go with Adam Allen to start this game and get a crack at the quarterback job. But he's going up against Alabama. The defensive line is falling fast. Finn, preseason All-American out for nine weeks as well. The expectation in this rain game, well, is to fall to one and four but the Salona Beach sponges want to shock the world. Big third and seven. I am playing awfully risky, calling a man coverage here against their top tier receivers. That sounds ridiculous. And yeah, Chandler exposes it. So let's do blitzes in zones and see if that is enough to carry us all the way home. And 
costly. Second and goal, he's dropping back to pass. He's scrambling out. Jalen's going to take it himself. Touchdown. Don't need Adam Allen to do too much in this one, but uh, just make the right read. And just like that, our opening drive, we're down into the red zone, running a play action. Rock Boston, make a move down into the goal line. It's all about finishing, my man. Keep it yourself. Get in there. Fighting for six. Second and two. He's dropping back to pass. Scrambling again. Again, Milro is just so efficient with the legs. If I was a betting man, they're going to plunge in here. And yeah, little two-minute drill here against Bama. Brent Martin open out wide. We've got him. Third and four. Let's not try to be too much of a hero. And that's an accurate pass, actually. That comes back to bite us there. Let's not let him score, please. For the most part, I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing and the decisions he's making. Rock Boston, that's another great call. Now it's time for Adam and Cozart to get to work. Let's start with a read option. Adam keeps it himself. He's got some room, runs over a man. Oh my goodness. Fourth and two, we're past midfield. We're about at the 38. I just think we should go for it rather than punt. So I'm gonna call a read option. Adam Allen keeps it, has a block. Brent, great job on the block. Lock, you're gonna spring Adam all the way down to the goal line and because it worked back there we're gonna do it again read option let's see what opens up we're gonna hand this one to Donnie up the middle lower in the head I thought he had it so so close we could literally plunge it in but uh we're gonna call a quick slant see if someone just gets open on a flat no one does so Adam's gonna scramble throwing it to Boston oh my gosh have I ever seen a touchdown like that before never so far the zone blitz strategy is working pretty well I'd say um, unfortunately, Milrow on the option is going to get that one to go. Jalen Milrow keeps tossing our guys around like they're JV players in high school. Like, it's unbelievable how powerful of a runner this guy is. Like, what is that? Like, trust me, I'm not denying Jalen Milrow is a talented quarterback, but this is like almost on the verge of unrealism when I see this happening so frequently as he does find Jalen to Jalen. Call me crazy. I'm going for it fourth and inches in our territory because I know the power of Alabama's offense and I see the time that we have left in this game. It's now or never. I have to strike. And Adam Allen is going to make the right call. They got our guy just really rattled. Our, we're just really rattled out here dropped again it's been difficult to get a stop all day but if there's a time for a stop it's now this is pretty scary stuff i think i'm just gonna call run up the middle it's to the left didn't call for it. let's just let him score it's strategic adam allen is being asked to do an awful lot here in his first start adam allen great start let's dial it back up i think we're gonna jump this one out is that bembry it sure is i'm gonna have to call a timeout you know i'm really hoping one of the guys just gets burnt on defense over there i'm gonna just dial this one up it should have been picked fourth and three this is big dropping back rock boston and brent martin were there it's turned over unfortunately the pressure of the situation just too much salona beach drops to one in four we lose to tech we lose heartbreaker to coastal colorado state and now alabama jimmy turner a big time high school guard commits to us after the defeat we're one in four going up against nevada but there is still hope for us to get to a bowl game win said bowl game and eliminate these barriers to our recruiting a lot of big time recruits coming to visit us here in this home matchup against the nevada wolf pack and you know what i think i'm gonna give adam allen another crack at quarterback gotta find a way to win more at the line of scrimmage here back to pass he's probably gonna scramble if i had to know him and uh that's why he tries to scramble more often than not because look at that big pick lampkin taking it back slow day on offense here gives um another chance on defense but broxton's gonna come down with it nevada is gonna pay all right adam you got a chance here they've given us a couple opportunities with a couple costly picks so why not go deep to rock boston throw a mean stiff arm break a tackle second and seven over the middle is going to get open and wow we couldn't connect not sure what's up with that over the middle route because that should be open nine out of ten times sprint martin says give me that we still have two timeouts in 19 seconds but i don't want to abuse all of that yet rock boston comes down to it perfectly placed just nine seconds left this is going to work for brent martin though we got it with five seconds left let's call it quick play action see if we can get rock boston or brent i think rock boston looks like the guy he's got it down to the first and goal line let's call our final timeout i really don't know how they marked it down at the inch line here but uh i think we can just hand it off the middle and donnie's gonna finish it with no time left can't afford to get too comfortable because now nevada's in the red zone looking to work he's got such an open lane here hayes taking it all the way some of these guys are open we just can't find them and that was just absolutely snagged out of the air. So now Adam Allen, after a great performance against Alabama, is having a rather mediocre game against the Wolfpack. It's probably not the best to keep going back and forth, but it's like... 
I want, but Brandon Moore could have done this too. It really does come down to this. Fourth and two on the option. We snag him down for a loss. That's going to do it. I guess technically it's not over yet till we get a first down and just ice the clock. This is must have territory here. Up to Turner again. Again, did he not get it? Oh man, I'm gonna run a jet sweep here. This might be brutal or it might be the, what we need. King, to push it. Yes, sir. First down, that's gonna ice this game out. A win's a win. And indeed, that is what Salona Beach came and did today. Dennis Broxton with a big pick and a couple tackles at the end of the game. Philip Rivers with a head coach upgrade. Let's give it to Letter of Intent to give us some bonus offseason points. What a haul. We got Jonathan Johnson, the stud defensive tackle. I've never seen a prospect like that. Victor Stevens, linebacker Nolan Scope. Got Willie Frank, Mario Holmes. At two and four, we probably can only afford one more loss to keep the bull dreams alive. Looking at our schedule, the battle for San Diego is next, and that rivalry game is gonna be a big one. Looking like big time underdogs for year three in the battle for San Diego. A classic here in San Diego, California. The series is split one to one, so this is a big game three. If Adam doesn't give me a good drive here, I'm probably gonna go look to Brandon Moore for the second half. Third and 12, that curl flat, shh deflected yikes well hope you like defense zero zero what is a sponge fan doing giving high fives to the aztecs i think i've learned that i can't expect anything in this rivalry game first year it was an offensive shootout second year we handle business this year it's a silent shutout type game third and goal let's rally the troops get them in there to make a stop Yes, we take these. Field goal, that's fine. I'm gonna drop a quick little flat. Oh my gosh, Beasley read that so easily. My goodness, the curl flat, nothing doing there. That flag, hopefully it's in our favor. Okay, it's a clipping foul on New Zealand. Is that on the return? Is it still our ball? Thankfully, the penalty on the return gives us a chance here to get a stop on defense. Third and four, I'm definitely feeling like a run here, but I don't wanna just commit just in case. Yeah, see, there's a pass. Thankfully, I didn't call run. Brandon Moore, in the sponges with his 25 seconds left trying to get his team down into field goal range at least read options to me always feel like safe bets with a dual threat quarterback as you can see we got plenty of space to push this one all the way down to the red zone now i definitely don't want to fumble so i think that's why i'm gonna pass here and we're gonna throw it out to brent and he's caught it oh my gosh i thought that was about to get picked him with just 10 seconds left we are right outside the goal line donnie turner up the middle the surfers cup belongs to us but it was not pretty to say the least i think i'm definitely going to go back to a quarterback carousel we're going to start with adam allen in the beginning of the next game and then if he can't perform brandon will get the second half big willie definitely gets player of the game in my book after sitting on the edge of our seats we get to take on wyoming who's actually doing pretty well this year in the mountain west we are home in sunny San Diego. Salona Beach is the site of this one. I don't really feel like punting. I'm going to be honest. So I'm going to go deep and Brent Martin lays out. What a snag. Big third down. Yep. Over the middle should have it. It's McCorder. Goal line action here. Read option. Hand off to Donnie. He gets his way. First and 10. Going to scramble out a little bit. Brent Martin should be open on a slant. Yes, and a spin. Get down the sideline. Tripping up teammates. The Cowboys are getting gashed with a monster 55-yard play. Let's drop out with a play action. See if Rock Boston gets open, and that he does. Second and goal. Back to our man. Up the middle. Touchdown. Adam Allen, you want this job? Show me. Fourth and inches. We're going to scramble. Throw it out to Brent. He makes the snag. Dropping back. Brent Martin open down the sideline just making play after play today stepping up in a big way rock boston what in the world dude i always get baited on that throw don't tell adam or brandon but we need to win a bowl game so i can go search the whole nation for a four or five star quarterback brent martin huge play and the senior receiver just passed up a salona beach school record most receiving yards in a single game 166 there is still one full half of football and uh, let's see how far brent martin can go back-to-back -back records donnie turner third touchdown of the game no one's done it before for salona beach third and nine adam allen sees a man over the middle he's gonna lob it up to him mccorder comes down third and three quick flat to brent martin another catch to add to the collection having himself a day feeding him once more brent Brent Martin's on a roll. Running back with a bench. We're going to do it again. Brent Martin just gets around the man. Why not? 208 receiving yards and a touchdown 
to go along with a monster game. Third and four, Adam Allen dropping back. I think Brent has a step on the DB. He does comes down with a big catch second and 10 dropping out it's print martin once again this guy has i don't even know i've lost count of how many catches but he's doing it all we'll settle for three it's gonna be 31 0 in the fourth print martin with a record day that is what we like to see offense coming alive in the second half of the year mountain west mania continues on this time going up against the bulldogs fresno state in the all red usually a tough team and a tough out in the mountain west defense is showing up today in a big way and then on third and 15, he scores. Fresh set of downs here. Let's take the routine play. There's the inaccuracy again. Like I'm looking for explanations. Did someone put something in his food? And now I don't know what happened on that slant play. Two for 12 with an interception. I have to probably go to Brandon Moore now here soon because I can't take this much longer. Someone help me in the chat. What do we do for year four at quarterback? I was hoping we'd get the version of the offense that came out during the Wyoming game and it's just not clicking today. Yo, I'm actually getting bothered by how the defense is playing. Like this is nuts. I feel forced to just do stupid things like that. Little read option, Brandon Moore just scoots on by. Oh man, what a run. Third and nine at midfield. Brent Martin, are you gonna make a play? He does, oh my goodness. Got bailed out on that one. Not on this one though, Brent Martin snags it. Third and six, I'm calling the read options. Just gonna hand it to Cozart. I couldn't get out of that animation. I guess we're gonna play a long game here and just take three. Spreading out our guys, Brent Martin, that's probably picked. Oh my goodness. Can lightning strike twice? I saw that little step. What? What did I do wrong, man? Second and goal. I'm gonna dive up the middle. Doesn't matter, Moss scores. Keen and the Bulldogs cook us a new one, man. That was tough to see, tough to watch, tough to play. I just, yeah, let's move on the next week. Honestly, not much happening in the recruiting front these last few weeks, but I did wanna show you all Kellen Buchanan, an Alaska player. That's right, he's from Alaska and that definitely borders an ocean. So I definitely wanna bring this frozen sponge player onto the gridiron. And you know why? 72 overall, 95 speed. Hawaii is another one of them states surrounded by ocean, but our sponges are cooler at Salona Beach. We do have good old Tim Williams visiting us this week, so let's put on a show for our whopping one prospect in attendance. Philip Rivers is having a hard time figuring out the secret sauce with this year's Salona Beach sponges. Seemingly having no trouble in this drive getting all the way down the field. So if their problem was offense, I don't really see it. A little bounce back here on defense would be lovely, but uh, Hines has other ideas with a mean stiff arm going awfully far. It feels a little embarrassing, not gonna lie, to get gashed by Hawaii right now. All right, I simmed one play and they hit me with a fake punt. It looked like they were gonna punt and then they pass, get the first down. They tricked me. Third and one, man in motion. It's all for show. Thankfully, don't complete it. Well, they fooled me with a fake punt and get their three out of it. Third and six. I'm gonna drop it out to the curl. It's Brent Martin. We are definitely gonna have our hands full. I can't hit Rock Boston. I just can't. I don't know what I have to do. Like I straight up need a quarterback, it feels like, with 90 plus accuracy because there's nothing I can do to hit that guy across the middle. Benches, we're gonna let him clear with Brent Martin, who just puts a nifty little move past the defender. I say we hurry back to the line, run the same play, see if they get caught in man coverage once more, and they do. This time, Brent makes them pay. I know I'm risking it with such a bad offensive line, but I just want to run more play actions because they usually lead to big things like this. We're in field goal range, but Coach Phillip Rivers wastes no time, saying go for it. Rock Boston will get it for us. I thought I would catch him napping, but nope, it didn't work like that. But Brent Martin catches his defender napping. So crazy story, and you won't see it because I simmed it, but uh, our guy, he dropped the punt return. He fumbled the punt return, leading Hawaii to this point in scoring a touchdown. Bro, thought they were just gonna run the clock out before half. You see what happened, a 65 yard touchdown. We seriously can't afford to drop a game here to Hawaii. We have to get this dub for the sake of a bowl game. Third and a mile to go. My goodness, just someone needs to get open. And he does, and I get it off. Bembry, if you had just had the acceleration going. Deja vu, huh? Third and a mile to go again. And this time, just throwing it to the ground. We need this 39 yard field goal. I don't want any shenanigans here. Third and four, Rock Boston across the middle. There we go. Second and 10, I'm running the play action. Brent Martin across the middle. He's got it, get out of the way, ref. Nah, it's all good. I'm just playing with you because this touchdown right here, that's all we needed. Third and seven, dropping back to pass. I got their stuff all covered up, except he gets the corner route on his touchdown. Okay, I had a guy. I still thankfully find King who keeps it in bounds, gets a big first down. Big third down here. We've got to have this and i see a guy and we come through 
Bembry. I have to give this ball with fourth and inches, the game on the line to Adam Allen. I'm looking for a QB sneak. No tush push, unfortunately, but this will have to do. Touchdown. Decisions, decisions. Do I actually snap this ball and go for two? I like the look. I'm going to just hand it off the middle to Donnie Turner. I mean, I think we can do it. Let's go. That was brutal, but we pay it off. Oh my goodness. Okay, now it's not just tied up anymore. We got the one point lead. That was huge, but uh, I don't want Hawaii getting any funny ideas here. So let's just tackle Sims. Anyone? Anyone? No. Oh my gosh. I am going to scream. That just happened. That just happened. Coach Phillip Rivers is beside himself right now. I mean, Adam Allen busted his hump for this just for that. If I just had a better offensive line, dude, I would have cashed in on so many opportunities. And King, speaking of opportunities, we cough it up and we're going to lose. This is out of my hands, out of my control. The one in eight Hawaii Warriors embarrass Salona Beach at their own stadium here. This is getting a little ridiculous. Now we have to win out. Dude, I'm so salty right now that we lost to Hawaii and it's going to get a whole lot harder going up against Boise State now. A few prospects that we're interested in are making the trip out to Salona Beach. An upset against the Boise State Broncos would be a miracle for us because I want to win two more games and get to a bowl game now we got third and three and we're just dropped not even a second to breathe at least defense is having a little bit of fun out here with a big safety come on now five total yards of offense this is a sweaty bronco defense tawny turner cutting it up field and now it's starting to pour because i think we're going to be able to start completing some passes second and 20 just going with a deep attack and i think we got him that's bembry i'm glad adam's having a better drive but uh i still am tempted to go with brandon here for a second half third and goal gonna give this one off to cozart to the left fighting through he's got it third and ten they're just handing it off i thought they would try to get the first down but they do anyway ashton genty bumps off the back of the defender second and seven i'm covering it up with the linebacker and wow the tight end just broke free this is honestly a win for the broncos so getting three points that's big time i am going for it because i'm the riskiest coach in all of the land and i'm just trying to dump it off we get it to upshaw and he fumbled bro like that that was not cool. Not cool at all. Touchdown. Brandon Moore checking into the game. You know, consistency is not his middle name and accuracy is not his middle name either. But you're bound to get a big player here or there with Brandon Moore. He can do a lot of things. And fumbling, I guess, is one of them right now. Second and 10, Rock Boston. There we go. First and 10, Rock Boston over the middle again gets open. We got to keep that connection alive. Third and 11, over the middle. He's got him. This time he connects to McWhorter. First and goal. Good time for the read option. Cozart with a wide open lane up the middle. Let's hurry it up and see if we can catch him off guard with the same thing. This time, Brandon breaks free. Touchdown. Thank goodness for that read option there as Donnie tries to fight and we don't get the to. First and goal, handoff up the middle. Touchdown, Caden Dudley. Brandon Moore stepping back out on the field. I think Kozar or Rock Boston. That's Rock Boston. He's so open. Brandon dropping back, looking for Brent. He's got him. This bench play is a staple right now. And Brandon does a Brandon thing. Well, guys, it's sinking in. I think it's going to do it no matter what Boise State does here. We're down by two possessions and we'll make it three. Boise State defeats us in our first ever time matching up. Ashton Genty on like 10 touches, put up 150 yards and a touchdown. That last one stings and signals a lost season in year three. I just hope Phil Rivers doesn't get fired. Oh, great. I forgot the void. And that is pretty symbolic of the season we've had. It's just been a black pit of despair this year. So close yet so far, we didn't get to the bowl game. So we're still handicapped for next year in recruiting because I'm not going to play on the black void field. I'm just going to let the sim take care of it. See how we do. See if it matters. So the sim has us going back and forth in a tight one here. It's all tied up at the void. Who's going to win at the black hole? It's tied up. Are we going OT? We're going OT. And we lose to cap off a 4-8 and eight season. Evaluating how the squad did, honestly, nothing impressive at all from either of these guys. I mean, Adam Allen slightly did better. Brandon Moore, though, was clearly the better dual threat. At least Brent Martin can head out as a senior, knowing that he gave it all he got. 1,100 yards, six touchdowns. We salute you for all your service. Bembry's also gone. Rock Boston is the last one left returning next year. 
that was a top three receiver. Willie Marquardt continues his impressive career as a young defensive end. DJ Giddens, K-State proud wins the Heisman. And as a K-State hitter myself, I love to see it. One day though, I believe a Salona Beach sponge will be on that podium. What a sigh of relief. Tony Hawk has extended Philip Rivers another contract. Our go-to guy Brent has now graduated and he's gonna go test his luck as a free agent in the NFL. If not, the UFL is always there to pick him up. Finn and Chin, our two defensive tackles are out of here as well. Bummer, we lose out on Greg Sanders. I was pretty high on that guy, but we did get everyone else. When I tell you John John's a difference maker, he's already slotting in as the fourth best player on this roster. Kellen Buchanan, the athlete, is going to come in at a 75 overall receiver. That makes him top dog and a speed threat for our guys to go to. Brandon Moore, 79 overall, 86 speed, 88 excel, 86 throw power, 81 throw accuracy. It looks like a dream on paper, but you know what? I just noticed Adam Allen has plus plus 13 awareness and maybe that's all the difference it took so i'm gonna give adam allen the first crack at the top of the depth chart donnie's been good for us a 77 overall junior but brent looks really intriguing as well 74 overall 90 speed 89 excel he's got better stats than donnie i'm initially thinking we run with brent atop the depth chart redshirt sophomore mike jennings is our new wide receiver one and just after one year of juco we got the alaskan sponge kellen buchanan 75 overall wide receiver two 95 speed I'm going to enjoy this. Rock Boston remains our security blanket with this being his final year. Our top two defensive tackles graduated, but we have two defensive tackles that are freshmen and they're arguably better. John Johnson is so well-rounded that he's got great power moves, finesse moves, and speed. Victor Stevens, another true freshman, going to be our middle linebacker for the future. Don't worry, I still got Rashad in there, moved him over to left outside linebacker. Nolan Scope's going to get the red shirt because there's a lot of talent ahead of him. And sure, I'll give Kevin Towns the red shirt because he also has a few guys ahead of him. Oh baby, Kevin Good is top of our list 78 overall 95 speed 80 zone 80 man 85 press he'd be right up there as one of the best recruits in salona beach history this is a must kevin goodman take all my points the california native he needs to come home to Salona Beach. Brian's pretty intriguing here. 81 speed, decent catching, and he's six foot eight. The rest of this list feels pretty dry. A lot of busts. All right, after the week one bye, it's week two, and this is exactly the matchup we need. It should be a little early season showcase for our guys. Nothing like opening week in college football. It is electric here for all the 6,000 fans in the stands. All right, it's third and seven just outside the red zone. Can we get the stop? Yes, the sack is delivered by none other than John John, the man who is in the top 10 for high school sacks in nation history there that's a big play third and goal let's plug it up going out to the left can we make the stop bruh i'm tempted to give brandon moore a look and just run with the hot hand once again so adam allen to rock boston that's a good play nothing like a beautiful day to play some football and we're gonna dump it out to rock boston for another beautiful lob going back to a mid attack rock boston should be open he's got a step in where the heck did Tillman just come from? Something just feels off today right now, and I can't put my finger on it. We can't have this an opening day. Philip Rivers is not happy at all right now with Adam Allen, as Adam Allen gave him a bunch of lip in the locker room. Essentially, Adam Allen was complaining how bad the play calling was, so it's up to Brandon Moore now to see if he has the momentum to drive this team to the promised land. Adam Allen essentially has all half now to think about his choices and his poor use of words as Brandon Moore is going to have an opportunity to lead the offense. Another fourth down. We're playing like this is our last chance. And McFadden's going to catch it, but we're not going to have enough. Back against the wall. This has to be the drive if we're going to show that we can compete with anyone, including Texas here in a couple weeks. Little play action here. We got a man deep. Can we connect? We do. It's Jennings, our new wide receiver one for the year with Brent Martin graduated. Second and goal. Little handoff to Donnie. He's finishing it off. Back to the read option. Brandon Moore's going to keep it. He has got some wheels and he's going to jump outside for a 16 yard carry. Dropping back, looking to lead his team to victory. Brock Boston across the middle. Moore stood in there and took a hit. Brent Burrell wants to get in on some. It's third and three. A halfback draw just runs us over, man. Two TFLs for Vince Manning and it's third down now. I'm on this. I'm on this. Uh, I sold. Third and 10. Here we go. I'm covering the middle. Stevens again. That dude is so open. Thankfully, he's out of bounds. No more funny business. It's no fly zone and it's time to soak him up. And yes, soak them up. Got the ball. 
turnover. Down 10 to 0 at halftime. We come back and win 14 to 10. A win's a win, but I'm going to admit, I'm not too happy about the performance today against an FCS opponent. We played way down to their level, and a team like Texas will steamroll us at this rate. Game two of the young season is none other than the Battle of the Beaches. Huge rivalry game in store for us, and the scale is finally balancing out. Coastal Carolina is 1-1. One one. We're 1-0. Oh. This week is pivotal if we can show coastal that we mean business that'll go a long way in this season to go coach got the sense with his squad down 10-0 to an fcs opponent that changes had to be made and that change was for brandon moore to come in sometimes more can be just as inaccurate as adam but the thing that moore has is this burst you can really feel it when he tucks it to run and look at that do i prove my point you can really feel the difference he makes on the ground. Third and seven. Let's chuck it up to McFadden. And that pressure led to an accurate ball. Senior kickers need some love too, you know. So let's get Kai Smallwood involved for a big three. So a promising start on defense turns into tragedy here. And Lott scores six. Phillip Rivers does not want to punt again. So he's going to go for it. And Jennings just throws him down. Jennings making an early impact. Buchanan, we're looking to get him more involved. And oh man, put him on skates. Where's that 95 speed? All the way. So let's run a little cute. QB thing up the middle. Yes, touchdown. Dropping it back. I think Buchanan's going to get this one. Yes, sir. Turning it back up with just 20 seconds left. Out to Buchanan, the Alaskan sponge down within two yards to go. Even with 13 seconds left, we still got two timeouts. So I definitely have the time to plunge it in with one carry here. Brent with six. Second and 10. I think King should be open here. Yes, sir. Way to haul it in and get us into the red zone. Second and 12. I'm going to scramble. Yeah, let's just take it with our legs. Get the block sneak around first and goal just a few yards to go let's get a little quick slant action here buchanan gets a step there's the alaskan sponge making his big first splash play soaking up the moment here just enjoying it we still got a full quarter of football in the fourth to play and yeah mcfadden and coastal waste no time need a big defensive play here and we can get out of here scot free but medlock catches it 270 passing yards three touchdowns not a bad day at the office for this vasco kid he's looking to hope and bring the coastal carolina chanticleers to victory but we gotta stop him this is a big field goal they can tie the game up right here with a kick but it's kind of far and i don't know if he's got the leg off the bar brandon moore has rushed for over a hundred on the day and he's gonna find buchanan the alaskan for the first down and that should ice this one out the battle of the beaches belongs to salona beach love to see it after beating coastal we got five guys we can start whining and dining and in that group of five one of those guys was kevin goodman and look at this we are killing the game here over any other power five program so yeah i'm not gonna waste any time we scheduled him for week five so we can finish him off early six eight brian is also ready to visit i think i want to get him in week five as well just so we can get some separation from uab and hopefully seal the deal david barry the three star 76 overall middle linebacker we're in a battle here with a host of other schools i have no time to waste week five is shaping up to be a big week same with the six six defensive end garrett let's make him ours man has seven offers on the table already from pretty good schools week five it is Before before we look ahead to week five, week four has one heck of a challenge for us. 99 across the board, the Texas Longhorns. Both squads are 2-0 and on the young season. The only difference is the Longhorns are second ranked in the nation. Second and nine, bringing it in. And Baxter is literally gone. Nine night like there's no one gonna stop him until 37 yards later third and 10 here i think i'm definitely gonna call pass and they go handoff draw oh my goodness and he just gets a first down out of it here we go third and goal qb keeper he's so open if we can get a stop here it would be incredible to see because we have just a couple minutes left off his back foot that's a bad throw we pick it off that's jim hicks oh man that is the sophomore corner making a play. Huge turn of events. We love to see that. Now, Brandon's got wide open grass, and he's going to get a big pickup. Oh, man, we got the Wigglies. It's third and 18. I'm just going to let the clock tick, and then I'm going to snap it, and I'm going to see if we can do anything miraculous here. But, yeah, see, not a chance. Oh, man, I did not see this coming. We punt. I hit the sim button, and we get a safety. Halftime, seven, Texas, two, Salona Beach. Going back to the option. Brent, again, has some room, and there's that 90 speed kicking in. I foresee this shotgun spread being a pretty successful play against the defense here. Second and seven, read option. They were really ready for it that time. All right, so that's going to force our hand to get a little bit more creative here. And that was a big play in and out of the hands of king 46 yarder for kai it shouldn't be a problem 
And thank goodness the wind curved it back in. Third and 10, usually I like to call curl flats around this time because look, Jennings is gonna get open and get the first down. This drive is massive to say the least. And Brandon Moore cutting in and out. What a play down the sideline. Oh baby, the air has been taken out of this stadium for sure. Chavis, the freshman fullback gets us to first and goal. Chavis, my man, how you feeling? You wanna tote the rock one more time? Try it out, my dude. Touchdown. Just a methodical drive all the way down the field. Under a minute to go. And man, I hate when that happens. Like I'm there, they throw it, then I get all weird with it. Like, that's not cool when that happens. So now we got a first and 10. Fresh set for Maxwell is just gonna take it out of bounds. This is potentially a really risky play. I mean, we're blitzing on third and three. Can we make the stop? Hold him down. Fourth down, let's go. This is literally do or die territory. And fourth down, this could be the game. This could be the difference. He's going deep and it's the difference against us. With all three timeouts though, I don't think I should pass every play. I think I could run and call a timeout as well. And we're just gonna chuck that one up. Oh my goodness, Jennings, keep going. All right, this is extremely risky. I'm toying with the idea of taking a shot to the end zone with five seconds left, but we can take our field goal, we know that. Let's just see what happens here. I'll throw it away if it doesn't shape out pretty quick. And yeah, we, we got a guy. Buchanan, get down. No, 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 no. The time ran out. He had it. No, the Longhorns win. Honestly, I can say no regrets. I mean, shoot, we go to OT, go back and forth, and what, Texas pulls away? Or I take my shot there to win it. And we had the shot. Absolute bummer of a way to lose there against the Longhorns. But we're going to have to shake it off. We got a bunch of recruits coming to visit us in week five against the Rams. And they what are they doing? They have no business with a 91 overall offense. David, Kevin, Brian, we need all of you to come to Solana Beach. Phillip Rivers talking to his guys, helping them build the morale after that heartbreaking loss. Now, one thing's for darn sure, the Rams 78 overall defense will not feel like the 99 defense we just played. Third and 12. Sure, I'll go down the sideline, find Buchanan once again, symbolic of the play we had against the Longhorns, yet couldn't finish it. Back to our favorite formation, a little read option this time. We got some blockers, the convoy in front, all the way down to the goal line. Don't usually have a lot of success with this play, but let's hope it works here. The flick to Brent, he did it works. Hey, touchdown. So if the Rams truly do have this good offense they so claim, we're gonna have to keep up on offense as well. And bro, third down, let's rally the troops. Looking for a big stand here. I'm just covering my zone, looking for something. And Long's gonna cash in. Here we go, up the middle with the blitz. There's some pressure coming in. That unfortunately leaves Henderson open, who's gonna get right down to the goal. Let's plug it up, up the middle. Braden flicks it out on the speed option. Bummer. Only down by 10 is pretty reassuring to say the least because they have been cooking us on offense and look at Brandon go. We get some big plays here and there, but there comes a point when it all turns to shiz and thankfully not so far in this drive. 30 yards out. I'm going to drop it back. I had a guy, dude. I had a couple guys. Unbelievable. And no, we did the worst thing we could do. The fumble. Bro, dude, I can't stand this right now. The Rams in their offense, unbelievable. Looks like even after halftime, Adam Allen is the quarterback since uh, Brandon Moore got hurt. And hopefully Adam Allen can shake it off from his week one ugly performance against the FCS school. Safe to say Adam Allen and our defense had no answers today, regardless of Buchanan breaking free and icing the defense with that frozen sponge catch. It's a humbling experience to say the least. Braden just destroyed us. The worst part of that humiliating game is we had recruits coming to visit. And Garrett Ward still commits to us, but we had big names like Kevin Goodman and David Barry. We couldn't make much separation on. Thankfully though, Kevin Goodman, it seems to be in the bag here. Let's shake off that last one, get back to the roots and give Army one heck of a game. Brandon Moore, strained shoulder, questionable for this one. It's a cold, cloudy day here against Army. We're gonna have to work hard to keep up with these guys in their tempo. Hanging tough with Army right now. It's been difficult to find any yards and there's actually our first pass completion. We need some targets. We need some folks to step up and make some plays for our team. And Brent there, good catch. Brent Burrell is definitely a solid option out of the backfield as he's got good hands too. Brock Boston dealing with some back spasms. Let's sub him out for now. Kai sometimes worries me when he's kicking it. Let's see if he has the leg for a 49 yarder. Just missed. Let's convert here with the play. Scrambling out, Adams got some legs. Unfortunately, some defensive 
pressure on us. Donnie Turner, though, breaks open. This is probably our best chance yet. As I'm going to launch one up to Buchanan, he's got a step in the corner. Touchdown. Called the blitz, the option. We take him down. Or do we? Sir, someone please stop this man. No way number 19 from Army is that strong. Like, that's next level stuff. Got to keep it moving here. Second half football. Across the middle, it's McCorder. Good play. Let's give these guys a little taste of their medicine with a read option of our own. And yeah, Adam Allen. Do the rest. I said Adam Allen or Brent, do the rest. Third and goal, Army has been passing a little more than I expected them to. That's what I was expecting. And thankfully, we get a stop. So it looks like I answered my own question. Army really does not trust their kicker at all as they're going for it. And Jim Hicks on fourth and goal makes the pick. Jim Hicks keeps making me blush, man. I must admit, it's exciting to see. And you know what else is exciting? That run was so exciting so blush inducing let's get it man coming in to west point getting a dub brent burrell had a solid game on the ground i am excited about the bounce back performance there after getting embarrassed by Colorado state that feels so far out of sight now big wins big prizes kevin goodman is our prize the 78 overall corner has committed to selena beach that leads us to week seven against the nevada wolf pack another team we're on par with now we've been working hard year four rebuild we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys we can continue our momentum continue the run Let's get a big dub here. And why was that Wolfpack guy holding a sponge helmet? Big third down here on the opening drive. Let's bring in the pressure. And dude, dude, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Another third down opportunity. Let's not let them convert. And they convert again. Fifth opportunity here for them to convert or for us to get a stop. And thankfully, it's fourth down. And yep, you see that right. Adam Allen is the quarterback in this one. Our guy, Brandon, still dealing with his shoulder injury. Hoping to get out into the gridiron soon, but it's questionable. Fourth and two, read option. Let's keep it with Adam. Yeah, that'll do the trick. Got some blockers in front of us. Let's drop it back. Yep, go across. I see you, Jennings. Big snag. Running it back once more. I think the same play is going to get open. Jennings makes a snag. Fresh set of downs. Strike to McFadden into the goal line we go. First and goal, I'm gonna look for my guy, Rock Boston, if I can see him. He's not gonna get open in time. Adam Allen will do the rest. They're bringing it, they're running it, they're scoring it. That's what they do. I just need to, oh man. Oh man. Turn it over on the fumble. He's got an opportunity to get a wide open Brown touchdown. Little play action. Let's see if we can get someone to spring open. We got a man. Can we hit him? Under pressure, King with the snag. Little first and 10 action here. Over the middle to Brock Boston should be open. Yes, sir. Touchdown. Down by a couple touchdowns. It was about time we got the boys alive. And McCorder keeps it in stride. Big man rumbling. Beautiful work out here. We're already back down into the red zone. Buchanan with the snag. All right. I say we let Brent Cook here in the end zone. Up the middle. Touchdown. Third and absolutely long. We're going to just chuck one up deep to our speedster. Buchanan had the step and he finishes it off. Oh, my goodness. Sure making Alaska proud with that big snag and score. With fourth and one, we're gonna call up the play called lightning. I think that sounds fitting. So we'll need a lightning strike here on defense. And what do you know? We get that strike. This is a good look at the halfway point with a handful more games to go. We're just a couple away from bowl eligibility. And with that dub, add a couple more recruits to the list coming down to Salona Beach. For the Surfers Cup, for San Diegans and for all the pride, it's go time. Some good news and bad news. Bad news, Brandon Moore is still dealing with a strained shoulder and we don't know when he'll come back. Good news is we have 10 prospects visiting us today in the battle for San Diego, so we have to put on a show. And when San Diego State makes the trip up north to Salona Beach, it's hostile territory. Adam Allen, who had a little scuffle with Phillip Rivers in week one, is our quarterback and that's not by choice. Adam Allen is determined to win back Phillip Rivers' trust as that's a good connection to Buchanan for a first down. Third and four, early conversion opportunity, and King's got it. Dropping it back, scrambling out. Just going to dump it out here to Rock Boston. The senior is going to be a big piece in this second half run. A couple fan favorites, Rock Boston and Brent Martin. We couldn't get the bull victory for Brent, but we got to do it for Rock and in Brent Martin's honor. Donnie Turner got wrangled down there, so let's see if Kai Smallwood can come through with a big kick. And dude, I don't know if I can figure out the kicking game. Defense took a little step back in year three, but in year four, they are retooled and refreshed. And as soon as I say that, we get cooked. All right, so it's going to be like that today. We got our back against the wall. Sutton finishing it off. Football down right on the sponge. Everyone knows when you're on the sponge, you get magical powers that just increase your game to the next level. That is crazy that I literally just called that with Adam Allen, baby. We are smack dab on the sponge logo. You know what happened last time. Let's see if the good luck is on our side. Rock Boston, that's a little underthrown. Wait, no, it's not. Touchdown. Just under two minutes. This is the time to dial up the blitz, and that pressure was in there fast. Led by John John, Salona Beach gets the hold. Okay, now we're 
touching the logo. So that means I have to take my shot to the end zone right here, right now to see if the good luck continues. And all right, we're done with that trend. Third and three, a lot of pressure coming in and we fumble it. Oh my goodness, the strip sack brings us down. Second and three, just outside the end zone. I'm bringing in the blitz. It doesn't matter, Brooks scores. We're gonna quickly learn which of our guys got that dog in them and Rock Boston is a dog. A little bit of a mid attack here in the middle is so open. So the play design works to perfection. We're in the red zone. So far, I'm happy with the response the guys are given. And there we go, Jennings, get us into the red zone. Efficient work. Now let's see if Brent Burrell can do what we brought him in to do score touchdowns and there it is we know the aztecs are going for it on fourth and inches here so i gotta send the house and pauling steps in on the slant he has got a chance to take it all the way back get sponged on son ice up we soak it up for six fourth and ten just need to play some tight coverage and we're gonna walk on out of here victorious we got a chance for another pick this time welsh who's going to get this one and return it back in hopes for a pick six. Nifty spin. It was all Salona Beach in this one. San Diego State did not do much to scare us. Adam Allen, have yourself a game. Daryl Caldwell said, I've seen enough. I'm coming to Solana Beach. But you already know we ran up the points and all these other guys. Yeah, check that out. Down by a thousand points to Wisconsin. We turn the tide with Adrian Young here completing all five game goals. We are far from home in this next one going up against the Wyoming Cowboys. The site of this one is Laramie, Wyoming, usually cold around this time, extremely high elevation, the highest elevation of any college football stadium in the nation. We're going to have to have the oxygen ready on the sidelines because coming from sea level to this is insane. Moment of truth. I didn't check the report. Is Brandon Moore back? He is no longer restrained by a shoulder injury let's see how he does in this return first pass is garbage adam allen was low-key cooking it up last game and uh yeah that's another inaccurate ball i don't appreciate the situation our quarterbacks keep putting us in it's like who do i roll with who wants to win the job because one week it's one guy the next it's the other and you know what philip rivers has had to live with this torment for like two years now as brandon moore doesn't even see the linebacker just lurking underneath first down let's give him the special here as we scramble and fumble it who's gonna get that ball not our guy unfortunately now it's third and goal they have to come up with something big here and yeah that slant play just couldn't cover two guys at once all right i think we've seen enough we gave brandon moore a one quarter test trial and i think that's all he's gonna get in this one i think the end Injury to his shoulder still has some lingering effects here and Adam Allen just coughs it up man and what are we doing is this the same team that played against San Diego State because now Wyoming's driving into the red zone and scoring again past midfield maybe the tides can turn just about now and we'll take our time get it to Buchanan see if we can finish with some points on the board and Rock Boston is wide open got a blocker even with the slow delay there I thought he was gonna score man just took his time to gather his bearings but it's all good Brent Burrell finishes it off what did I say tide is turning and we got an opportunity score once more on the run delivering a ball the red zone vulture brent burrell is back and he wants more and brent burrell does it again bro it's literally deja vu i sim the kickoff we get a turnover and we're back into the end zone with brent burrell combating it with a read option here got some room up ahead got some blockers oh man adam allen are you gonna do it twice in one episode give the move yes keep going did you guys start brent burrell in fantasy today because he's going for his fourth touchdown He's got it. That is a school record, four touchdowns in one game. And then it all came down to this, fourth and goal. I'm here. Victor, you're not getting it past him, and you're not getting it past Jim Hicks. This man has been on a tear, getting his first opportunity to start as a cornerback. The sophomore is making big plays. Couldn't get all the way free, but free enough. Yeah, I'm telling you, if you're not a Salona Beach fan already, you better jump on now before it's too late because we're feeling ourselves. One piece at a time, Amir Barber, welcome to the team. Fresno State rolling into town. This is always a pesky opponent to deal with. Brandon Moore is still not officially cleared from the injury report, so we're going to go with Adam Allen again. Philip Rivers getting the guys ready to go wearing the all blacks cursive script fresno state also wearing the cursive script in an all white allen shakes himself off and he's gonna step up and deliver a ball to rock boston that gets lurked briggs with a pick and the stick and the mistake is spelling trouble as the fresno state bulldogs are driving and scoring two minute drill we got an opportunity to score and tie this thing up i see our tight end spring open can he haul it in rock boston down to the one one yard line can you guess what i'm about to do next handoff brent easy just hanging on by four points still in the third quarter here 
Uh, see if anything can go and makes a terrible decision forcing that one in. Third and short man in motion. Probably a run if I had to guess, right? Yep, read option. He flicks it out. Can we still get the stop? We can. Another unfortunate situation only being held to three points. So that's a win on defense. Just about midfield here. I read that slip screen from a mile away, but look at that garbage. Look at that garbage. Do you see it? Touchdown, Fresno State. We can hope for a two-point conversion failure right here, but... That is a failure. The how many blunders can you make and still win challenge is here still. And maybe we can get that win part here successfully in the W column with a kick return. Touchdown, Buchanan. Big plays keeping us alive in this one, surprisingly. I don't think we should still be in it. King hauls it in for two-point conversion. Third and goal now with just a minute left. You get the sense that this drive is extremely important. If they can't cash in on this next down, it's game. Oh, right. Brain fart. We're only up by three. Let's ice him. All right. I guess this kicker had the anti-freeze attribute enabled, so he's going to get a nice, easy chip shot. And well, I'm tentative to use a timeout because I want to see what happens on this next play before I start going to the well. Just launch one up. See if he turns around. Buchanan turns around, makes the play. My goodness. 51 yard field goal. Kai Smallwood has a small wood lately and he can't seem to nail any of these. Not to mention he's frozen. So well, shoot, I was thinking about doing a fullback run, getting a couple more yards, then taking the field goal after using my timeout. But I just realized it either take a penalty and go backwards or just kick the field goal. So I'm kicking the field goal and wish me luck. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was atrocious. Well, this must be exciting for the fans. We got OT action here, Rock Boston, make that haul, baby. Looks like we might need another miracle or two. Brent Burrell, good stuff. Let's go back to the well read option this time. Adam Allen up the middle, yes sir. Just gotta play a little bit of defense and we can send the home fans happy, but uh, yo. Who let Wood get so open? If there's ever a time for the defense to dial up a massive play, it is now, and bruh. Now it's all tied up again, and Joshua Wood's got another chance to score. Let's plug it. Yep, this is definitely a ballsy play with him lining up four receivers to the right. We just call a massive blitz, and hey, it paid out. I've never seen a more beautiful sight than this, a field goal attempt. We held them in double OT. Now we get the ball and it's our time to ride. No, it happened again. We lost because it gave the ball back to Fresno State instead of giving us a chance on offense. Look at this, the game's over because it thinks we didn't get a chance. This is some bogus stuff, man. These guys are so freaking lucky we're not on a national championship run or else I would be beside myself. At least it wasn't for a national championship and yeah, five turnovers isn't very pretty to go with a win, so. Suddenly, I feel so much better. Adrian Young, good news, he's committed to us. He's gonna join John John right in the trenches. All right, time to forget the fact that Fresno State just rained on the parade, but it's okay. We're headed to Hawaii. Brandon Moore still not cleared entirely yet. This man might need surgery. Ah, yes, beautiful weather lovely state we're out in hawaii for this matchup best thing to do is just to open a can of whoop on the hawaii rainbow warriors and how did he catch that ball victor stevens cracks through but it doesn't matter he's got ashlock wide open third and four bringing in a blitz let's get the stop yes sir great deflection we're playing chess out here and just like chess we gotta sacrifice some early gains to get the big time setup. Take it from me, the man that played elementary school chess. And outside of that, I got about 10 games in my belt for the last like five years total. Adam Allen doing a good job driving us down this field. I like the drive we're sustaining. Glad we can come out here and expose this Hawaii defense. All right, I see how it is. 99 yard kick return touchdown for Hawaii. What are you gonna do? Little second quarter action here. McCorder is open. Adam Allen delivers and he's breaking free. Breaking free of another man. Do a little juke. Looks like Adam Allen got that garbage game out of his system and he's ready to go perfect today. So far, seven for seven through the air. I am determined to keep that up. Ready to go on a little streak, drop a comment. How many passes in a row do we complete? There's eight. Rock Boston with a big one in a big truck. Take three, let's try it again. Donnie, thank you. All right, Adam, keep dropping back, making the right pass. There's nine for nine. This is super encouraging to see. Make it 10 for 10, this time to Buchanan, the Alaskan. 11 for 11, it's time to take a shot, and I threw a bad ball there. Thankfully, King caught it. Do we risk it for the biscuit? Four verts, why not? Let's see if we can let it fly. We got Rock Boston wide open. A magical start to the game for our guy. He... Gets sold there, so the streak is broken. Kai, will you actually make a field goal this time? I've had a hard time even getting one with you. Quick turn of events. We got an opportunity to score here with 16 seconds left. Handed it off to Brent. Definitely want to see if I can get into a position here where 
Kai Smallwood can take another crack. Six seconds left. Let's give it a quick handoff here to Brent. See if we can get a few more yards. Go down and get on to the field goal. Perfect. Just a chip shot here for Smallwood. He's got a big one on that one. Halftime, 1910 out in Hawaii. Dropping him back. Ready to rip. They sent an all-out blitz. Brent Rell is just so open with no one in the vicinity. Make it an easy six, would you? Third and ten. They need this here. It looks like a screen type play. Got a lot of guys in motion. And what the heck? It worked out. But the hit stick fumble. Big time. Allen, let's drop it back. Oh, we had him wide, but I don't hit him in time. We'll still sling one out and get him anyway. Jennings breaks a tackle, bro. It's child's play out here. Come on down to Hawaii and make these beaches our own. Salona Beach sponges put on a performance. Brent had a great game. Hawaii falls to two and eight, and man, I remember those days at the basement. It's a long way up, but... You got to start working somehow, somewhere. The roadshow continues after Hawaii. We're taking a pit stop in Boise, Idaho. Boise State somehow with the lackluster record, but they're still an 88 overall offense and defense. Allen playing some textbook football as indicative of the star under his name. It's third down just outside the red zone. Let's drop it out to Buchanan. And yeah, we weren't even close. We'll let Kai get the first crack at points and down the middle blitzing up the middle we got some pressure terry's got it though he's gonna score it looks like down at the one this is scary it was like at the one yard line and uh stray hand flag though bring it back please that's right little pass interference from joel higgins for salona beach we absolutely love to see it and no matter what they do there yeah fourth and goal second and 13 i just got baited into throwing that curl flat that's a pick six for hawthorne i felt the pressure being backed up against their end zone and it really got to me there and it's getting to me again oh my goodness i'm flopping third and 17 we just can't get cooked that's really all we're asking for and we'll take it crazy how a couple big mistakes aren't actually coming back to bite us as of this moment and he missed the field goal and wow talk about risky third and 18 if they catch the ball and go down inbounds this game we can forget about that it's fourth down this has been crazy to see right now and what a bad pass and a hit stick fumble anyway so it's not even like it mattered so simply put right now it feels like the game does not want us to win benjamin breaks free we're stuck in between a rock and a hard place as of this moment can someone drop this man someone do something thank you incomplete and oh brother it looks like adam allen took one too many hits it's brandon moore the crippled dude in the game gonna throw one up deep he's got buchanan we have to get a stop on this third down to just give our offense an opportunity please come through he's got all day tiller finds a man and when you have all day you're gonna find your guy it was a brutal performance today from salona beach and yeah richard brown had himself a game with an int two sacks two tfls and there was another dude that had four sacks for the Broncos, so not looking too hot over here. Going into the final week of the regular season, Salona Beach atop the Mountain West West Division, and we're tied with our San Diego rival. Fresno State also up in there with a 4-3 and three conference record. This final week's important to keep an eye on Salona Beach, San Diego State, and Fresno State. We got UNLV at home for Senior Day. Not only is it Senior Day, we have another wave of three-star prospects visiting us. We let senior standout Rock Boston pick out the jerseys for today, and he's sending off the seniors with the black and lavender. What an end it has been to the second half of the season, and we at least got bowl eligible. Adam Allen still a little banged up from all the sacks he took last game. I think it's time to give Brandon Moore at least the first crack, see what he can do. I think I'm going to dial up the play action. It's usually risky these days, but we got a wide open Rock Boston. Would love to call Rock Boston. Austin's name at least once today and we got an opportunity to do it early let's go ahead and try that again maybe it works and he is open touchdown rock boston and wow it happened again this time another kick return touchdown the special teams coach might have to get canned we can't keep allowing this special teams man what is going on this is ridiculous i sim the punt return in the defense for unlv gets a safety third and inches just need the conversion we got the wheels but we'll dump it out to buchanan who bounces off a guy and gets the block he's free what a play Play. and adam allen is back in the fray that last play must have injured our guy and buchanan can't hold on that definitely felt unlike buchanan but we'll take three 29 seconds to go we got brock boston across the middle laying the wood marching right down this field i'm gonna scramble we got a running back that's brent who has an open lane in front of him first and 10 dropping it back scrambling once more we have an open receiver holding on there buchanan ain't no way we are going up for a field goal we're taking six having a pretty good game all around i believe that 
Brandon Moore can lead us to victory. A happy ending on senior day would only be fitting. Strike to Jennings, first and goal. Go-to guy in the goal line, you know who it is. Brent for six. Back on top in this one. We'd love to see it. Fighting our way back from the depths. We're not going to get cheesed out of this one as Buchanan just makes a move and is off to the races. 95 speed, the Alaskan bowl worm, or should I say sponge. With two minutes left, the sponges have come out and said, hey, we're not a team to be messed with. Our true callers are showing. I feel so confident in this game that I've let senior rock Boston take a couple snaps at quarterback because why the heck not? You already know for the memes we're going to try to score in touchdown and rock Boston with a carry on the read option. First down. He may only be a 40 overall at quarterback, but who cares? He's got an open man wasn't accurate. I have a feeling here on Heisman and advanced sliders. We're not going to have an easy time with this task. Last chance, third down and 10. Going to lob one up. Does he have him? Oh my goodness. Rock Boston, the senior tight end, number 88, drops back, throws a dime to McCorder to cap off his career. And there it is, Rock Boston. What a historic moment for the senior what a way to send him off at his final home game in Salona. What a successful season finale with Robert Thomas, Scott Osborne, and Jamie Stone committing to the squad. It's conference championship week and we didn't make it. No way, man. Fresno State leapfrogs us in the final week of the season. They finished five and three in the conference, six and six overall. But since they had that tiebreaker against us by beating us, I guess they are the representative from the West. All right, what the heck? Lobos went nine and three, but... That's not who Fresno State's going to be playing. They're playing the Rams in the championship game. But hey, you know what? This doesn't take away from the 8-4 and four season the Sponges just had. And we're one win away in the bowl game from having the best season in Solana Beach history. Quick recap for you. Here's your quarterbacks. Donnie Turner completed a 36-yard pass. Rock Boston with the iconic 15-yard touchdown lob. Brandon Moore injured for most of the year. But look at that. 1,000 yards on the dot. Adam Allen, 1,609. Coach Phillip Rivers is going to keep playing the hot hand. Brent Burrell here with 14 touchdown plunges. Buchanan with an 800 piece. And six. The sophomore speedster from Alaska is going to be a big piece moving forward. Rock Boston, the senior stud, has been a steady force on this offense for the last few years. Defensive line, four sacks apiece for John John, Willie, and Alex. But look at sophomore Jim Hicks with four picks, man. So inspirational. Tack on two forced fumbles for Jim Hicks, too. Still no sponges in the Heisman race. But all right, the bowl committee has determined we are going to play in the Hawaii Bowl against Tulane. Might look like an underdog on paper, but I think we can soak it up. Wow, Tulane is a top 10 offense. Let's go bowling a familiar location here. We've played in Hawaii earlier this year. This game has massive implications for the Salona Beach future. We have been extremely resourceful getting the guys that we've gotten with all the restrictions in place. So we need a win to unlock the game even further. And so far early in this one, I'm seeing things I don't like to see. They're just busting us and busting us in a big way. I've noticed the defense sometimes does this. We have a slow start and oh my goodness, what a deflection fumble. It's bull mania and that is a bull mania type play. Halfback screen. Let's get in there and make a stop. It looked dire for a split second, but we hold him to three. That's a dub. Brandon Moore says no more Mr. Nice Guy. He's unleashing a new variant of himself. Look at that. You can see the amount of lime and lavender that traveled out for the Hawaii Bowl. It's inspirational. They want to see this team succeed seed and speaking of success Buchanan is so open that was a successful route what do you say let's make Tulane regret coming out here today Kai we've had our ups and downs together but I need you now badly and bro what okay let's drop it back let's have a successful drive here Jennings with the spin, big play. Oh man, just to add some extra fuel to the fire, our San Diego rival, San Diego State, beat Clemson in their bowl game. So if we lose to Tulane, it'll go to show that San Diego State is the better team. Up by 10, we're not finished. And look at all the traveling fans getting excited. Up by 12, we gotta keep it pushing here. And he's open, he's got it. Can't tell you how bad we need this victory. And Mike Jennings knows just how bad we need it. And oh my goodness, did that DB just flop or what? get Donnie Turner in motion see if we can spring something here and we do it's Burrell Brent breaking free down the sideline man's got speed he finishes Philip Rivers and Tony Hawk are literally two minutes away from hosting up their first ever trophy in Salona Beach history it is a beautiful moment indeed I don't care that they just scored a touchdown and come on now the final second ticks off the clock it is official 
Salona Beach is the Hawaii Bowl champion. We take down the green wave, and that means so, so much for our dynasty going forward. We did it. It was one for the ages. We're definitely going to miss Rock Boston next year, but man, we kept a lot of the squad intact for next season. Looks like we brought in a level 20 defensive coordinator, Adam Fuller. That's nice. And a level seven offensive coordinator where we can still allocate the points. You know exactly what I'm going to do in the offseason recruiting here. First order of business, it's an even playing field now, so let's see what guys are still out there and available for us to look at. Did land David Barry, so that's cool, but definitely kind of bummed about some of the guys we missed out on. All in all, though, the 62nd best signing day class is not too shabby. Went ahead and put Victor over to left outside linebacker, so that can make room for David Barry, the new 76 overall true freshman middle linebacker. Scott Osborne, another talented linebacker from Alaska, joins the mix. Salona Beach sure loves their frozen sponges. And check out these signings. Goodman and Stone will fit right in here in the secondary. And it looks like Amir Barber can plug and play on the offensive line. Training results Results are in. Adam Allen does take the biggest lead. But the way Brandon Moore stepped up at the end of the season in the last couple games, I think he's the best bet going into the offseason. What? Kellen Buchanan just keeps getting faster. 97 speed now. This is our first time finally having a crack at the big boys. And Jerry Walker, a 81 overall tight end. Yes, please. Take my scholarship. Take my points. I want you. We talked about Mark Blanchard. He could be the face of this program if we can land him. So uh, we'll give him all the points as well. And actually, this is encouraging. His bonus factors line up pretty well with the Salona Beach. Carson Bynum would be a nice addition to the secondary, so we gave him some points and a scholarship. Tim Hawley is juiced. This defensive end has 92 block shed, 88 finesse move out of high school. That is insane. This the type of guy to get drafted after one year in the league. This is a beautiful sight indeed. 81 overall, 79 offense, 82 defense. This is the best team we put together by far. Salona Beach going up against U of A. This is going to be a fun season opener. Third and 10. Let's make the stand here. I'm taking control of Barry, and we drop him for a major sack. The downside is Willie, Dorsey, and Shane are all seniors defensive ends, and they're graduating this year. Just one more stop here on defense. Read option. That fooled us. Really need to get the Alaskan star more involved, so let's go ahead and do that as he breaks free from the tackler. 97 speed. What you got for me? Okay, 42 yards. Third and 11. I think we got Jennings out here. Yes, sir, against the star DB. I'm going to take my points, and what is this? Kai Smallwood no longer here. It's Cleveland. Three points in the first half. It's kind of lackluster. That's why we're we're going to get things going here in the second. QB sprint out is a pretty fun play here. I like just to scan the field and throw picks, apparently. Here we go. Let's. Oh, he's running a little QB sprint out himself. And he's found Thomas, and he holds on. We're sending the house up the middle. Come on now, make a stop. Oh my gosh, he got bodied. It's time for the sponges to bear down, if you know what I mean, and get the dub. Read option not really working today with uh, our quarterback, which it usually does, but Buchanan. Oh man, we found him in the corner. Third and short, this is where a big play is needed, and we just get caught up on the backs of these offensive linemen, and Marshall's just busting out of there. Are you kidding me? What is going on with the defense right now? We have to make a stop, and we don't do it. Fourth and 11. Anything goes here. So let's just let one rip to three receivers. No one wanted to catch it. And then you guessed it. That's all she wrote in this one. Arizona gets the dub. An efficient game from Braden Dorman. We're 0-1 in year five. Arizona's a tough opponent, but that was not encouraging. Bad news for Salona Beach. Mark Blanchard has already committed after just one week to Texas A&M. With Mark Blanchard headed to Texas A&M, I think we found his doppelganger, Zach Miller. One inch shorter and three pounds lighter. Zach Miller is actually plus one overall over his doppelganger 87 speed 90 excel 86 throw power 82 accuracy i'd be a happy camper with this guy it's time for the salona beach home opener and i'm hoping for a much better result than week one against arizona this time another wildcat team comes to town northwestern visiting san diego ah yes absorbent field home of the sponges we're much better in the ocean atmosphere soaking up all the nearby humidity water anything that comes out from the ocean makes us feel right at home. I need to see Brandon Moore get more dual threat like, and so I'm gonna call a read option, the spin, nifty play. Fresh set, let's throw this one out. We got Jennings, what a catch, what a play. Brandon Moore with some back spasms, he will return. Thankfully, in the meantime, Adam Allen delivers the play. Buchanan down the sideline. Are you telling me that's not a touchdown? I don't think it matters, we're down to the one. Let's just plunge in. Good news, it looks like Brandon Moore is back. I'm gonna go deep, Nolan's scope is wide open. He makes the catch, he's going down the sideline. He's got a 
move. Fighting for the end zone. A little bit of deja vu back to the inches line. It's a flick out to Brent Burrell up the middle. He's got another touchdown. Second and six. Northwestern just outside the red zone. They're going for a big play. He's got Hubbard. Second and goal with just 12 seconds left. Barry's up the middle to stop the run. First and 10. A little flat out here to Buchanan who runs a man over. He's got speed. He's got strength. He's going to be a solid receiver for the next couple of years. Close to the red zone once more. We got a wide open Jennings keeping his feet in bounds for a nice play. It's crunch time now. Slant to Buchanan. He hauls it in and he's got a first and goal. Second and goal. Read option. Felt like the right choice. Brent is in the end zone for the third time today. Fourth quarter action here. Northwestern is driving and they got a wide open tight end. First and goal. Here we go. First and goal. They're going with the slant. They got him. Ricky is in the end zone. They're tying this thing up. Second and eight. Let's hand it off to Brent. He's got a wide open lane and he is off to the races. Down the sideline to the 20, to the 10, into the end zone. Pater. Two seconds left. Let's hand it off. Last time, last chance. He's got it. Touchdown, Nolan. Told y'all we just needed to soak it up a little bit more and a home opener got us right. Brent with four touchdowns on the ground. Big win. A little recruiting update. We're not going to be able to land Jacob Battle, the number one middle linebacker. He is pulling away from us. Unfortunately, the same is also true for Frank Goins, a top power running back with 89 speed, 85 spec catch. We're going to have to abandon the fight. That's okay because Jerome Payne here from Pennsylvania will be a good fit. Danny Medlock, Jerry Walker, two top prospects, all no-goes here as well. It's good to pull away early so you can allocate points elsewhere. Like my friend Dwayne Cade here from Colorado, a landlocked sponge. He is a five-star athlete with 90 speed, 92 excel, 76 catching, 86 route running. Sounds like a premier receiver. We'd love to bring him in. Cautiously optimistic here about Zach Miller, the stud quarterback we found. He has all the tools we need. I think this is the first time on paper we are even at overall 81 a piece for Coastal and Salona Beach. It's the battle for the beaches. Which coast is the best coast? Let me know down in the comment section if you think Salona Beach is the best coast. The sponges, do we have it locked on the west side or is it South Carolina and the Chanticleers? You let me know. Second and two, scrambling once more. Just gonna throw it to the big man and... Let's pretend like that never happened. Just forcing way too many issues right now. But Buchanan, that is a problem. An issue, you could say, for the defense. Dropping back, scrambling, escaping. Got a lot of room right in front of him. Let's just take it down to the goal line. That last sack knocked Brandon Moore out. Adam Allen's back in. Let's dump it out to King, who gets the touchdown. Third and goal, looking for the defense to step up right here, right now. Going outside, Jones was in his own island. Adam Allen, second and 10. Fourth quarter action. I think he's got a Buchanan wide open. The Alaskan sponge in to the end zone for six. Adam Allen threw a dime to his man, and the defense is all over Blake Boda, you're going nowhere, my friend. Adam Allen seizing the opportunity here to show what he can do as Jennings makes a big truck. Adam Allen has been a difference maker today. He's found all the right reads, made all the right plays, decisions, everything. Second and seven, we're going to go to the big tight end. And yo, I just forced that thing so hard. Oh my goodness. What am I doing? Third down, all out of timeouts. We have to stop this right now. It's a pass. I was not expecting that. I must admit. And they... I sit. This is a shame. Adam Allen looked good, had the momentum on his side, and unfortunately fell just short at the last second to Coastal. And that's a wrap. So we lose 17-14. We're down to one in two. What is going on? So unfortunately, we dropped the Battle of the Beaches, and it looks like Salona Beach is not the only team rebuilding the Akron Zips. Surprisingly, 79 overall, 84 offense. This is our next opponent. Akron is 0-2 on the season. Salona Beach 1-2 now after dropping that heartbreaker at the end of the last game against Coastal. Right back to the man, this time on the ground, and he coughs it up. Are you kidding me? Moore Jr., picks it up. So maybe this really isn't the old Akron team that I once knew. And my goodness, third and 14, we got a chance here to do something big. And we got a wide open Cozart who, if he can just break free, he'll get down to the first and goal line. That is how you respond back to the six, eight tight end. He cashes in for his first ever college touchdown, Brian Williams. There we go. Put the ball in Adam Allen's hands. That's a okay with me. The six foot eight tight end going up against a DB. And why in the world would you not try to go for the ball? Zips out here low key exposing us and uh, he catches his own deflection. Here we go. We got Brian wide open. He catches it and keeps it moving. 
That's the big man. Read option at midfield here. Adam Allen does have legs himself. And yeah, he's off to the races. What did I say? Adam, do it all by yourself. Hand off Brent up the middle. Fumbles again. Are you kidding me? And then the next play, they score. I'm stumped. I don't know who Akron played in the first couple of games, but they feel like a legitimate team that is hard for anyone to beat and uh, we're having our fair share of troubles. Adam Allen efficient thus far in the game. We got a wide open Cozart who can go all the way. Dropping back, Buchanan, what a step on the defender. Buchanan has a buddy back from home here on the sponges as well as we brought in one of his linebacker friends from Alaska. But forget that for now. Brian Williams, the new tight end off the block. Six foot eight machine scores his second touchdown. At the one, let's just see if we can top it off with a handoff to Brent. He does the rest. Just one play after the other. We're having quite the performance today. Adam Allen is dialed in. Over 400 passing yards. We want a little bit more here to top off this game. And I think we got him. Jennings, that was a creative play. That is a wrap. The Salona Beach Sponges take care of business on their home turf as they should but props to the Akron Zips. That was the best offense we played all year. Two and two in non-conference play. Honestly, not what we were expecting when we started the season, but hey, we'll shake it off. It's conference play time, and we're going up against the San Jose State Spartans. San Jose, Salona Beach, technically a light in-state rivalry here. Nothing as crazy as Coastal Carolina and San Diego State, but we still don't like these guys, and we still want to beat them bad. Fresno State, San Diego State, Salona Beach, that's rounding out your top three in the West. Looking to convert here, third down. Let's scramble out to our side. Yep, I see you. It's Jennings again into the danger zone. We go, Brian Williams. Welcome to Salona Beach. Trying to be the masters of getting out of danger zone here. That is exactly what we're looking to do. The pressure is getting in, and he had all the time in the world. Wow, what a sell, though. Dropped it, when all said and done, what a circus of a play. In theory, this should be a textbook kick, but you never know. He's good. Cooking all the way down to the red zone. Nolan Scope gets us closer. Here we go. Third down. Who's going to come through? Who's going to step up? I guess Adam Allen will just step up with his own legs. I think we can put this one out of reach with another touchdown. So that's exactly what we're looking to do. We take those Mountain West W's, baby. And even if we make a couple mistakes here and there, 21 to nine, that's pretty decisive. Eric Joseph is our first recruiting victory. He has committed to Salona Beach and that's always great news. But man, I think we got some major recruiting victories around the corner because we are pulling away in the Zach Miller sweepstakes. Back at home for week seven against the Nevada Wolf Pack. This is about the halfway point and and uh, we have been unstoppable at home. That could spell trouble for Nevada, but check this out. Tony Wiggins is the first five-star recruit to visit our campus in Salona Beach history. Tony wants us to rush the ball for 100 yards at least. I think we got him covered. Third and six, I'm gonna go out down the sideline to Buchanan, and he is good at getting some separation. That just means I need to test the water and go for it here on fourth down. What a catch by King, one-handed and in style. Oh my goodness, Coach Philip Rivers has no faith in our kicker Cleveland I guess can't even hit a 30 something yarder so he's making us go for it on fourth and long Jennings hold on keep fighting oh my goodness that's a touchdown fourth and 13 back to the ground we go Adam Allen makes a move oh baby second string squad is in but I think we still need a few more yards to get the bonus goal for the recruit third and 14 read option Brandon Moore still showing that he can do it with his legs and he stays up You've got to be kidding me. That was an insane run. Shut out football. That is the brand of defense we like to see. And Adam Allen, again, player of the game. This dude is on a roll. Tony Wiggins visited our school, liked what he saw, plus 600 points. We are inches away from landing that five-star recruit. In fact, we're 5,000 points ahead of Alabama for Tony Wiggins. The Rhode Island Salty Sponge would be a Salona Beach first with that five-star recruit coming in. He looks like he can be a really good, running back or db slash safety he's got good man zone speed plenty of action to come as we finish out year five and it all starts with a heated rivalry the battle for san diego aztecs sponges this rivalry goes back just a handful of years but it's been lights out action since second and 11 barry blanketing these guys except the one guy we left open mccormick scores past midfield love the efficiency already in a strike to the big tight end that is the six foot eight machine or is it six seven i just knew that dude was massive pause touchdown no pause there aztec settling for a field goal and it's down the money 
Oh yeah, we got a quick jump on the line. Jennings holds on. Don't trust the kicker we got right now. And actually we're in the market for a new one. Six seconds left, five seconds left. Quick dump out here to Jennings. Two, timeout. 27 yards really should be nothing for us. Cleveland barely squeaks it in. 10-10, let's drop it out to Buchanan, who gets a step past the man. Is that stiff arm enough? He breaks free. Coming out aggressive, swing in here in the second half, and that opens up the run game. Burrell in motion, let's feed scope. The other running back, we got the 1B. Nice spin in first down. Second and four, red zone action. Pressure coming in. We're gonna scramble out. We got a step on both defenders here, trying to push forward. Let's hand it off to Brent, who's gonna go up the middle. Didn't reach in. Let's try that again. Second and goal. There we go. Right back down the field again. Adam Allen scrambling out, finds Cozart. Touchdown. And that passes Dylan Wave, a OG from year one of Salona Beach. And why the heck not? It's rivalry football. Go for two. Scope, can you do the rest, my friend? Honestly, it's all good. We're just gonna go back to the option and get it done right here at the C parted Adam Allen. Oh, you know, just a casual 40 yard field goal, something any good kicker should be able to hit, right? Wrong. Cleveland is not that guy. He's off the team. I'm just going to go survey people on campus and see if any Salona Beach student wants to be the kicker. But that's definitely something Philip Rivers can do in his free time because right now he's going to celebrate with his boys. We just won a ball game. Salona Beach is the team of preference here in San Diego. The Lyman Lavender are making strides in this program at a rapid pace. By week, we just took the Aztecs to pound town, but Philip Rivers had other ideas and he wanted to go find a kicker. The name's Dana Babano and this guy's serious. Philip Rivers was out at the rec center like anyone would be and spotted this dude leg pressing 750 pounds. Hold the press on Babano because Tony Wiggins just committed to our school. I believe that is the first five-star recruit. It is. Welcome to the team. It looks like to me he's got a running back build, but he also has really good man coverage, zone coverage, press, some catching ability. I think we can put him anywhere across the field. Let's head back home to Salona Beach and take on the Rams. Tim Cooper, an athlete, but a natural defensive end build visiting us. That would be a big replacement on the line. Absorbent field where sponges go to so Soak up the sun and soak up their opponent. Second and two, scrambling out again. Again, maybe we got a step with Buchanan. We find him. This senior year honestly just feels different for Adam Allen. Like he's delivering 95% of his balls. Adam Allen back to work. That's Williams, the big tight end, rumbling and bumbling. We started with the ball because we wanted points and points is what we're gonna get as Babano nails that one. Let's send in a blitz, see if we can get anyone through. And nah, when you got that much protection, you got like all day practically. A failed blitz always spells trouble and they score. Second and 10, curl flat. That's Buchanan. A little too late. Buchanan on the ground looked like in a lot of pain. And shout out to you, Cozart, for stepping it up, the senior. So the news came in, Buchanan is out with a concussion, so we'll be without him for the remainder of this one. But Brent Burrell getting shifty. I think we got some dudes that can step in in his place, and Adam Allen. You keep cranking the wheel when you get it moving. Wide open, Clayton King down the sideline all the way into the goal line. Man, it is such a feeling to have the league you were once struggling in become a playground of sorts. We can go ahead and ignore that last fumble like it didn't happen, am I right, guys? Rams offense was non-existent in the first half because we had the clamps and yo, you just let him do that to you? Adam Allen saw something he liked. He turned the play into an audible Jennings. That must have been what he liked, that matchup. Second and 10, stretch, Brent Burrell up the middle. What a spin. Babano getting busy in his first ever collegiate game. Two field goals. He's good. Third and 20, handoff draw. That's a sign usually of surrender, but in this case, Marshall is off to the races. We choke. And man, the Colorado State offense can't lay off the penalties. They're back to third and 20 once more. So we have another crack at stopping them, um, and we lose it again. And that, my friends, right there is quite literally the definition of Ben don't break. Philip Rivers, the most riskiest man in the country, goes for it on fourth down. We get it. Midfield on the sponge logo. Good things happen over here. And that good thing is the big fella staying up. Oh man, just lost his balance on the sideline. Big third and eight back to Nolan Scope up the middle. He's got a step and down at the first and goal line. Got a talented running back carousel as Nolan finishes it. All good in the absorbent field hood today. Adam Allen, looking like a solid quarterback in our final stretch for glory. Five consecutive wins. We're six and two going up against the six and two Falcons. It's only a matter of time, I think, until we get ranked. But the Falcons will prove to be a test. In Colorado Springs for this one, Air Force on deck for the sponges. We're far from water. The elevation is super high. It's a dry climate. Man, out of our element. If you recall, 
Philip Rivers, all the way back in year two, had to adopt some military school philosophy after the winless season. Play action, second and seven here. Dropped and sacked and fumbled in Brown. Ah, gun empty split out here. This looks a bit scary. And oh man, what a pick. Send the house and the read option, of course. Definitely would not be surprised if this was the opposition we face when we go for the Mountain West title. They are six and two for a reason, but so are we. Say hello to Mike Jennings, my friend. So they said hello to my little friend in the last one. Does lightning strike twice? In this case, it might. Back to throw another bomb. It's Buchanan, who's got a step 97 speed all the way down to first and goal. Out of timeouts, but as long as we don't get sacked here, we should be good to go. Across the middle, Nolan Scope, touch. Down. Giving the Falcons defense fits right now as we begin the second half. Kozar is just wide open down the middle. Got to give credit where credit's due. The converted running back to receiver has made a few plays in this season. Read option again. This time Brent will finish it. Going for two to make up for our crime of missing an extra point, and we have it. Let's send in the NCAA blitz, and bro, every time I blitz and it fails, like. No chance. We'll shoot whatever it is. They need to pull out their best play right now on fourth and goal. He's not going to get anything off. Big sack. Come on in to Colorado Springs and give the Falcons a ride of their life. Let's fly, Salona Beach. We're 7-2. and two. The architect, Philip Rivers, got a upgrade point here, and we can now get the Saban factor unlocked. This ability, and in particular maxing it out, is OP. Instant commits when you offer scholarships? Yes, please. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jack Pot, Zach Miller, Tim Cooper, Jamar Nichols, welcome to Salona Beach. The system says Zach Miller is more of a running back build, but as long as you don't got the shaky Brandon Moore syndrome and throw too many inaccurate balls, you're clearly QB1. Bro, I'm in a tight battle for two of my top targets with Tennessee. They're gaining ground on us. Tim Hawley is a must-have. 92 block shed, 88 finesse move, 78 speed out of high school. Humana, humana, humana. Hawaii comes to town next and we're ready to get it done. Not only do we want to keep the win streak alive, we got to impress some more recruits. Rocking the lavender unis and the black helmets. Hawaii doesn't know what's about to hit them. We are on pace to have the best season in Salona Beach history and we're this close from being ranked. I can feel it. Good to see Brian Williams snagging a couple balls here as in the beginning of the season, he was dropping them left and right, but he'll take three and almost to the house. First and goal, time to plunge. Brent, yes. Get the defense to think we're going with the run play. Audible out to the big pass. And we're going to go down the sideline. We have a step. King. Touchdown. Back to the option. That's a classic play in the red zone. And they score. Adam Allen, a cool nine for nine. And... Yeah, I tried throwing it away. Ended up being a pump fake strip sack. So what was I saying about yearly beatdown of Hawaii? Because now it's all tied up. However, this time I see the tight end with a step six foot eight, Brian Williams. So as my way for saying thank you, we'll get six. Back within the five, that means we hand it off to Brent who plunges forward. Sweet, sweet momentum on our side. Adam Allen says, let me do you another one. Perfect in the red zone today. We're gonna go to our big old tight end, Brian. Why not go back to the big man? Man, he's been a key piece today in the offense. And just like that, let's finish it off with a scramble. Adam to the house. G to the G. Safe flight back to Hawaii, my friends. But for us, this journey just keeps on moving along. My favorite post-game screen. Dwayne Cade, Carson Bynum are on the squad. Welcome to Salona Beach. Am I seeing this thing correctly? Number seven, New Mexico Lobos? I guess we're not the only team that's been rebuilding well. Another game, another star-studded cast of prospects. This is insane number seven new mexico lobos we're on a seven game win streak so sevens across the board what's gonna give so adam dislocated his shoulder out for one whole quarter it's gonna be a deep ball and he caught it oh my goodness it deflected off two hands there somehow some way the fourth and 18 paid off it was some weird middle ground situation where you didn't want to punt it. You didn't want to kick a field goal. These guys are seventh in the nation for a reason, and they're starting to drive down the field into the red zone. Dampier with the carry. Winston in motion. Got some pointers from Jameis Winston before the game. We can't let that dude do anything to us. Never thought I'd say this, but in year five of a dynasty rebuild, I am in an intense battle against the New Mexico Lobos. Adam Allen, though, is the right guy for the job, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. I think he's got a step. Do it. Does he? Does he? Yes. King does. Quick slants 
Jets trying to finish the job. Oh man, he had a wide open guy and he waited too long. Who cares? 48 seconds to go. I'm just going to start slinging and sling I will. Shooting my webs like I'm Spider-Man out here. Third and nine. I see you, King, looking to do it himself. Let's get Brent a tote here in the goal line formation. Not quite. I'm so confident I'm not even taking a timeout. It might be risky. I got all three, but I want to choose some clock and take my six. Eat my cake too. So where's this number seven team everyone's been talking about? And I got to watch my mouth. I talk some smack. They keep driving down. They're really showing me why I got to keep my mouth shut till the game's over. They need points and they want more than three. Winston gets him a first and goal. I guess you just can't hold Dale down all game, can you? Easy touchdown. Getting a step closer to a big upset win over number seven. As Ariana Grande says, I want it. I got it. I want it. I got it. Hold the student section back, folks, as they're about to storm the field here in Salona Beach. The students are going wild, and they are just about to overflow onto the field. The mountain has been climbed, and this has been a monumental time in Salona Beach history. The good news just keeps on coming in. Blake Williams, Lewis Wade, two more additions. Looking to finish with a 10-win season, we're traveling to the Black Void, UNLV. So I'm going to sim this game because I still have problems with the Black Field. Yep, I was right. We're still in the Black Hole of a field. Simming to the end of the game, we're losing 7-0. I really want to get 10 wins, and I feel like I could have had good control over the story, but hey, we'll see if our team can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe if the Sim thinks we're up to the task. And we are up by four, you know, be down by one. This is getting way too intense. They're up by two now. A field goal. Bobana, the newest kicker, comes in and nails a three-point field goal to win the game. Adam Allen was efficient, but no points. Brent and Nolan both get a touchdown on the ground. John John, another sack. Count them up. I must be tripping because we're not in the AP Top 25. I almost guaranteed it after beating number seven Lobos, but... I guess it wasn't enough. There we go. Now it's history. Number 22 in the top 25 at the end of the season here going into the championship weekend. So winning by one point in the void really helped when it came to the top 25 rankings. And now it's a ranked battle for the Mountain West Championship game. And guess who? Hey, it's the Lobos again. Super proud of this team. 8-0 in the Mountain West with a top ranked defense. Led by none other than yours truly, John John, the sophomore with 11 sacks. We did it once. I'm ready to put the dog back in the cage. Adam Allen scrambling. Going to hit his receiver. What am I doing? Definitely letting the championship jitters get to me, I suppose, with Adam Allen out here, and we're whiffing again. On third and goal here, maybe some covered two is exactly what we need. And Winston says... I want a touchdown. We say not so fast. Second half action. We have a touchdown. You do see that, right? You didn't get to see the clip because I simmed the punt return and we scored. Special teams, special plays, special players. That's a sketch reference there because that's exactly what happened for us. Absolutely saved by the special teams play and absolute monster catch right here to get first and goal. We're going to give it to the fullback here. See if Chavez can plunge in. He does. So Brandon Moore is stepping in. Adam Allen must have got hurt on that last run. But hey, I'm not a Debbie Downer. I appreciate all that Brandon Moore has done for this program. He stepped in and won big games many times. And honestly, all things considered in hindsight, it probably was a good thing to have a 1A, 1B for a couple years. These two quarterbacks play different, and when one started to suck, we can always put in the other. And that competition is exactly what led to today, both quarterbacks playing at an elevated level. In essence, this is a huge fourth game for the Mountain West Championship title that is dumped underneath. Does he have the yak? No. And your Salona Beach sponges are Mountain West champions on top of the mountain. Scott Carter, another senior linebacker, got player of the game. Mountain West champ. Hold it up, my guy. Philip Rivers, you have done a masterclass job. Add trophy to profile? I think so. Let's go bowling to Las Vegas. And oh, the irony. We get to face Arizona. U of A, the team that skunked us in week one, we get to face them at the very end of the season two. So it comes full circle in this one. Clearly on paper, they're the better team, but I think we got a lot on our side. A victory here in the Las Vegas Bowl would be the ultimate revenge against U of A, who beat us in week one. Starting out on defense in this one, I'm coming in with some heat, and we're going to open this game up with a big sack fumble. 
We're here to play. We're here to show that we belong. Coming out with a certified bang to this one. Ah, uh, no, no. All our hard work just destroyed. We can still do it justice though by limiting it to three points or less. I'll take either or. Yes, three point attempt, not the easiest, but should be routine for a college kicker. And if we come together as a team, I think we can really get the pieces in play for a big showing. Speaking of Brandon Moore, uh, he's back in the game. So Adam, you good, my friend? Moore's got some bowl game experience, so he's been in these type of situations before and knows how to handle them. Adam Allen back in the game, looking to get a touchdown of his own because Brandon Moore got the last one and Buchanan is off to the races, 97 speed just burns the man that is where the alaskan sponge comes in handy for the newest quarterback that comes to town in salona beach there is a lot of footage out there of the receivers he's going to be throwing to they're all staying so i expect this supporting cast to help pick up the new quarterback within minutes of stepping on campus play action looking for an open man he's got williams springing free again let's just use our walk-on kicker here see if he can cash in for three he does adam allen and the sponge is really making the city of san diego proud conquered the mountain twice in one season the mountain west title check las vegas bowl check we've done so many things the school has never seen or even tasted and it feels amazing and the fans are loving it some of the alma mater of the newest school in FBS football. They get to celebrate their team on the biggest stage. Another trophy to add to the profile. A whole lot of records set for Salona Beach this year. Adam Allen, 3,100 passing yards, 24 touchdowns. 15 touchdowns on the ground for Brent Burrell. Jennings and Buchanan both had five, but there's a thousand yard receiver. Brian Williams, 620 and seven. Really good stuff from the freshman. Hats off to John John, 12 sacks and 20 TFLs. And then freshman corner Goodman had two ends of his own. And what's this? A level 31 OC has joined the ranks that is perfect because now we get to pump all these traits that our new quarterback and offense is going to benefit from in fact he's going to max out the whole skill tree off-season recruiting i got a couple guys in mind but i already know i want to pump so many points into tim hawley it's not even funny i just have to bring a guy with 92 block shed 88 finesse to the team close to 9,000 points on tim hawley that might be a little bit of overkill but i don't want to chance it 3.5 on trent christian a gem middle linebacker and 2.5 on athlete here, five-star potential receiver. I don't know, in hindsight, I probably could have allocated this better, but let's just hope fingers crossed. I'm not too convinced I'll get Joe Davis. Yo, no way, we got the full haul. Tim Hawley, Trent Christian, and Joe Davis, as well as Randall Cooper and Brandon Newton joined the team. We really just came out of nowhere, didn't we? The fourth best recruiting class in all of college football. Look at all the athletes we brought in. The only one that makes sense at quarterback is like who we thought. Zach Miller. Dwayne Cade, a textbook receiver here, also has the ability to play high-level tight end. I'll go receiver for now. Looks like this Juco guy was actually a quarterback too, so we'll have a backup, a one and two, just in case. Tim Cooper, an athlete here with a defensive build. I'm going to put him at right outside linebacker. David Smith, new strong safety. Joe Davis, five-star from South Carolina, another receiver in the wings. I do think Blake Williams makes sense at running back because he has the speed and excel. And that leaves Tony Wiggins, five-star from Rhode Island, who on paper here actually lines up best at running back. So maybe I just put Tony here and go grab the other guy, throw him back to receiver. So Blake, who I put here originally is now receiver. Dwayne Cade, Joe Davis, and Blake Williams, three stud receivers already at the, like the 90 speed threshold gonna compliment our new quarterback well. Tim Hawley, literally a plug and play menace. Training results are in and we have two 90 overalls atop the roster. It's Mark Coleman and Mike Jennings. Salona Beach legend, tight end Rock Boston, the man who threw for a touchdown pass as an out of position tight end and also helped us secure the school's first ever bowl victory as a younger brother. And Rock's younger brother is in his senior year of high school. The scouts say that he has Rock Boston's secure hands but also has tremendous upside. Currently a four-star recruit, I need to do everything in my power to make make sure he becomes a Salona Beach sponge. Currently not in the picture, but I need to paint the picture. That'll be pretty dope if Rock Boston can hand the baton down to Stone Boston. Darn friggin' right. They got it correct here. John John, preseason first team, all American. And okay, Jim Hicks also on the list. And it doesn't stop there. David Barry, the sophomore middle linebacker, second team preseason all American. Matt Mackey, insta commit. We got our first one. I didn't put any points in him. Just gave him a scholarship. He's a 68 guard. And that is a piece. 
that I'll go right into the offensive line. Oh no, the Stone Boston sweepstakes are moving so fast. We have a plus 130, but everyone's giving him scholarships. After the bye week, it's showtime going up against the Colorado State Rams on the road to kick off this season. Let's take care of business one game at a time. I am so hyped for this season. I am beside myself right now. I mean, you just can't see how excited I am to play some college football. I need to start thinking of some funny catchphrases I can say with Miller at quarterback. I could say something like it's Miller time, but I mean, that's not a beer ad, you know? True freshman Miller driving us down all the way here in his first ever drive. Just gonna keep it with his legs, tucking and running first and goal. I have a feeling Salona Beach is in good hands with this quarterback at the helm. Let's drop one out to top receiver Mike Jennings, touchdown. Big John John down in the trenches here, set a school record with 12 sacks last season and got first team All-American accolade. John John ended up being in the, t oh man, we just gave up a touchdown. It's all good though. We got Zach Miller back here and he's on the run, going to deliver a ball. I am literally glazing Zach Miller right now because he has been electric on both arm and legs. I didn't even know what to say. I was speechless at that run. Phillip Rivers landed a good one, I must admit. And kudos to Phillip Rivers for getting the supporting cast all around him. Jennings, another touchdown. Third and one yard to go. I'm going to go back to it this time. We're going to keep it Miller time. Touchdown. True freshman teammate Cade here is a backup tight end and fourth string receiver, and he's busting free into the the goal line. The future is so bright out here. You're going to need some shades. And it was only inevitable until I throw a pick. A lot just happened in the span of less than one minute here. They score. We're trying to come down and score again. Miller picks up the first. All right. I guess I won't force it to Cade this time unless it's necessary. We got slammed and backup quarterback Cooper is now in the game. He's transferred from Juco. Got the bad news. Zach Miller is dislocated his wrist out for two quarters and Dana Babano misses. Long story short, defense need to step up for me and we needed Zach Miller back and oh my goodness we are gonna have to dial up everything we got on this drive to hold them to at least three or nothing and welsh says nothing is the preferred method here i'm gonna take this one back can we go all the way justin welsh past the 20 down to the 10 and touchdown and here we go it's miller time again back from his dislocation and he's ready to work i'm hopeful we can get some insurance points and i think the big tight end is going to be a big piece dropping back yep we got him open. It's Jennings again. This dude has been a machine. Three minutes to go in this one. A little bit of pressure coming in. It looks like Jennings has got a step and he beats the defense for his third touchdown of the game. Two minutes to go. I'm sending in a blitz. Let's see if we can get a stop, and it's a touchdown. Got to stop this two-point conversion, though. We need to do that, and we do. Second and six, a little out route. Yep, we passed. That's right, and Buchanan with the speed is out of there. Come on now. First and goal, read option. Miller keeps it himself. Up the middle, touchdown. And there you go. Salona Beach secures their first game of the season. 1-0. Zach Miller, player of the game, rightfully so. Jennings was a big piece. 198 and three touchdowns from the receiver today. Coastal Carolina has no clue what's about to hit them in the battle for the beaches. This rivalry is about to elevate to a whole nother level because we are a serious team something we couldn't say a few years ago Salona Beach fans are absolutely gonna love their new quarterback in the home opener it's the battle of the beaches what more could you ask for well we know Miller's dealing with something because Cooper's back out there for his second drive and it's official he's out for the game that is a bummer I can't seem to keep him on the field in the first two games he just brings so much to the team when he's out there unfortunately the backup's gonna have to step in and he's a wild Wobbler. Fourth and goal in the rain. I don't seem to care because Cade's going to score his first collegiate touchdown. Second and 10. Just going to launch one. Honestly, what do we have to lose? And he's got him. Okay, Coop, I see you out here. John Hall's third sack against us. Coastal defense is playing tough and we miss. One thing we can take away from the injury to Miller is that we have a comparable backup. Big third down across the middle, taking it while under pressure. First and goal. Brent Burrell had 15 touches, most of those within the five. Let's see if we can keep padding on his long list of touchdowns and that is his 30th career touchdown one thing has led to it another we're deciding to put backups in we're up 28 0 and Coastal never stood a chance today. McFadden, Cade, Towns, Williams. Nice to see a few other names out here at receiver that are looking to get a crack at the roster in town. Says, what's good? What up? Good night. I think it's safe to say we had a lot of fun in this one. Shutting out Coastal Carolina. The battle for the beaches stays in the Pacific where it belongs. After that beat down, we had a whole slate of recruits ready to visit. So I'm going to start scheduling those. I think what I'm going to do is invite them all to come see us beat down Arizona. We only have a five-point cushion on 
Brownstone in Boston. So I think a big game will give us the cushion we need. Looks like Arizona took a step back this season and we're all tied up in the overall department. And here are those recruits we're trying to get to early. The black and white works really well in the blowout win against Coastal Carolina. So I'm bringing it back against U of A. We ain't just coming anymore. We hear as Miller takes it himself, breaks free. Little third down action here. Curl flat. Yep, Buchanan. I don't doubt it for a second. With that 98 speed, hit the turbo and go all the way. No one is going to catch you. Let's do a little celebration across the field all the way. The sun is setting on a beautiful San Diego night and Arizona gets their first points. Okay, a kick return touchdown. I went to go sim the kickoff return because I don't play every kickoff return and he took it to the house 101 yards. Well, at least we got a kick return for a touchdown because they score right back. Fourth and 22, you already know we're aggressive and it paid off in spades. To me, I think it means Philip Rivers has confidence in his guys and Dwayne Cade left alone for a touchdown. We got to feed the tight end out here and uh oh, we just don't have time to feed him. But oh my goodness, Miller, you are a magician. Okay, I don't want to throw ints, but I really have to start forcing it to the tight end because I want Stone Boston to come to Salona Beach. And sure, we may be up by 22, but I still need more yards. Literally 55 more is what we need. I'm looking at literally one guy and one guy only. And that is why I am not trying to do that. You got to be natural when you're playing offense. Much as I want those bonus points, I don't think I should keep forcing it. Maybe I focus on designing up better plays for the tight end to get involved like that. Let's just send the man on a streak. There might be an opening there. I feel like there might. And I think I was right. Touchdown. Third and 10. I'm running low on chances. Brian, I see you. There we go. With just 56 seconds left, I need two more yards. And that could have been it. Come on, Brian. Just two, please. There we go. Now it's official. Well, that was fun. We take care of business. It wasn't in any doubt here. Look at Zach Miller. Another five touchdown day. Early season haul already three games in. Chris Hicks, Stone Boston, Christian Campbell, welcome to the team. I asked who's going to stop us. Well, 24th ranked USF Bulls look like a pretty good team. So this is not going to be an easy task. Wow. In fact, USF has the number one offense in yards per game. And we are traveling over to Florida far from home, San Diego, California, almost on the opposite side. Well, practically, this is the opposite side of the nation. Practically, no, it's a guaranteed pass on third and 10. I'm trying to hold my zone and the defense gets in there. Good job by Slasher to get in there and hit the QB's hand as he threw. Third and 10, looking for someone just to break free and I'm just gonna lob a 50-50 ball. Doyle was the one to come down with it. Here we go, third and goal, empty set. They got a lot of options out here and thankfully some miscommunication. Just feels like there's nothing too much going on here but brian williams is doing his best to get us involved second and two now we're talking red zone football jennings fighting third and five let's try jennings one more time i think i like it over there and that's why rather miraculous that we're still in this game by such a close margin because we should be getting blown out i think i'm smelling the end zone on this one what do you guys think Cade behind his back. Oh man, we sniffed it, but in an inconvenient way. I'll be honest, that was not the guy I threw to. Offense super effective today. It's getting much better in the second half. And that is exactly the play we wanted to make. We could take a knee or we could pad stats. I don't know. Sounds like a clear choice to me. And that'll do it, folks. We win 28-6. Salona Beach comes on the road and gets it done. We love a post-game screen filled with yellow. Highlighted by James Reese, we just nabbed four more dudes. 4-0 and in rank 22nd in the country. It's time for some Mountain West Conference play. San Jose State is making their way down south of California to come to Salona Beach. Take two on offense. Maybe this will be much better for us as Miller's got some space to work. He's going down the sideline. Does he have the wheels to go? Oh man, just got him by the shoestrings. Miller was this close from taking it all the way to the house as our tight end breaks free. Couple big plays and we're already down here. So I'm going to go right back to Brian Williams. First in goal. We got a guy going out. It's McFadden. Almost had it. But now that we're less than a yard away, it just makes sense for the fullback to do the rest. First quarter is winding down. And man, our tight end has been open for days. Play after play after play. I see Brian Williams just getting open. So touchdown. One minute to go in the quarter here. I want to get a stop. So maybe I can get a chance at offense. And well, they get a first down and more touchdown. Right now, my brain said, ooh, look at Kate over there. Let's get that freshie involved more. And if he gets open like this, I say, why the heck not? I'll spare you the details. Just know that our backups are in because we 
we are absolutely cooking the Spartans. You could see this game trending this way from a mile away. We just kept padding it on. Offense for the Spartans was pretty sorry. This is going to be the story more often than not here in the Mountain West. It's happening. We got another coach skill point. I'm finally putting a point into the game management tree. Emmanuel Smith has committed to Salona Beach. That's one of the guys with 98 or 99 acceleration. That'll be a welcome addition. Neck and neck battles here with Gabe and Greg. 280 overall players. Georgia wants Greg. Oklahoma wants Gabe. I got to convince them we want him more. Back up to number 17 in the top 25 facing Nevada Wolfpack at the halfway mark in year six. I feel like we're one game away from moving up a couple more spots in the AP poll, and that'll be the highest AP ranking in school history. Let's dial in and beat up on the Wolf Pack on the road and go 6-0 and in the young season. Win the coin toss, we get the ball, it's the drill. You already know by now that's what we do because we like to start off the game with momentum. When everyone out here is deferring the ball for the second half, we're out here scoring the ball in the first half just like this. Kick off, return, open the game with a bang. Zach Miller is that guy, man. He delivers such accurate balls. On second down, I'm choosing to spread out the offense so we can run a read option to perfection. Another special team, special play, special player right there. Big touchdown, and we're up 21 to 0. And that is exactly what we like to see. Give it right back to the All-American corner. If it ain't broke, we're not going to fix it. I'm calling the read option once more. Letting Miller this time sprinting to the outside. It is wraps, folks. Someone needs to come check on these guys because I don't know what got into their morning breakfast because they suck right now. I know calling that out there was a little blunt on my end, but it's the truth because what are these guys doing? They are dog water right now. Cade to the end zone. Touchdown. Well, you guessed it. I mean, backups have been in for a little while now, and that was the third string running back getting a touch you tell me in the chat is this the best Salona Beach team you've seen is it better than Adam Allen's 12 and 2 run from last year time will tell and you will have those answers here in the next episode as we just cash in once more with Dwayne K Zach Miller another player of the game accolade and he only completed 12 passes that just goes to show you the domination we brought on both sides of the football and when we pick up the second half of the season we got Gabe White and Greg McIntyre ready to visit oh snap what a jump I didn't think we'd go straight from 17 to 9. We're in the top 10 AP poll. The road to the Natty begins with the battle for San Diego, and we must win over San Diegans before we can win over the nation. Here we go, kicking it off in Salona Beach at the start of this one, and we got about six, seven games to go, and potentially a playoff berth for the national championship. Third down, send in the dogs, Avery, all the boys, and a Jim Hicks interception. Best case scenario for the guys. Let's see if we can take this one back just enough. See if the play action springs anyone open. It springs our big tight end open, and we're down into the red zone. Two yard gains all the way down the field. So why not pass it this time around? And he got it scope for the touchdown. So much for working the clock when you got a wide open man like this and Jennings comes down with it. 11 seconds left. I want to see if anything opens up whatsoever. And you know what? It opens up in front of him with the legs. So with five seconds left, why don't we just settle for three and get the job done? I saw a pop-up just show up that the Aztecs only have four first downs all game. That's insane. And what a one-handed touchdown by Jennings. Victory formation and it's a first time in school history that we've shut out both Coastal Carolina and San Diego State in the same season. I think that's how you know the defense is the real deal this year, and they're going to be the reason we get to the natty if we can get to that point. Hold the line. I forgot to say we had some recruits visiting us, and look at Gabe White, man. 80 overall, so inspirational. He's committed to our team. That is massive as he's 96 speed, 88 man coverage, 85 zone, 86 press. This dude is like the next prime time. Come on. Hold on. Wait a minute. I'm not even joking. 81 catching, 81 route running as well. He's a top tier receiver and DB. He's the next two-way for Salona Beach, Gabe White. And on that lovely note, let's travel over to Appalachian State and take on the Mountaineers. This should be fun. Let the games begin. Appalachian State, Salona Beach, we're on deck right after the break. I always enjoy playing new teams for the first time, and uh, we're in scenic Appalachian State, this one. We are yet to have a sponge picked in the NFL draft, but if I had to put any money on it, I would probably say John John. And are you serious? We're starting with another pick. Bro, I feel like I just 
woke up from the ice age or something because I still need to dethaw all of this junk for my system, man. And are you kidding me? Third and three, now maybe we can get the party started, start soaking up the opponent like we've been asking. And what a find to be cannon there. I thought that could have been picked. Here we go now, a little bit of fakery here. And he springs free. Can we connect with Brent? We can. Big touchdown. Let's get our lead back. Ready to put up some points before half and then come back in the second half and do it again. That's what he's all about. Above all else, this man is a competitor and he knows how to compete at the biggest stage here as a freshman. Now with the lead, it's literally all about adding cushion and we're gonna do that here. Jennings bruised his shoulder on that last one, so why not rely on the big tight end and he just snags that one and brings it back in bounds. Now second and goal, they stack the box, which is a perfect time for us to scramble out and see if Scope can make a move, get to the sideline, touchdown. Oh baby, what a play. And excuse me, I know I see that right. Number eight, Cooper is out here. What happened to our guy? That last play when he threw for a touchdown must have got to him and yo, we get sacked for a safety. Hoping the defense can atone for our wrongs and I just whiffed on the quarterback. So Randall is off to the races and see ya. Randall did what he had to do and Brent's gonna finish it off for us. And on third and 11, this will be a big test here and who let Hayes wide open? So now all of a sudden this onside kick is massive. William soaks it up and it just continues to keep it moving. Can he go all the way? This will be one of the craziest touchdowns if he can keep pushing it. Yes, sir. So the undefeated season continues. We're eight and zero, and what a, okay, opportunity to recognize him as player of the game. 40 kick return yards and a touchdown. He did more as a tight end catching the ball too, but clearly that play was so special. Talk about school first, man, that crazy play. And now the recruiting board, this is like the first time I've had like everyone I really wanted kind of targeted and recruited in the first like seven, eight weeks of the season. And come on now, turn me up. Greg, the 80 overall right guard is coming to Salona Beach. We are moving up in the world and this is gonna be the biggest test I think left on our calendar. Air Force 10th ranked. They were previously third ranked in the nation. They must've just dropped the one before this. So a tough opponent nonetheless. We gotta get through these guys. This is the biggest test of the season right here, right now. Top 10 ranked Air Force. That is not something you hear every day, but military schools and NCAA 14 were pretty stacked. Cause as some of you all know, the further you get into your simulation and dynasty mode that they start to like always win. Cause it doesn't really make sense for a military school to become cracked when they have all the limitations that they face in real life being in the military. But who knows, I might have to take that up as a challenge and show everyone it's still possible to win a natty with a military school. QB sprint out here. We got a man. Let's connect and finish it to McFadden. Brian Williams has clearly been a go-to guy early in this one. Like, I still can't get over the fact that he took a onside kickoff to the house and is out here putting up 100 yards receiving today. And once you get a massive lead like this, the defense will come in and finish you off. Oh, baby. Man, I just want to reminisce and think about the Salona Beach greats like Brent Martin, Rock Boston, and how they would have operated with this elite team around them. Three games in, I think it's safe to say we have unthawed and we're unthawing in even a bigger way. Okay, but real talk, how are these guys 10th ranked in the nation? And real talk, why can't we keep Miller on the field and healthy? Doesn't matter anyways, because Cooper to Jennings. Ah, good, it's just back spasms. Nothing to worry about here as Cooper QB sneaks his way in. And it's a wraps, folks. I don't need to show you really anymore. 49-3 is the finale. Way to go, Sponge Nation. Way to show out for your boys. It's like at this point, do we even have scholarships left we're just locking in every guy we ever looked at and remember this fact for your next trivia game Salona Beach for the first time is number one ranked in the nation and it came in week 12 of year six of the rebuild and so on that note let's go soak up the rain in beautiful Hawaii and uh, get the job done I'm definitely not content with how we're playing this team so close so that touchdown will at least give us a little bit of a cushion. And on that touchdown, Zach Miller is the season record holder for touchdown passes. First and goal, read option, Harris has got it himself. With a minute 20 left, they're gonna take their field goal attempt in the rain. It is off the post and still good. Still got all our timeouts here, just gotta make the easy read and get a play. I'm opting to keep all my timeouts at this second, but hey, we might start using them here soon. At the very least, field goal range. At the most, we definitely want a touchdown if we can get our hands on it and beautiful. Cannon clutch. This is what I'm talking about. Drama intensifying Brent with the carry. He fumbles. Oh my gosh. Timeout. Ain't no way my man almost sold us like that. That was scary business out here and on the run to Cade. 
freshman to freshman, a connection so deep, so good, so firm, so faithful. They are able to soak it up in the rain and score the go-ahead touchdown. Dude, I was going to say, I mean, our first week being ranked number one, it can't end. If we can just walk away here with no miracles, we have dodged an absolute bullet in this game. That was scary, yet we do it. Tim Hawley, the freshman defense alignment, freshman all over this place, man. A win is a win. Yes, it was ugly, but now we get to square up against the Lobos, and hey, I think we hopefully can fare better in this one. Clear and dry out here in New Mexico. That's a little bit better maybe for the football, but hey, rain or shine, we're ready to play. The opening kickoff against the three in seven, New Mexico Lobos. We are underway and underway with a bang. How many times have we seen the speedster from Alaska start this game off with an exclamation point? For his first year, Zach Miller has been impressive. A real chance for this man to go 99 overall here in a couple seasons. He is so wide open. Can we hit him in stride? Thank you, Jennings, for that house call. You really shouldn't have any questions left after the beatdown we're giving today because Miller's going to step up and score himself. Anyways, we got a wide open opportunity. Buchanan gets the big touchdown on this one. Jennings had the last one. We're spreading the love. Lobos were literally just little pups in this game. Zach Miller and team got it done today. Final score 56 to 10. And now for the season finale at home, we're playing a team UNLV that is a worse overall than the Lobos, probably one of the worst teams in the Mountain West. And heck, in the regular season finale, why not still bring some prospects to town and show them what the sponge way is like? Because we mean business and we're going to take care of UNLV and get ourselves at least to the championship game and beyond. Third and inches, they're going for a pass play. I thought they would run it. Somehow shakes off John John and throws a touchdown to Christian Howard, you really don't see that every day. Looking to answer the touchdown that they scored earlier, why not let the six foot eight tight end do it? All right, boys, I need some clean defense here. Let's not get fooled by the triple option. And well, we got fooled. What do you know? If we want to stay flawless, it looks like UNLV is in the way, but hey, we'll tie it up with that run from Zach Miller. Now, I think the question of the hour is, can we return the favor here on offense? So far, no, but that's why they make four quarters of football folks and maybe we don't have to wait quite four quarters of football let's get it done in the third baby it is officially over now with the fresh set and time off the clock don't really have to be running the ball right now i could be kneeling it but i wanted some extra points if i can get it just an angry run or two away from pay dirt and we got it and thank you nlv for sharpening us up with one last test here at home we should be good to go locked and loaded for the championship game and a direct path to the natty in the final game of the regular season, tally two more recruits to the team. Looks like the Air Force scrapped their way back to the top 10. They are seventh in the nation. That's really impressive, and they should get a good New Year's Six Bowl. But our sights are set on the biggest stage of all, and right now, the two seed is Georgia. Mountain West Championship weekend, only down Goodman, a really star-studded corner here, just dealing with that broken wrist. But I don't think that will get too much in the way here. We have big ambitions in Air Force. We absolutely spanked the first time around. Giving up three is is not the worst thing in the world. There is worse things out there as this play to Brent Burrell in a nifty spin is for 22. Well, how do you overcome a third in 33? I think you just gotta hope for one of these verticals to get open or just scramble. You know, I don't think that was a horrible decision there because now fourth and manageable, we get the dime to Williams. That is why you never back down, never give up, even when you're getting sacked for the third time in the opening drive. That is something that will have to change, man, going forward. It's unacceptable, but that is completely acceptable right there. And spectacular, my game froze, so we're going to have to jump out and jump back in and to make things fair i'll sim the first quarter i guess back like we never left the only thing that's really changed here is that air force no longer has their three points it really surprises me that the air force falcons are in this position because we've had no trouble but what a season it has been it has been quite the ride out here with a big touchdown to McFadden. Seniors flying high on championship weekend. And to everyone at home, if you don't recall from episode one, we are on Heisman mode with extra hard sliders. If anyone has even more of a challenge, feel free to send it my way, no problemo. But uh, yeah, we haven't touched a thing and we're dominating the opposition. San Diego is finally one step closer to having a national championship and a national champion school team, anything, any sport, any champ, that city 
is one game away from being able to call themselves a national champion city. A couple upgrades here on deck for Philip Rivers and our defensive coordinator, Shield Wood. No Heisman candidates. That's okay because it's been a team effort and we got coach of the year. Philip Rivers racking up the accolades. And here we go. The moment you've all been waiting for the national championship against the Georgia Bulldogs. We are going to have our hands full, no doubt. We have not faced anyone all year long, even close to this caliber. But before we jump into the game, let's look at season accolades. Zach Miller, freshman quarterback, 3,200 yards, 33 touchdowns. Add another 11 on the ground with his legs. Mike Jennings, a nice senior season indeed. Cracked the thousand threshold and put up 12. Tim Hawley out here, man, is a true freshman with 10 sacks and 17 TFLs. John John closely behind him here. This defensive line is stacked for the next couple of years. Stop it. Six interceptions for Jim Hicks. So far, no first team All-Americans, but wait a minute. Tim Hawley, John John, first team All-Americans. Throw in David Barry, Jim Hicks, and Mark Coleman. And shoot, why the heck not? Kellen Buchanan as kick returner. So that's six first team All-Americans. Second team moving down the list. We do get three more. Justin Welsh, Matt Smith, and Victor Stevens. Throw in freshman All-American quarterback, receiver. Yeah, we're stacked. And the whole defensive line, left and right and defensive tackle. We had double digit All-Americans, which is insane. So I expect all yellow here on the All Mountain West side of things. All right, y'all, get fired up. It's that time. National Championship football against the Georgia Bulldogs. Perfect 13-0 football along the way. This team has been dominant. Now we're going to face pretty much college football playoff royalty. Bulldogs are always here. Fellas, it is time to dial in. I mean, this is everything we've been working so hard for, and I need to see guys come through. Okay, now is not the time to get too cute. It's time for fundamental football, and he's going to score. I want to see if our guys can step up and respond as we're yet to complete a pass, and we get dumped. I was afraid a team like Georgia would come out and expose us, and so far, they are looking the part it is second and eight and geez man i just wanted to survey the field and then i forgot wait this isn't like air force or anything this is georgia and buchanan come on dude we had a chance it's truly unbelievable right now that the team is not stepping up for me and i'm just gonna have to try again and hope third and three man in motion here it looks like a slip screen can we get the stop oh no davidson just breaks free and he's off to the races holy cow so if i want to host up the natty i'm gonna have to score 24 quick points and some dropping back we're gonna scramble this time i'm just gonna keep it and pick it up absolutely need to walk away with some points right here and Cade holds on yes sir and we gotta go for two because we are needing a two-point conversion every single time and yeah not a chance here not enough just to get some points defense needs to step in and where were we on eric thompson i hope the city's still proud because i know we're not finished i'm already sounding pretty defeated but the tides just turned quickly here on special teams and we score again down by 12 i think the two-point conversion here if successful would go a long way and bro we just got bottled up not trying to get anyone too hopeful quite yet but look it's a fourth down it is the fourth quarter however so there isn't much time left and he missed all of a sudden it's getting awfully interesting out here but man there's no doubt about this pressure and that heat literally did a number on our qb as he's now knocked out for who knows how long randall cooper is now in the game our backup juco transfer will he be the one to give us a chance at national championship glory or will we fall just short cooper down the sideline have a run big fella oh my goodness let's turn this game on its head why not us why not us that's what i'm saying out here man Woohoo! let's go i'm literally stacking this thing like it's a run and it didn't pay off but hey that's great defense oh my gosh sponge fans are literally praying for a miracle right now as he makes the field goal it's an eight point game that's still doable and it looks like we're gonna have to strap in here with randall at the helm he is the man for the mission and he's gonna deliver a dime to brian i am sweating bullets out here as buchanan hauls it in gets around the star defender touchdown the season the year the national championship on the line with this play it's a handoff to brent and he's got it it's definitely fitting that the national championship game is needing overtime to determine a victor still without 
Zach, but uh, we got Randall to lead us. Stakes are ever higher here in the OT session. This has been a whirlwind of a game, and Cooper, stop me. You scared the heck out of me. I thought we slid, not dove. Out here like a madman, scaring me like that. That is not okay. Cooper taking a little bit of a beating, just gonna hand it off to Brent, who gets the touchdown. Big time. And you best believe we're just gonna take the one for now. All right, everyone, battle stations. I need you all to show out and not do that. One play touchdowns. Okay, do we got that out of the system? Uh, let's find out. Another one play touchdown here, pretty much to Austin. I'm already telling you right now, if I get my hands back on the ball and I'm gonna go for two, oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Jim Hicks, first team All-American senior cornerback, steps up for the big pick. This is the whole Marshawn Lynch, why did you pass the ball? Just hand the ball off, Seattle Seahawks Super Bowl situation over again. Come on, man. And you know what just happened here, guys? It glitched. It glitched. Our beautiful game here glitched. No, I'm, I'm not even kidding. We already proved ourselves that we won this national championship. Or didn't win at least, but we got the stop. This double overtime bug is something that nightmares are made of. As look, we get another fourth down stop. We've proved ourselves twice now. I swear, if we don't get the ball back here after this attempt, I'm ticked. All right, guys. Well, don't even know what to say. That was probably one of my like best games and comebacks. Just ruined. No, at the national championship game too. Georgia did not win this. We got some off-season logistics to take care of. And starting off on a high note, we have three Salona Beach sponges projected to get drafted in the late rounds of the NFL draft. Vince Manning, Mike Jennings, Mark Coleman, all making history here. No five-star signees this year, but who needs them when you got 10 four-stars and the third best class in all of college football. Keep your eyes on Gabe White this year as the Dude is a certified two-way threat. 80 overall corner, but wait, there's more 80 overall receiver next two-way. I think we need more help in the secondary, but I'm going to put him also in the depth chart for receiver. Training results are in, and we got a really solid squad on our hands. John John, 94 overall. Brent, our senior running back, up to 92 overall. And then we got sophomore Zach Miller, a 90 overall in just his second year. Last preseason act of year seven here, we got to set up the recruiting board. And oh my goodness, Zach Landry, the number one recruit in all of the nation, is interested in our school. And all these four stars made my board. Only minus one for Zach Landry when we scout him out. So that's an 81 overall with 93 route running. Five preseason All-Americans, three first teamers, Tim Hawley, John John, and Barry. I already know what I must need to do. 700 points and a scholarship. Zach Landry needs to come home. We have finally cracked the 90 overall threshold. 91 offense, 93 defense. A beautiful sunny day here in San Diego. The site of this one is Salona Beach. Coach Philip Rivers coming off an impressive coach of the year campaign but he's not satisfied the revenge tour starts now let's go back on the ground to Brent Burrell and finally for the first time in seven years we have an 80 plus overall offensive line maybe I won't have to scramble right every single play you know what I mean and Stone Boston gets his first collegiate catch that's a big moment and just for the memes I might have to give him an opportunity to pass a touchdown like his older brother did his big catch has been smooth sailing here as we score and top off the opening drive of year seven with a tutty there's his 38th career touchdown third down here we have to make the stop now now and wow tightly covered he still caught it chris thomas secures it for app state offensive line finally starting to shape up and just look at these blocks man two yards from pager i'm gonna let brent just finish the job that he started not exactly how i thought week one would be going right now as they have us on the ropes and he fumbles and as soon as i speak about the ropes it's victor steven scooping up the fumble back to the air here brian williams the six foot eight tight end is breaking free no one is gonna stop this man touchdown i wish these guys nothing but the best in the Sunbelt Conference, but when you're stepping on Salona Beach's field, we're going to soak you up. And I was really just trying to hype up our guys to get the fourth down stop. Fourth and one, will he step up? The quarterback is dropped for a sack, and that is game. John John, the man who specializes in finishing games with big sacks. out a boy. And the Salona Beach Sponge soak up game one, the home opener in year seven. So off to that 1-0 start we were hoping to have just cleaned up the board and added some new guys and we found the recruits we should have been looking for this entire time i mean just look at this list as i go down minus that bust there but look at all the gems well i hope week one was shaking some rust off because week two against usc finally got the clout to bring the big boys in down and it's not going to be easy trojans sponges it's a packed crowd once again because this is a little inter-california battle asking the goal line defense here to make a big stand and he gets the touchdown third and 14 
really need some magic here. Need to connect with someone in the end zone. Will it be you, Tim Williams? Yes, sir. We really need everyone to step in in this effort because without the senior leadership, it's anyone's team. Here we go. A little read option. QB keeper. Burry has a space, a lane, green grass, turf, whatever you want to call it. He's into the end zone. Down the field we go. Stone Boston just tops it off. Game is on the line right here. It's another slip screen. Can Barry make the stop? He does. Turning it over. Your Salona Beach sponges are 2-0 and with two nail biters early in the season. 2-0 and is still 2-0. and We've been doing enough to win these games. Now it's time to let it fly. It's the battle for the beaches, the Pacific Coast, Atlantic Coast. We're meeting up on the teal field. Let's go show who's boss. Here we go. Got the lime jerseys on today. The script lavender helmets. It's always a fun one against the Chanticleers. And well, to clarify, I should be saying it's been fun for us of lately. And Cade, they have a Cade of their own who we just whiff and he's going to go pretty dang close to the end zone. Let me know in the comment section right now who you think will have the better day. Is it going to be Dwayne or Phillip? Man, Murphy though. Can we talk about that catch? The one-handed snag was crazy. We have literally gone for fourth down now for the third time on this drive it's got to work and it will work once more crazy how successful that has become as scope to the outside cashes in little red zone action here quick in this one and oh man that pressure came in fast but we scrambled to the left and we have a lane teal field meet zach Miller. Quick three and out, and we're back on offense, ready to let it fly. And there he is, Williams, at the other end of that one. I just noticed Coastal has a safety with the last name Stone. So not only do they have one of our receivers, Cade, right here, they have Stone as well. They say if you can't beat them, join them, and that's exactly what it feels like in this one. Their defense may be tough, but I think we're just a bit tougher as Dwayne Cade just clears that one by a mile. No questions at all about this one as we came in, took care of business, got right and now we are going to be steaming into the Mountain West on a roll. The Akron Zips gave us a little scare last time we played them. We came out on top, but it's another round against the Zips. Can never count anyone out. However, Akron is traveling to San Diego in Salona Beach. Maybe this is something the speedster here, the dual threat, can help us with as he gets a step on his man. And he is going. He couldn't go all the way, but he did exactly what we asked him to do. If Gabe keeps stepping up as a receiver too, there's no way I can bench the guy. I mean, look at him just haul in anything his way. It's definitely too early to start talking about Heisman, but I don't know if NCAA 14 properly accounts dual threats. I do know this, a touchdown is awfully sweet right now. So nice, we might have to do it twice and Stone Boston's gonna break through first and goal. And now that we are here, let's finish it off with a lob to Brian and yo. I said, let's finish it off with a lob to Brian. Thank you. 40 seconds left. I think we got some damage to be done here in the first half. We just gotta start moving it and talk about moving it. Cade is out out of here touchdown let's just hand it off to brent see if he can stretch it out to the right here keeping his balance that was expert craftsmanship there sir just a first down away from ending this one officially and yeah it's official if you didn't think it was going to happen it happened but if anyone's out here voting for akron in a matchup against salona beach i don't know what to tell you you're looking at a wrong universe maybe a parallel one quick recruiting update we're about to close in on a few guys and i think we're going to free up a bunch of points to go target other folks let the all mountain west slate begin with a matchup here against the Colorado State Rams. These guys are down in the dumps, desperately needing a win. They haven't done it yet in the young season and Salona Beach just looking to keep the momentum going. I'm thoroughly enjoying this, I have to say. I mean, coming from a place where we could barely muster a win together, barely get a touchdown. I mean, remember year one, 0 and 12. I happen to notice that Randall Cooper is now in the game. So that means something happened to our QB1. For now, it's going to be Randall at the helm. So we're going to have to make it work. And breaking news, he's going to be out the rest of the game because he has a concussion. So Randall has got it held down for the rest of this one and that's a great start all right third and goal here just a quick slant and that's a touchdown from joe davis we're doing a good job just taking off clock and not letting the rams offense do anything and go ahead and pat it on more brent going into nevada week we have so many recruits ready to visit and definitely some good ones at that so let's go put on a show looks like we need to put a lot of focus on the passing game spreading the love between receivers and tight ends and i don't think that will be a problem for the boys in lime and lavender zach miller is on a mission this year in just under two minutes i think first blood's gonna go to 
to Joe Davis. Yes, sir. If it ain't broke, we're not going to fix it here. We're going to go out to K, the receiver this time, and he's just going to fight forward, and he fights all the way through. I don't think it'll surprise anyone when I come out and say that there's NFL caliber talent on this roster right now. Some of these guys are going to be blown up on the biggest stage on Sundays. This is exactly the energy I need to see if we're going to make a run back to the natty. It's been all blue skies and sunshine over here in the last handful of games, and I'm going to send you all soaking it up watching right now home on a very, very happy note. I mean, 81 overall Kelvin Pryor. Got him. Number one prospect in all of college football. Got him. Zach Landry is going to be a stud. Certified winners go to Salona Beach, and it's time for our squad to get some certified wins against the competition, and it starts with Lil Bro, San Diego State. It was much closer in the beginning of our school's history, but nowadays, it's not too much of a competition. Flirting just outside the red zone, we got two guys, but Joe Davis says, give me that and give me six. Aztec Nation, you guys are not satisfied. Fourth and two, and you got it. Pass midfield here, quick strike to Stone. Thank you, sir. Glad you finally came to play now. I mean, it's the end of the game, and all of it counts in a big way. And first and goal, the defense looks like they're in disarray. Can we catch them napping? And I think we just got it with Zach Miller. I was talking a lot of smack before this one. I got to live up to the words I was saying. And Avery says, I got you, coach. I got you. Hold on now. Love me a good old-fashioned defensive stand to cap it off. A turnover for the win. It's beautiful, beautiful stuff. Managed to squeak past a rival, the Aztecs, but a win is a win win up to 7-0 we go Wyoming Cowboys who's ready to brawl Alex Tolbert the number one defensive tackle is on a visit right now to see us whoop up on some Cowboys so let's give the man a rodeo he won't forget back within the five that's where we belong and Brent says this is where I belong in the end zone two minute drill time for some points and Brent is hungry for the end zone when a man is hungry I have to feed him you know how it goes you never leave a man that's hungry unfed and look at Williams man so inspirational Brent got a little too tired to finish the drive but his buddy scope here will finish it off for him just walking the dog here we go first in goal the goal line troops are in and they couldn't get the stop I'd be a little more worried if it was a one possession game but knowing that it's two possession game and the defense is swarming our defensive line is built different and check out Gabe White do a smile do a dance touchdown it's wraps in this one 20 seconds left i told you brent was hungry earlier and so i had to fulfill my promise and give him another touchdown shout out to all the fans packing out and selling out this one salona beach is on top we are cruising right now through the season eight and oh who's gonna stop us alex tolbert came to visit us and we're still in a battle against alabama to get him but michael green said i've seen enough i'm coming to salona beach and he's committed we have to keep our sights focused on on one game at a time so fresno state bulldogs i'm coming for you nothing like starting here on defense and getting the clamp job and clamp job indeed gabe white airborne that man took off and now let's go ahead and finish off the drive with six going across for the touchdown to tim williams Mwah! it's this chef's kiss and we are on the move again Ew. just getting bullied on the offensive line as you can see the last play hurt our quarterback and we got the backup in randall randall's all about that action Action, though and he wants to connect with his good friend Gabe White to the end zone touchdown I'd bet and say that if you're not within one possession when the fourth quarter's here you're probably gonna lose in 99.99% of the time that's right not much left to see in this one we did what we had to do Fresno State could not stand against the wrath of the sponges over the last couple years Hawaii's actually been stepping it up a bit and they're 83 overall so impressive kudos to those guys unfortunately they're just gonna hit a roadblock in us more prospects on the field side today ready to watch our team roll we're ready to pass we're ready to run we're ready to lift we're ready to tackle hit pick score gonna do it all it's gonna be a complete game of football is my bet nice sustained drive all the way down into the red zone lobbing it up to brian williams fighting for it with with every last inch of him just crosses the goal line touchdown. Salona Beach has a lot to consider with the offers they're getting to go into another conference next year. It might be worth a thought because then we'll face really tough power competition week in, week out. Other conferences seem to think we're there and I might have to agree with them. I mean, Brian Williams does it again. Here we go. And yes, I see a breakaway Dwayne Cade. We love to see it. Just get the acceleration going, my friends. Let's go ahead and try to do it again. I say, why the heck not this time to stone? 
own Boston into the five. Let's give it to Brent Burrell, the touchdown vulture to cap off that drive. Big third in goal, up with Brent in around the defenders. Have yourself a day. You have room to breathe when you're up this big. So with the cushion in mind, Brent Burrell getting it done on only nine carries today. The sponges are 10 and 0. Boom, clap. That's the sound of my recruiting board. Alex Tolbert, Sean White, David Hall to you. It's Boise week and oh, how the tables have turned. Keep lining up the prospects. We got more visiting. And bring on Salona Beach. The sponges ready to pack out this one again at home. On senior day, let's feed Brent Burrell and let him cash in. Just have to get right here across the middle. It's Brian. He's throwing a man down and we're in the five. Here we go. Midline ice. So Miller runs over a fella and says, how you doing? We're into the end zone. So it's senior day, right? So let's let Glenn Chavis cash in on the fun. Senior fullback spin it laying down the wood. Zach Miller, a little bit injury prone here. He's sidelined again in this one, but it doesn't matter. Randall Cooper wants in on the fun. Randall Cooper was a Juco transfer and he too is a senior on the roster. Final seconds winding down. Randall lobs one up. He's got Cade for six. And what a win indeed. Shutting out Boise State at home in the final game at home. Shutout wins lead to more commits. UNLV Rebels, it's time to get it on the black void field so you know what that means it means we're going to sim the game yeah i don't sim like any game at all if I, I i try not to i never want to but the black void this is unbearable to like watch i'm sure for you guys and unbearable for me to play so it's the one time we can leave it up to the cpu to determine how well or how poorly we play and so far we're off to an early 7-0 start they get a field goal back and forth it goes winding down before half nothing doing third quarter action it's pretty low scoring back and forth unlv I thought they were about to take the lead there. We kick the field goal up by four. We're gonna go possession by possession here. See who comes out on top. And oh my gosh, UNLV making things interesting here. And you see that right, big fumble Ruski. Stone is on top of it. So Miller's gonna kneel this one out and that is the final. I'm really glad we won, but 10 to six, you're serious? Conference championship week, updated look at the top three, BYU, Miami, and then us. Four and eight Air Force meeting us in the championship game. Is this a joke? How are the Falcons back in this thing? There must have been absolute implosion on the mountain side of the Mountain West. I mean, we just beat three and seven Boise State. So a four win Air Force is in the championship game. It's championship weekend. We're looking to see who's got that dog in them. And Dwayne Cade says, I am a dog. Hand off Brent Burrell, red zone machine. I like the result the first time. Let's hand it to him again. End zone, touchdown. About time we go for some more points. I think we're long overdue, so why not just give it to the speedster? And if you weren't sure what's going to happen with the outcome of this game, well, this touchdown should convince you. Shoot, I just can't resist. 18th touchdown for Brent Burrell. All right, man. We don't need to see any more because the Mountain West champ is right here staying in Salona Beach. Back to back to back. We're three-time champs and Salona Beach has no plans of letting go. The revenge tour is not complete without one last shindig. That's right. We're facing the BYU Cougars in the national championship game. BYU maintained the one seed and did not lose a game this entire season. Miami was the second seed, but fell to six. So that means they'd lost the ACC championship game. This is crazy to me. The top three BYU players, 84 overall, 82 overall, 82 overall. Yet they were a top two defense and top 10 offense. That's going to make a fun one in this one. BYU Cougars in the national championship. Salona Beach Sponge is back in the championship as well. We are on the revenge tour. We're not going to let it slip this time. This has got to be surreal for a lot of underclassmen like Stone Boston. I mean, his brother Rock never played in a stage quite like this. Zach Miller got dropped and Randall Cooper is in the game. Stone Boston, say his name. He has scored. I might have to look back at BYU's schedule to see how they got this far this year, but they're really feeling to me like a Wyoming or an Air Force caliber. Looking to make another stand here on this big play. And oh my goodness, how did he thread the needle? On this third and goal, let's bring in Gabe White, the dual threat, and he's wide open, touchdown. Pulling away in this one, special teams got involved. And oh my goodness, that DB over pursued the pick. Everyone's come out to contribute in the national championship game. And that's exactly what we ordered. Playing this kind of football, I'm sorry for BYU. You guys never had a chance. Just as the ultimate sign of disrespect, we want more and Cade gives us more. It's time to open up the champagne, throw the hats. We are champs, victorious. I am ecstatic. It truly has not sunk in yet that we have climbed the mountain. This is incredible. We were 
blue balled at the end of last season and we came back with a vengeance we were not going to be blue balled again and so zach miller the sophomore quarterback takes us to the promised land and check this out holding up the trophy it's a surreal moment san diego is now a national championship city that city has deserved and needed this for so long. I hope this result puts some San Diego Charger fans at ease because you now have a football team that is potent, deadly, can win and go toe-to-toe -to -toe against anyone. Time to go through updated school records. Brent Burrell broke his previous record of rushing yards in a single season, 997, three away from the 1K. Of course, he's the career rushing yard holder and single season rushing touchdown leader, as well as 56 in his career. Zach Miller, on the other hand, only a sophomore all-time school passing touchdown leader. John John blows Big Willie's record out the water, 35 sacks in his career. That is a Salona Beach record. Zach with a solid 3,400 yards, 22 touchdowns. Added nine more touchdowns on the ground and Miller spread the love around the roster. Good old John John, 12 sacks and 19 TFLs. Sophomore Tim Hawley right behind him though with six and 15 TFLs. And then Chad Slasher matched John John with tackle for loss. True freshman Gabe White with three interceptions. And senior Jimmy Turner going out in style, first team All-American. And as well, none other than our own John John who had such a storied career here. Give it up for Barry at linebacker. And then Slasher as well as Avery cracked the second team list. Big old John John, first round pick. This is going to be a difference maker on Sundays. Brent Burrell, a solid third round pick as well. And then Avery, Stevens, and Burton rounding out the end of the draft. Just continuing to do great things out here. The number one signing class in all of college football. It's a historical moment right now. Training results and yet another thing to mark down as a Salona Beach first. The first 99 overall. Zach Miller, welcome to the 99 club. Kevin Goodman as well, 94 overall, 98 speed, 99 awareness cornerback. Coach Deion Sanders is about to learn a whole new meaning for primetime football when he goes up against us. We will see these guys week nine in Boulder, but the path forward won't be easy for the defending champs as we have to face number one seeded Miami in our first game. Check out receiver Landry here, the best receiver coming out of high school, hands down. Extremely gifted, put up amazing numbers in Arizona, and he's gonna be a difference maker. I got him plugged in starting in the lineup at wide receiver three. He's too talented to bench. All in all, I think we've been doing a great job rebuilding, so taking a look at the team needs here, it's no surprise it's only kick and middle linebacker on defense. Most of the other spots are plugged up. Now in a power four conference, I am intrigued to see who's gonna be interested in coming to our school and off the rip, we have a five star. But more impressive, a ton of top four star talent. I think they're all gonna get on my board for now. Oh my goodness, the list does not end. This has to be the first time that I've filled over 30 spots with four star prospects and up. We really get to pick from the cream of the crop. So let's scout out these guys and see if any of them are hidden gems. And there we go. Robert Randall from Central Point, Oregon is playing up to five star and above 81 overall. All right, all right. I just found three 79 overall players on the recruiting panel. We want all of them. And since we have the lead, I'm going to try the Nick Saban ability here. Offer them the scholarship. Any insta commits of the three. Ah, but wait, there's another one. Stan Gonzalez. No, Carlos came through for me, 73 overall, 82 pass block, 77 run block. We need that. Omar from Carrollton, Texas, another stud defensive end with 87 power move, 80 finesse. We got a lot of guys we can look at here and continue this era of dominance. Hey, let's go. The 99 club, welcome to the entire offense. We have made it. A uncommon sight, a rainy San Diego here. You know what sponges do when it's wet? They soak it up. Peep the Big 12 symbol on the field. That's right, we're a Big 12 representative this year. So let's get it started in here. Mo Bamba's playing, blasting through the speakers of this stadium. Everyone's getting rowdy. It's go time. And the first play of the season is a handoff stretch to scope down the side. Big run to kick it off. One good run is all we got, and we're punting it back here to Miami. So they've traveled all the way across from Florida to San Diego, and let's see if we can take advantage of the jet lag. They're starting off with a handoff, and he is getting blown up. David Brooks, minus six. I want to see the defense step up here in the red zone, and that's not going to happen. Hold on now. Zach Miller delivering the ball. We know he can give, and here he is again to his man Cade. Isn't it crazy that he's an upperclassman now? I feel like Zach Miller just got here. But at the same time, he has already seen so much from this team and he's going across to Landry, the number one receiver out of high school. And after that collegiate first, let's top off this drive with a touchdown to Brian Williams. I think my initial
initial impression of the defense this year is that this is probably the most well-rounded unit we've ever had out here on the field. I'm telling y'all, Landry just feels special out here. Like there's no other way to say it except, oh my gosh, another opportunity in and out the hands. Good defense. But as I was saying before, I got really interrupted. It's not every day you get a true freshman that comes out to play like this. And on that pass to true freshman Landry, our boy Zach Miller in his junior season passes Adam Allen for all-time passing yards. That is an incredible feat. I don't want to take anything away from Zach Miller in that moment, but we have some dogs on the bench, man. I'm scared to see what some of these other quarterbacks will become. Like, no joke, we have a true freshman just sitting there with 90-plus throw power. My point is, I think we have more 99s in the tank. Massive fourth down here. You already know Philip Rivers is an aggressive coach, and Scope bouncing around. Get... Oh my gosh, that was the hardest four yards. Let's not give it up now. I mean, third and goal, can we finish it? And how is this love dude so open? Back up, Harmonin, who does not have the speed whatsoever. Get stripped, sacked, fumble. And yep, you see the scoreboard correctly. Despite our valiant effort, Miami was too much to handle. Starting off the season 0-1, it is going to be a tough climb back to the natty. That is not the type of game the defending national champs wanted in their return. So... Uh, 0-1 to begin the season. We got some work to do. This is massive. We got the lead on Brett Roland, gave him a scholarship, 79 overall linebackers coming our way. But losing to Miami was not massive. And I'm gonna need some vengeance here in the Battle of the Beaches going up against Coastal Carolina. They're coming to town. So I'm gonna go for it on fourth down and Landry came through. Talk about trust and building confidence for a young receiver. And there it is, his first collegiate touchdown. Zach Landry is gonna be special here for Salona Beach, I can tell. It is a rivalry game, yes, but I want this to be so lopsided that it hurts. And just as the clock is about to expire, there's Avery, the other freshman receiver. First and goal, let's let Wiggins plunge on in. Yes, sir. Third down, you can kind of tell that this is becoming a game we were hoping it would become. For now, let's keep trying to get more points and just run it up. That's what we want to see. Guys like Dwayne Cade making an immediate difference. Yeah, I think it's safe to say Zach Miller stepped up his game in this one. With his second TD pass here, that's Brian Williams, who also sets a record. Congrats to him. Sometimes rivalry games are much closer. In this case, it's back to the blowout fashion. Now is probably the time I start sparing you the details because you already know what's happening here. I'm going to keep running it up. This time, Tony Wiggins up the middle has a hole and convoy to guide him in. And yeah, you guys guessed it. That one was over without a doubt here beating the rival school and handing them that whooping we needed just to get right again and we're up to one and one jumping back into the recruiting panel we got some tight leads on some recruits so let's offer scholarships and that's exactly what i was hoping to see in real time the Saban factor we just land an 81 overall gem guard that Saban factor is seriously a game changer as we just snag another guy BJ Goins let's just go down the list couldn't get anyone else at the moment but let's schedule some visits and sure some of the guys that are interested in us let's bring them to Baylor week where we'll take on the 10th seed let's go man our first taste of big 12 action it's conference play and we're going up against the Oklahoma State Cowboys week one lost to Miami week two massive dub we're back on track right where we need to be and our first big 12 game this is a monumental moment talk about playing in a bigger stage than the mountain west right now it's go time you can just feel it out here as the away team we have a tough opponent on the defensive line just wreaking havoc struggled to get the ball out even those last two plays there we go conversion third and nine read option for miller he's got it and some zach miller time baby and bouncing out of that. Continuing to soak up Oklahoma State every chance we get. There's Tim Williams across the middle. This rollout to the right is one of my favorite plays because then you can just tuck it and run. Big third down here. Let's just dump it out to Williams once more. It's a big drive for him here, and we're going to flick this out to the fullback. Hicks fighting forward. The former tight end converted fullback. And we know he's got talent, so let's give it to him again on the carry. Yes, sir. Looking to make a statement here in our first ever Big 12 game. Brown and Oklahoma State have other ideas. Penalties push these guys back and a third and forever to go. It's not gonna go. Running has become significantly harder, I've noticed, and maybe I'm just calling the wrong plays as that's Zach Miller's first interception of the year. That's a bummer. Instead, they stack the line and we're gonna scramble out to the right, dump it to Stone Boston, money. We're here before halftime and I know Oklahoma State wants points. It's just a matter of can they get the ball going down the field? Dude, it's actually scary lining up in this formation because they always do us dirty 
dirty. However, on fourth and goal, Landry's the one doing the dirt. Bringing in a blitz on third down. Yes, defense stops again. This is Penn, just masterclass, three and outs. Brought up a big, crucial fourth down and delivering the crushing blow. This game's over. Turn it on over. G to the G to the G, G, G. Salona Beach comes into Oklahoma gets the job done. Now two win one, Salona Beach gets another test here in the Big 12, going up against the Baylor Bears. This time, Bears from Waco, Texas, coming down to Salona Beach. And oh yeah, did I also forget to mention, this isn't your ordinary Baylor Bear team. They are seventh ranked in the nation. Second and 24, we have a wide open stone Boston. Big third down here, quick strike to Landry. He's open and he's in. Touchdown. At the end of the day, it's a good problem to have as we have so many good Good receivers so like I said that's a good problem and that is a bad problem here deflection interception they have three seconds I don't think they'll get anything out of it though we are going to give up a touchdown and we have to go to work and Cade says just give me a second I'll show you some work we're gonna call the play action clear out here just clear everyone out sling went up to stone Boston and he hauls it in that worked out better than I thought it would we're gonna step up in a big way here getting the hops trying to jump over a man big first down nonetheless and Landry is breaking free through the secondary laying out for the touchdown reception oh man he is special second and inches I'm coming in hot and that is a strip sack fumble they jump back on top of that one but David Barry trying to do some damage and they don't jump back on this one we get another strip sack fumble and recover this time and when it's our ball we do whatever we please and we run out the clock this game's over Nolan Scope player of the game we landed the mother load four big commits I just know I got points and want to spend them we need a new kicker so why not get in the habit of adding them to our board and cool Gabe is the best kicker we found out of the bunch so let's offer him a quick scholarship throw him all the points the ongoing series with Appalachian State continues this season as well and let's head over to their home these guys not doing so hot early in this season so uh, I hate to be the bear of bad news, but it's going to get a whole lot worse. Love it when we come out guns a blazing six for six, now seven for seven, and the big six. Baylor kept us honest last game, and I'm wondering what version of App State we'll see in this one. I want to see the version that gets denied by our defense, and there we go, Gabe White, putting the catching acrobatic skills to good use. Scrambling out to our right. Is anyone going to get open? I'm going to dump it back out across the field, across my body, Tim Williams. And after that catch, he got knocked out. So let's hope he regains his composure. Yeah, this one's trending on the verge of a blowout, if we're being honest. And holy moly, Goodman came in there like a heat-seeking missile. Dude was just standing here all day, and boom. Dang, the pressure came in, but it was no match for Zach Miller and Stone Boston. And no match once more for Stone Boston. He's got a clear step. Just outran everyone in the vicinity. You know, it's a bad day at the office when you're getting burnt by a big tight end. I mean, come on, man. And Landry, that's not like you. Speaking of more points, thar she blows. <laughs> and right, wrong guy. Things got a little bit interesting in this one with a minute left. They scored again. Thankfully, they didn't get their onside kick. Taking it down to the last second, snapping it off. It's a touchdown as time expires. Thanks for hosting us, Appalachian State. We appreciate the hospitality. Here at the halfway point, we have been doing enough to rack up four straight wins after the Miami loss. This time, we're going up against another one-win team at the moment. It's the Arizona State Sun Devils. 2-0 and in Big 12 play. We're looking to take that up to 3-0. and Sure, I'll get outside my comfort zone here just a smidge, and I'll flick it to scope anyway. That was unnecessary. Triple options, I'm telling you. Still got to get the hang of them. Thankfully, Nolan cashes in. In Landry. Dude, I just love the burst to the outside. Stone Boston is wide open. Love to see Landry stepping it up out here as he just continues to get his racks. Been a solid contributor week in week out I know I can count on him and I can count on Dwayne and Cade just as much out the gate extremely hot and that is exactly what the doctor ordered Arizona State out the gate pretty slow and yeah I think they need some help for sure because get the bus warmed up Zach Miller is carrying y'all 
to the exit. In fact, I'd argue we can beat a team like Miami any day of the week. It'd be like a 50-50. Before halftime here, holding it down, not letting the Sun Devils do nothing, and hold the phone. Was not a fan of seeing it looked like Goodman out there lost in space. And yo, a strip sack fumble. Arizona State hurries back to the line, snaps it off. It looks like Chauncey's gonna take it again himself. Well, right when the second half started, Arizona State took it and ran. They scored on one play. Sometimes Sometimes they hit the home run, but it doesn't mean that's going to be the story of the game. The story of the game usually is defined by consistent drives, play in, play out, finding guys like Landry, splitting the defense, and scoring six. Good work from Zach Miller and company. They get it done. Five straight wins. We're rolling in the Big 12 is trembling. And what a difference one week can make. We catapult back into the number two spot, so that means we're still in line for the national championship. Nebraska at number one. That's crazy. But what happened here is Miami. They lost in overtime to Georgia Tech. So hats off to you guys. And I appreciate the assistance there. Lock in because the journey continues right here against Primetime and the Colorado Buffaloes. So far, life after Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter hasn't been all that kind. CU sitting at three and three, one and two in the Big 12. They're looking to bring in guys like Mike Clark to make a difference. But I think Salona Beach has another idea for today. And we're traveling to Boulder on the road, high elevation. We'll soak up any moisture in the atmosphere that we can get and then translate that moisture into energy for the field to take them down. Kicking off the second half of Big 12 play with a handoff to Scope, just getting a solid six. Man, I hope you're all enjoying the action so far. Big 12 football has been fun, yet we're showing we're a dominant powerhouse no matter where we go. That hasn't stopped us moving it so far, and Scope is going to carry this one and finish the drive off. Big six. First and goal, CU threatening, and yeah, he's got him wide open. Castillo making it a little bit of a game, more than we were hoping for. Looking to convert on the third down play oh man we'll just take off Miller's got this and he's got some extra looking to give the Salona Beach faithful something to cheer about and first and goal is looking optimistic so let's just hand it off to scope see if he can make the fans happy so let's go back to the air attack and I'm gonna just lob one up and in more snags it down. So it's up to the O here. Stone Boston potentially as we're getting hit. What a way to come down with it. Now back in a position. Let's go ahead and finish the drive. There he is. True freshman superstar Zach Landry. Give him all of them abilities. He's trying to get up to platinum before he's out of here. Good things come when we dial in and finish. And we're finishing now on both offense and defense. Let's go, boys. Read option. Let's go back to scope. There we go. He's got a nice run and he gets the first. One play away from the red zone or why not one play away from pay dirt. Stone Boston, how you doing? Came out on a mission second half. And that is all she wrote, folks. Salona Beach comes into Boulder takes it over. This is Salona Beach territory now, and we're moving. Will the real primetime football please stand up? We're ready to take on Houston this week. Bring on the Cougars. They're headed down to Salona Beach to get soaked on up. Now, Houston is, in fact, near a body of water. They're used to humidity, used to the ocean, so should have a little bit familiarity. But we'll see if they're ready when a tidal wave comes and takes them out of this town. Let's go ahead and go with a little bit of trickery here, flicking it to our running back. That's right, he's throwing the ball and brother. All right, that did not work according to plan. And oh my goodness, what is going to plan with this defensive swarm? Field goals, who do you think I am? I'm throwing touchdowns all day, baby. And Zach Landry hauls in the first one of this game. I can't get enough of that man. But now it's not just K-State running circles, it's a Salona Beach too. No such thing as a mercy rule in football, but I'm about to show no mercy this entire game. Already passing over 200 yards in the first quarter of play. Say it ain't so, I will not go. Stone Boston, carry me home. I said Stone Boston, carry me home. First and goal. And now to officially top it off, Stone Boston wide open. Big six. They desperately need something to go right this drive. And wow, a one-handed grab, but of course, all their luck. Fourth down. And they're punting. You already know Phillip Rivers. We would have definitely gone for it if that was us in that scenario. And look at that throw on the run. And it's our dog check of the game. Who is going to be 
the dog on this one right here. And it looks like Tim Williams, sneaky linky back in the end zone. Oh, baby, that was so cool. All right, well, this game's pretty much over in my book. I think we got it with another touchdown here. Houston is out of reach. And whoop, there it is. I say whoop, there it is. Oof, they fell in a big way. I don't even see them all the way down to 14. They lost to Minnesota. Ouch. That means it's time to go out and play like a one seed. Time for the road show to hit Cincinnati. We're wearing the limes. You know, we're going to be an eyesight. Maybe some might say an eyesore, but I think the lime and lavender looks good on the boys and it's going to be what is a contributing factor to our win today. It was really just trying to show out for the fans and showing out for the home fans. It's Johnson with the pick. So <laughs> wait, I'm just kidding. It's Dwayne Cade with the recovery. It was all part of the plan. Don't you know? That's exactly what we wanted to happen. Cincinnati must be just having that type of year. Am I right? Third and goal, sending in another blitz. Let's see if anyone gets through. Not in time for Mobley. Touchdown. Bearcats. All right, folks, I decided to bench Harmon because I want to see true freshman David Hall. This is a glimpse at future right here as he has the intangibles, 92 throw power. You're all getting a peek at least this drive of what is in store for Salona Beach. Landry, Hall, connection to the house touchdown that is the future of sponge football right here once zach miller is in the nfl playing on sundays you'll have just as good if not potentially better david hall and zach landry kicking the field goal just makes too much sense but going for it is rmo here we go a little fun stuff here Got a nice wide open Landry. Have yourself a day. I'm thinking if we get some blocks here, we can cash in with a big six on the ground. And that's exactly what we do with Nolan Scope. And enough said about the fourth quarter here. Not much else to see besides, you know, the use here. Six catches, 184 yards, great clip, 30 something yards per catch. One after the other after the other. Bring on the Red Raiders. It's time to wrap. Traveling down to Texas now go from Cincinnati to Texas, Colorado early in the year. We're definitely traveling, I think, to further places in the Big 12. Scrambling to the left. Let's see if anyone wants to take off here. I probably should have thrown it to the other guy, and that was messy. Forced to face the Raiders here in the danger zone, just looking to make a stop, and we do. Looks like the Red Raiders are much more aggressive than other teams, and they go for it, and it fails miserably decked back against the wall again we're gonna look to make a stop however and what just in and out of the four defenders there first and goal they're lining up to cash in and they do looking to get something to go our way it's hicks the fullback x tight end convertee making a big play like i said anyone's a threat out here to step up and make a big play and hello superman i'm telling you this team is a great red zone holding type unit i mean just check it out holly and co dropping that man now that we got that out of our system back to the run game up the middle i needed him most and he came through for me that's exactly what we asked for and tim williams is gonna top it off with the cherry now i need big boy hicks to use every inch of that frame get in there job's not finished we got some defense to play folks and it's gonna get done let's go ahead and run this game out and take one from texas tech now in a position where we're chewing their time outs and we're gonna chew them all a couple yards away from a fresh set and we got it you can write this one good night. The defense should know what's coming. It's a run. Spoiler alert. Touchdown. They don't stop it. And we're unstoppable. That's why Phillip Rivers is the GOAT. The coach was able to turn it around at halftime after it was looking bleak. Make it make sense, man. We won, yet we fall to the number two seed. Because look who's your new number one. Ohio Bobcats. That's right. Bring on them froggies, man. Would like to see if we can salvage a touchdown, please. And thank you, Dwayne Cade. Third and seven. It's a play action. He's got his man, Mueller. Frog's making quick work of us on this drive. I'm actually surprised. Anyways, we got second and goal. Play action. Get deck, son. Oh, you know, it was just your friendly neighborhood defensive end. That's right. You know, it'd be cool. I wish there was like a coach analysis panel that showed you like your most common play calls, successful plays, worst plays, yards per play stuff like that it's first and goal stone boston the red zone threat he is stone cold when it comes within the 20 so it's third and 10 and our defense once again getting her done i'm gonna need all the support from the team just like bone stone cold 
Boston. TCU has literally had no answers for him all day. And look at this. What are they doing? No one wants to play with the big boy, eh? My man already has over 200 yards in just one half of football. At this rate, he'll be setting records if all we do is just keep pumping him. For now, we'll pump our other man, Dwayne Cade. How are you feeling? Yeah, and we're at that point where this close to putting in backups. It's been a rule of the day. King of the gridiron. And added up to 240 six receiving yards two touchdowns for boston right now he also passes his own record for passing yards in a season we still got a couple more to go and whoop there it is i say whoop there it is and oh baby we hit the mother load led by gabe robinson your newest salona beach kicker let's go spread some love to the mountain mamas west virginia it is a cold frigid december icy game there's not much in the air to soak up except frozen water first in goal play action landry attack it's six there's his 11th td of his young season soaking up a lot of time on the clock so the opposition can't do much with it so we like that and we like landry springing into the secondary for a big six when you tack on snow to an already top tier defense you can imagine what's happening on the other side of the ball three and out city whereas for us we really don't mind the situation at all especially guys like landry who don't go up to compete for that one. Play action, why not? See if anyone bites. And the only thing biting there was our offensive line. What does one do on third and 30? Scramble left, maybe buy some time, throw in deep, a risky ball. And yo, what happened to his ribs? So that was a worrying sight to see on the last offensive drive. And I hope he's doing better now as McCullough who Thank you, sir. And out comes David Hall, the future of Salona Beach, but at what cost? Zach Miller going down. However, we're in good hands here with him at the helm. I think the last time we ran a triple option, it ended in disaster. So uh, I'm worried here and it did again. However, Dwayne Cade falls on it for the touchdown. Really not sure why this was all bottled into the last second here because West Virginia just came storming down the field and we just had to put the icicle dagger in them with a the pick by Galdwell. Thankfully, it's a snowy one and we pull it off. David Hall had to finish this one out, did well in relief. Wait, what's going on here? We win again yet fall to third. Am I missing something here? Like, how are we getting outranked by other people? So this shows two, but then on the top left, it shows three. Alabama with two losses. Are you seriously giving them the same amount of points as me? That makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, this really makes no sense to me right now how Alabama gets the tiebreaker. Like, we're in the power four now. This shouldn't be a matter of like, oh, Mountain West, lesser tier. I get, you know, the SEC is usually the toughest conference in all of football, but... Come on, they have two losses. We have one. For now, all I can do is focus on my Big 12 championship matchup here against the number five Baylor Bears. I think a win here against a top five opponent in the championship game has to get us over the hurdle again. Ain't nobody is going to be resting in this one. It's the Big 12 championship game. All starters got to go balls to the wall, guns a-blazing. We want to bid into the national championship game. The best part is not worrying about the snow games like we saw in West Virginia. Cade. Cade. If the running backs aren't getting it done, I think we can go to our friend Stone Boston, the big red zone tight end target. On paper, it's shocking to see Baylor doing this good. Like they're an 80 something overall and we're in the high 90s. That's so why it's always funny when you get this far into a rebuild to see some of the storylines, you'll be surprised at some of the teams that make it up the ranks. Baylor clearly wants to ruin our day, spoil the fun, and I don't want to let it happen. 31, let's bluff it like we're going to send the house and they do send Stanley up the middle anyway for six. So I'm going to sprint back out look at the field connect with williams timmy boy fighting to first and five and just like that we can pound the rock to scope and try to fall in let's go ahead and try it again catch him napping power oh yes no there's no way we take the ball here at the one and not go for it i'm not actually gonna run it i'm gonna pass because i think they think i am gonna run it and yo that worked let's go ahead and hold up that big 12 trophy nowadays it's like that cool wwe belt so i can't wait to see that in the new game no we have no heisman winners but we do win the vince lombardi award for adrian young that's the defensive lineman that took over for john john this year and we did it we made it back to the national championship game going up against the ohio bobcats 81 overall 86 offense 76 defense they're the one seed in the nation this has been crazy last year we beat byu in the national championship and now we get to go up against the ohio bobcats this is the main event everything you've been waiting for 
the whole accumulation of our body of work. It's bobcat football. And I hear cats don't like getting wet, so they better watch out when we start soaking them up. Nothing like testing them, seeing what they're made of with a strike to start the game. Make it two strikes. You know what they say, three strikes and you're out. So let's get strike number three. There it is, touchdown, Zach Landry. And on that touchdown, he broke the school record on yards as a true freshman. First look at this Bobcat offense. They got a star quarterback, star running back, and there he is. Brent has been a running machine this year. Honestly, I'm low-key worried about his run attack, but our defense is a complete unit. Sienna, Ohio here in the championship game has me all like geeked up about the next game. Like imagine taking a team like Ohio to this point. That's really cool. Ohio is trying to make me eat my words right now. And Gabe White says, nah, I'll bail you guys out. Let's get the pick. Gabe White playing early hero in this one. And then it's just right back to work. Nothing different. And chunk after chunk, we just want a little challenge from these guys. Like, is that too much to ask for? Dwayne Cade, touchdown. I think if they're not careful, we're on route here for a Georgia TCU type natty. And they'd stack the box here. It's about the inches line, lobbing it up. Boston wide open. Touchdown. F in the chat for the Ohio Bobcats, man. It's getting bleak for these guys. Ah, sigh. I hope they keep their chin up and try again next year because they have worked hard. But my condolences to the state of Ohio as Salona Beach in San Diego are getting rowdy back-to-back -back championships is insane let alone one the city of san diego got their first one last year let's see what the defense gives them and i think the blitz up the middle is a good call we're ready for castillo it's fourth down chad slasher with his third tfl ohio settled for three just so they can say they got some points in the national championship respect to them for that i mean how many chances do you get to say you played in a national championship game so david's gonna make the most of it find stone boston for an additional pad on touchdown five for five 62 yards in a tutty the final minute of the game david down the field once more it's an air raid to the very end and he's connecting with the other tight end brian williams for a national championship touchdown final seconds of the national championship game two one ohio snaps it handoff draw dropped fourth down that's gonna be it pop the champagne whatever you gotta do we're victorious once more back to back San Diego could not be prouder of Salona Beach. Ohio Bobcats, man, hats off to you guys for getting this far. Uh, it's got to sting. You know, I was there once two years ago. I never want to look back on that moment again because it's been only up since then. Philip Rivers, you're the GOAT. Way to turn this no-name program into something and there was no doubt about this one guys looks like there's a special trophy for back-to-back -back national champs and look at that salona beach has got it now up to 72 and 34 after eight years with salona beach and we got some pros up in here kevin goodman a second round pick tim williams a third round receiver scott osborne in the third round as a linebacker eric muse didn't even play that much more of like a fill in plug and play type guy still got a fifth round pick that just just shows you how deep the defensive line was. And then, of course, Nolan Scope, a seventh round flyer, might surprise some teams. Two recruits on our list still Sean Gooden, a five star athlete, 80 overall. He's got extremely high man in zone coverage, as well as good speed, good catching, route running. He's a dual threat. As well as 79 overall middle linebacker out of high school with 90 tackle, 85 speed, high 70 power and finesse moves. Like, what else could you ask for? We asked and we received. We got our two guys. And Salona Beach did it. The number one signing class in all of college football again. You see that right? Maxed out prestige stars. If y'all thought this last season was good, I mean, just look at the training results. So many 90s. Our last defensive coordinator got plucked for a head coaching job. So we got a new one and he is pretty talented himself. Off the rip, 20 skill points. Squared away in our second year here in the Big 12. Look at all the five stars and four stars that want a piece of this. Young guys like CJ Smith from Brighton, Colorado, the safety 82 overall gym want to be mentored by stars of today's college football landscape here in Salona Beach. It's just one of those cases where it feels like the rich keep getting richer. Preseason number one, rightfully so, after back-to-back -back championships, we got an A-plus overall, A-plus offense, A-plus defense. Doesn't look like I can sort, but I don't think anyone else is an A-plus. All right, just kidding, it looks like 
LSU got the rating too. Real question is how is Texas 36th in the preseason poll with a solid A? Preseason All-Americans up in here, Zach Miller, Zach Landry, the Zach to Zach connection, man. It's stone cold and it's a first team All-American bid. Add Tim Hawley, Adrian Young, and Gabe White, three more first teamers. And there may be just one second team All-American, but his presence can't be denied. It is stone the bone cold Boston. Here is overwhelming evidence when you get to this point in a dynasty rebuild, you can rest easy. We have a outlook of being a championship contender, number one for the next four years. Salona Beach is truly a magical place when you got guys like Justin Muhammad, six foot four defensive tackle, four star, 79 overall gem committing to us in week one. And check it out, what other college football team is quite built like this? I don't care what era, what decade, the Salona Beach sponges are goaded 99 across the board it's really just more bleeding for the bobcats i mean we're just creating wounds that are unhealable and i hate to be that guy but i'm gonna be that guy i don't know who is gonna stop us with 99s all over the place i mean look at stone boston just run away from every defender just making it look easy out here and look at that the 95th passing touchdown of his career breaks his own record of course but uh, he'll be way over 100 when it's all said and done. Well, shoot, I'll be darned. They come out and try to punch us in the mouth. Bobcat offense is rolling, and they got all the way that far for all that. Efficient work by this unit after our blunder. Anderson just takes it in. 7-7 seven, seven ball game, not looking to make the same mistake, so just gonna take the easy handoff there and get the first. Yet to call some guys' names today like Landry, but there he is. Donning the number one on his jersey. He was number one, and Zach Miller was number two. Touchdown. Love me a good physical run just like that. Keeping the Bobcats in this one much closer than we liked to. They're about to score. And score, we will not allow it. We allow it. Not trying to give up any points whatsoever. Reese all over that lockdown defense. If you told me I'd only be up by one point against Ohio a few years ago, I'd be laughing but no these new look bobcats are the real deal i am impressed by what i see just like i'm impressed by zach miller in his burst this year is a new him and he just broke the single game rushing record it goes to show our best rusher was only 114 yards before that bobcats in danger it's the two minute drill can they muster anything together fourth and nine looming time to step it up here on defense the slip screen that's not gonna work buddy put your hands together for the salona beach sponges you're defending national champs defend their honor here at home battle of the beaches it's west coast versus east coast coastal carolina the chanticleers going up against the salona beach sponges this rivalry was a little bit more back and forth in the beginning but as you may know over the last handful of years it's pretty much been a stalemate for coastal they haven't been able to make any progress and yeah well we're forced to rely on this 99 overall defense yet again and look who's there adrian young preseason all-american got to slow down there when we're taking on coastal in a rivalry game can't take anything for granted one of the only true freshmen on this roster touchdown jeremy rogers from oakland california Roger Roger. Isn't it beautiful? We're in year nine of the rebuild and we're still out here making magical moments like we're at Disneyland. We're in the business of making stars and that is exactly what we've been doing the last handful of years. In the Battle of the Beaches, it's eat or be eaten. If I'm not doing it to you, who will? Dwayne Cade, senior season. He's having a fast start. And one thing has led to another. We're back over midfield and we're pushing for more. Uh, we're going to go for six points and it's right there. Chris Hicks, just for funsies. We're going to go ahead and get another touchdown just watch Landry does the rest thank you sir and you can put it on the board it is a big win Salona Beach fans are just beside themselves man because we have owned the battle for the beaches for as long as I can remember man a lot of our targets are ready to come see us so we hooked up all the recruits with VIP passes to watch this Jayhawk beatdown trust me if he's not a round one pick one in the NFL draft I don't know what teams are doing it really was just domination from top to bottom as Cade gives us the big six opening drive touch down what's new i don't know man what's new is a school receiving touchdown record Dwayne cade i was just trying to make it seem like zach miller really is under no duress whatsoever but maybe he needs to 
uh, pick up the anticipation a little bit and not throw picks. I believe in forgiveness and second chances, and it's really easy to me when Zach Miller can respond to Stone, Cold, Boston. When in doubt, just go to the wide open streaking receiver, Dwayne Cade, touchdown. Expect something different to happen. And off the back foot, Stone, Boston. Oh my goodness, it worked out like uh, we wanted it to. Inches away, I'm hurrying up to the line. I'm force feeding this to Stone Cold Boston. I don't care, make me do something different because I'm not. And there we go, it's time to hit the beach. We got the win, all the fans can start making their way to the exit. This sold out crowd is gonna go catch a wave right after this big dub. Hey yo, CJ Smith, Tim Muhammad, Lance Edwards, Travis McCullough, who Dan Sullivan, Mark Taylor, Ross Moore, you guys are all coming to Salona Beach. I'm telling you, over here at Salona Beach, we have a really aggressive recruiting strategy. We bring them in early, wine and dine them, and say, hey, we need you to make up your mind within the next week because we only take certified winners here. It's a sign of the times for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They got spanked, as you see here. They got exposed 41 to 17 to Northwestern. So a look at the polls would show you that Cal is on the move up. We can send Nebraska in a spiral once we get our hands on them here. But low key, I'm kind of impressed. 95 offense, 92 defense. It's a solid Nebraska rebuild. Who's ready to rumble? I'm ready to rumble. And just like that, I think we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves a broken play touchdown. Got it done the first time. How about another time running into a wall? Nebraska actually gets the stop. Looking to hold fast here against Nebraska's offense. They are driving right on down the field. And that was Kenyon Johnson, one of their top receiving options out there, number 11. And he's a 97 overall. He is a difference maker for the Cornhuskers, but so is the defensive line. Chad Slasher bringing him down. They're dealing with a case of missed field goals. That is always a unfortunate situation to be in. Winding down the clock in this one, going to Roger, meet Roger. That is the true fresh. And just like that, that's right, another first down. Joe Davis plucked it out of the air, and he's going to also finish. Touchdown, Joe Davis. One ranked opponent to the next. It's the Baylor Bears, sixth ranked. We're headed to Texas. Bears got to do a lot in this one. They're 4-0 in the young season, but they're going to have to pull every stop in the book. Opening look here against the Bears. The pressure is just swarming. Shout out to the Lime and Lavender that came to travel and watch their team play today. Like, that is some commitment. And man, that is a poorly committed ball interception. Not exactly the opening drive we had in mind as McIntosh is going to take it himself first in goal. Wow. Two plays and a touchdown. Looking to cap it off. A quick little dump to Stone. He's holding on. That man is so reliable. Figured if we can get through these guys and anyone in the early slate, we'll have a clean second half coast to the championship game once more. Two minute drill in effect. We can go and cook and Landry wants to kick it off in a major way. Joe Davis says, I gotcha. Our boy Joe Davis getting us right here. And then Stone Cold Boston is already at three touchdowns in the first half. Heck, with five seconds left, anything can happen here on this last Hail Mary play. So why not try it out? And it did work to perfection. Zach Landry hauls it in as time expires in the half. We really out here like the all-time Alabama team or something because no one can stop us. We're up 30. 34 to 7. It's against the sixth team in the nation. There's us and then everyone else. I think we're on a whole nother planet. Trust me, you best believe I am prepped for it as Adrian Jung just seals the dang deal. I'm gonna call a read option here. Zach Miller, little spin cycle, and shoves a man down. Still going. Looking for some final whipped cream and cherries. It's a touchdown from Landry. Offside on the defense. It's seriously just too easy right now. Racking them up one by one watching them fall down Arizona State's next in line forks up or forks down in this one time will tell the big 12 expansion is going to be interesting to watch play out in the regular season this upcoming fall as Stone Boston says, well, I'll show you a little sneak peek. Arizona State is not going to be all that great. Marching right back down the field, you can get a sense of where this one is headed early as Miller does the rest. How do you do? Can they convert on this big play? And holy moly, how did Henry just burn our DB like that? Never fear, Zach Miller is here after all, and he's back with 
a vengeance touchdown. With a nose for the end zone, we are back and in a big way looking for that six. So on first and goal, we're gonna stretch it to the right. Tony Wiggins, it's a walk-in touchdown. And on this play right here, I believe this is where the game is over. Same place, same play, same result. To the right, Wiggins walking it in. You're not dreaming, it's another blowout. If you didn't believe me, here is more proof. Eli getting in on the action too. Still don't believe me? Well, fine. How about this? Is that enough proof? Touchdown Avery from David Hall. Really? You're not astounded by what you see? How about now? Touchdown Zach Landry from David Hall. Gotta let the backup defense eat too, so catch these reps from our second stringers. Even they had no problem closing out this game. Coach Prime had a hard time finding words to inspire his boys before this game as Colorado is headed into Salona Beach. Sco Sponge, because you could do anything here on your sunny warm weekend yet you choose to tune in to Salona Beach Football. That's love there and we love to give back to our city. And I'm gonna go ahead and start the giving with a big touchdown. That's my initial thought. Joe Davis, way to start off the fun. Colorado has their offense here past midfield looking for something short and sweet and Thomas pushes and gets that extra cushion. Let's see if those hard-earned yards come to help and nope it really did not. Playing true to our 99 overall, it has been a load of fun. The first half of the season has been textbook, gone according to the plan and some. I'm starting to see why Zach Miller decided to come back to college. He wanted to play with this roster and put up a Heisman season. And honestly, I don't blame you. You only get to experience college once. You got your whole professional career ahead of you. Point being, he had a chance to come back and soak it up with his boys, and he did just that. Zach attack once again on the ground, cutting in and out out left and right we really have a knack for taking people out of the game and not even giving them a chance the show must go on seven and oh see you's out of here salona beach is just continuing this onslaught this time salona beach is headed down to houston texas truly up to something special this year at seven and oh check it out the number one ranked offense and number one ranked defense we'll go ahead and hit the play action find our man stone bone cold boston for the second quarter is is up. I have to find a way to get some more points. Going all the way across and completing it. We finished the mega play. 20 seconds. That's all that went off the clock. We have yet another opportunity to score. MVP. MVP. Little dump off to Wiggins. I am once again to reiterate on the hardest difficulty Hardest sliders, realistic sliders, and yet it's still like a cake. The rebuild has been complete for some time. We're seriously just on a victory lap. Fourth 10 looming, no sweat whatsoever. Just gonna let it fly to Joe Davis burning a star cornerback. And dude, I don't think there's anyone on this Cougar defense that can hang with any of our guys. Bearcats want to play spoiler on the perfect season. Heisman campaign continues with a strike to Blake Williams. Touchdown. We are up. Looking for a little redemption after that unfortunate mishap. Boston comes through like he does. Stone Boston honestly is going to go down as one of the greatest tight ends in school history as Joe Davis is in the end zone. Third and 12. It's about that time when the defense has got a two touchdown cushion. They really just put it in coast. A shutout looming and the boys coasting. We decided to go the backup route early in this one. Seeing a couple new faces out here like number 11 Rivera hauling that one in. We don't get to call his name very often. I know that's right. And here at first in goal, we'll just hit Rogers, the freshman tight end, does the rest. Backup defense just holding on here to whatever last little gap that this Cincinnati offense is trying to do. And on fourth and nine, this is the last play of the game. It's a handoff draw, turnover, shutout, complete. Thank you very much. Six and O oh in the Big 12 this season. Fun fact for y'all, we haven't lost in Big 12 play since coming over from the Mountain West. That is unheard of. All right, so first request I had was to comment your favorite memory in Salona Beach history. Second request was your favorite jersey combination. What drip? was the most heat. 
and now I got one more for y'all. Since we've played just about a decade when this thing is all said and done, think of your favorite all-time decade teams. Where does Salona Beach land on the list? Are they your number one or not quite? Does someone have them beat? Because I know this run is going down in the books. I just want to know how far it falls on your list. And stick around because you already know I'm going to try to recreate Rock Boston's elite touchdown with Stone Boston at some point in the season. But they got to take into account it's just unneeded. Like the dominance is too good that we don't need extra stats in time. We are getting into crunch time this season. Just a couple games left until it's championship weekend and we're sharp and smooth and clean as a whistle. Scoring with 13 seconds left. Improbable. Yes. Impossible. No. Take three seconds off the clock. It's T minus 10 and we got a wide open stone cold Boston, this man is a killer. Looking to put some finishing touches on it. Eli Anderson bursting through first and goal. Yeah, honestly, it's another extremely decisive outcome. Is it a surprise to anyone? That's a wrap. Zach Miller, without a doubt, player of the game again. And the dude will not come down from this high. At this point, just counting down to the playoffs, we're taking on TCU in Fort Worth. A rainy one here against the Frogs. Didn't expect the Frogs to come at it with this much oomph, but that's okay. We'll bounce back. Ball this close to the end zone, really, we probably should just run it, but I'm just going to dump it to Anderson mistake. It's plays like that where Zach Miller was prioritizing the Heisman campaign over the win because he wants passing touchdowns. Defense tightening up here, just trying to use the rain and any element we can to our advantage. It's a little dumbfounding how they're getting like absolutely all the time in the world. No pressure on any of them. Not about to let the Horn Frog spoil our season. As the rain continues to trickle down here on the field, Stone Boston still sure-handed. Just going to get ourselves a quick fumble ruski here. And we had a wide open slants. However, when we line up to the line, our O-line is booty. That's one thing that hasn't changed over nine years of Salona Beach football. Another grand opportunity here just to chuck one up. And no, TCU trying to return the favor and it connects. Oh my gosh, they caught it. Thankfully down short. Anyone will do. That is the man we needed. Joe Davis coming through once more at the inches line. We're just going to call a speed option and take it, flick it out to Anderson. He's got it. Touchdown. Through the rain, they are going deep, and they got Heron, man. I'm impressed. These guys really decided to step it up today. It is one of our first big challenges in a long while. Forcing third and goal. What will they do with their chance? Just walk out of bounds. So they're content with keeping their three points there, and we want more cushion. Joe Davis has really stepped up in a big way this game, and now I was looking for Landry and Powell intercepts. Suddenly the frogs have three minutes to work and they're only down by five. But you snooze, you lose. They had a chance and they could not come through and we finish it off with the first down. This might get me in trouble, but I'm going to play for some Heisman stats now. I'm going for the touchdown. Dwayne Cade. And what a way to finish the job. The season finale right here at home against West Virginia. Senior day for guys like Zach Miller. This is a emotional day full of joy, jubilee, but also just some sadness from fans that'll miss their favorite player on Saturdays. False start pushes these guys back just a handful of yards, giving us opportunity to bring in the heat. Everyone playing their part right now, and trust me, if I get enough cushion in this game, you might see Stone Boston slinging it for a minute. We successfully secured some of that cushion we were looking for. However, West Virginia is looking to get some of it back. Big second and goal opportunity there for Howell to complete. Crunch time is when we get in our element and look at Landry going up, making the contested snag a 1v1 ball. He's better. I think now's a fitting time at the goal line to pull in Stone Boston. QB extraordinaire, 40 overall. He's got speed. He's got strength. Let's see what he can do. And there he is, QB extraordinaire with an arm brace. That's right. He is decked out, ready to go, lobbing one up, and not going to connect. I think when in doubt, we can scramble. Stone Boston's got some of the tools to run. And are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? He found Joe Davis, and Joe Davis just made the most acrobatic catch in this world for that thing. Look at that wobbler, and look at that Spider-Man Lee. Oh man, it's poetic. Younger brother can now share something special with his older brother, a touchdown pass. Senior day was sweet, but a Big 12 title's even sweeter. We started Big 12 conference play with Kansas Jayhawks, and look who's back to meet us 
in the championship game. Time to put it all on the line. It's the Big 12 championship game. The mission is to come out and play his heart out as Landry with the burners. He's out of here. Touchdown, Salona Beach. My goodness. That's how you kick off the Big 12 championship with some fireworks. And we're playing hard to defend our national championship, to defend our one seed. It's all on the line, man. Everything has been personal this year. Back on the attack. Interested to see if we have as much ease as the last drive. And this is going to be a contested ball. Yeah, floated up there too long in the wrong spot. If we can clean that up, we'll be golden. And I'm wondering if that's going to affect his... Heisman campaign as we just throw another one. And here they come past midfield. Can't escape this hungry defensive line. Tim Hawley got that one and Chad Slasher had the first one. So two senior defensive ends. Maybe I can convince the committee with this last touchdown to Stone Boston there. We hold on in the big game here. Not sure why that Salona Beach was doing the Gator clap, but hey, I'm not going to say nothing. They're celebrating, having a good time. We've won two Big 12 championships since joining last year, and we're headed to the big game, looking for a three-peat, our fourth appearance in a row, but looking for the three-peat. It's always a good day when you host up the Big 12 trophy. Philip Rivers, man, is racking up the hardware, bringing this school a lot of money and a lot of pride. No way. Salona Beach, Zach Miller finishes as runner up in the Heisman race. Adam Griffin from Oregon State had an otherworldly year. Are you serious? 2,300 rushing yards, 27 touchdowns. This man was a workhorse. Zach Miller was, however, a unanimous first team All-American, and so was Stone Boston. Throw in half the defense, why don't you? Chad Slasher, Adrian Young, Trent Christian, James Reese, Jamie Stone, and David Smith. I forgot to mention the Heisman winner, Adam Griffin, with a 2,300 rushing yards, is only a redshirt sophomore. Gotta shout out our second team All-Americans as well. Even freshman all Americans cracking the list. Okay, let's go. That leads us to the big game, the moment we've all been waiting for against the Wisconsin Badgers. Looking for the three-peat. Salona Beach trying to etch their name in the history books, trying to be the best dynasty out there in the world. Here we go. We're playing at the site of the Rose Bowl National Championship game. Wisconsin's going to be a comparable foe. Nothing like Ohio Bobcats or the BYU Cougars. In fact, I think Wisconsin will be a challenge, but Salona Beach has rose up to any challenge so far this year. I'm gonna keep it on the ground here on a big third down, and Zach Miller is off to the races. National Championship Edition. Can he go all the way? 70 yards, that's quite far, sir. Let's see if Zach Miller's still tired or if he has the sea legs underneath him to finish, and yeah. He does. Third and five, bring on the Badgers, man. It's a handoff draw. Mitchell just lowering the shoulder, running through. And as it stands, they're running right through our defense to get into first and goal territory. Wisconsin now looking at second and goal, going with a read option of their own. And geez, that was open. Third and goal, I am not gonna be able to plug it defense was not able to step in. So back and forth we go. We trade initial blows early in this one and way to stay up, man, and resist the blow. The one seed versus the two seed, it really is going to be determining who is deserving of the crown. After all the blood, sweat, and tears in a rebuild, going for a three-peat is truly the ultimate crown. It signifies that you left no stone unturned, no pun intended, as Stone Boston takes the pitch. And speaking of Mr. Stone Cold, there he is again. He got us close. Now, I just need Wiggins to get Wiggy with it, and he does. All the way down to first and goal. Miller finishes it off. Big touchdown, tying this one up. And when it rains, believe me, it pours, and Miller is pouring it on with the legs. That's his third rushing touchdown of the day. His arm hasn't been all that impressive against the secondary, but he's doing it on the ground. Stepping up where it needs to be done, and the defense does it yet again. They have come through the last couple drives. Four for four in the red zone when we've been able to get down here, and we're looking to make this a five for five in the back of the end zone. Joe Davis squeaks it in, and it's the waning minutes of the championship game. We're in clock management mode. We have the lead, just need to kill the clock, and Stone Boston just says, let's kill the switch and end this thing once and for all. Third year in a row. Honestly, I can only imagine what it would be like if you went to school during this period of time or if you just lived in the city. Like it's got to be a absolute high right now that you just never want to come down from the clouds. It's unbelievable, man. Like just winning three natties in a row, let alone one, has got to feel great. And think about this. Zach Miller was this close 
from being a quarterback to win four national championships in every year of his eligibility. He lost the first game, uh, remember that, in his freshman season. But he gets MVP nonetheless in this game, de- well-deserved, and I could not be more proud of Salona Beach hosting up the trophy. Only three seniors graduated, and the rest are going pro. That's right. We got so many of them. There's also three juniors trying to declare early, and I got to stop him. Let's sway him that the college degree is worth it, and yeah, he's staying. Hicks as well. I want to keep him around. And then, of course, Stone Boston. We need to run it back one more time. And hold up. I missed this. There's a sophomore declaring too. That is very rare to see and we convinced him to stay as well. The NFL draft came and went, and man, it was a movie for Salona Beach alum and fans alike. Five spanking first round picks, that's right. Starting off with Zach Miller, arguably round one pick, one talent. Then you got the whole defensive line and Adrian Young, Tim Hawley, and Chad Slasher. Dwayne K, the six foot three receiver, first round talent. Jamie Stone getting a cool second round pick. Garrett Ward in the fourth round, Eli Anderson in the fifth round, and Daryl Caldwell in the seventh. Notre Dame outdid us this year on signing day we still managed to pull in the second best class training results are in and our unit is absolutely stacked once more check out guys like gabe white here up to 99 speed but dude this list is thick of talent into year 10 we got some preseason all americans stone boston greg mcintyre and trent christian landry getting his name out there on the second team list with our guy david smith the safety from wyoming as promised for the salona beach faithful i give you a rundown here of how year 10 goes for our guys got to make of key players that are into their senior season as well as some fresh names into the mix to pass the baton off to so i'm curious to see how the season went and i hope you're ready for some rapid fire action because this is how it went down started off 1-0 with the 42-21 victory in the battle of the beaches met a familiar foe in the battle for san diego and improved to 2-0 after a 35-0 shutout invited clemson to salona beach and the defense held at the goal line on the final drive 21-17 took the business to ku 47-16 K-State came to Salona Beach. It was a defensive game all around, 17-7 sponges. Backup Sean White pinch hit at quarterback and got it done, 37-17. Dion fears this one matchup, and this year was no different, 41-6. 7-0, yet we fall in the ranking to number 4. 0-8, Houston stood no chance in this one. Injuries forced nail biters, barely got past NC, 27-21. Getting really close for comfort, sponges sneak past the Red Raiders, 24-20. 10-0, and looking for number 11, David Hall returns from injury and gets it done. Finishing the season on the road, against West Virginia. Sponges soak up the snow and a close 35-32 victory. Perfect season in year 10 led to a Big 12 title game against Oklahoma State and with that win, we're now three-time Big 12 title winners. The national championship yet again. Fifth appearance in a row looking for the four-peat all the experience for the underclassmen has paid off as there were no nerves in this game. In fact, trick plays were flying and Salona Beach dominated. It was a 48-21 to final and Salona Beach did it again. No one has won four undisputed back-to-back titles. Yale and Minnesota had three, but four, this is a first. And check out this trophy Philip Rivers gets to add to his collection, the four in a row. If you had any questions about how this season went, well, check out the first team All-Americans. There were a lot of them, including freshmen, Omar and Stan, the defensive line has been a hallmark for Salona Beach for as long as I can remember. Additionally, a couple second team All-Americans cracked the list. I see you guys. You're not forgotten. And yes, of course, freshman All-American count just as much. By the numbers, David Hall had a pretty good 21 touchdown season and Sean White filled in for 11. Wiggins with a great year on the ground, over a thousand yards and 15 touchdowns. Andrew Robinson stepped it up for nine sacks. Omar, the freshman, 22 TFLs, seven sacks. And then Stan only had three sacks but 25 TFLs. There's Gabe White bouncing back to the star DB I know. Three picks. And wow, what a fitting way to put a bow on the Salona Beach story. We cracked the 100 win threshold. Philip Rivers, congratulations, you stud. That was an incredible career. And look at the run, man. Starting in 2016 is really when the tide turned around, but 2017 and on were double-digit win seasons. Six straight conference championships and four straight national championships, unheard of. And one extra cherry on top to send you all off. Look at the draft board. We had eight first round picks in this year's NFL draft. Tony Wiggins, Trent Christian, Gabe White, Blake Williams, Greg McIntyre, Joe Davis, Tim Cooper, and Stone Boston. Can't forget about second rounder Carson Bynum, third rounder Chris Hicks, 
third rounder David Smith, and seventh rounder Andrew Robinson. One more national championship trophy in the best draft class we've ever had in Salona Beach history, sending eight guys in the first round. That is like on average, every fourth pick in the first round was one of our guys. Such a fitting end to cap off our dynasty, man, and I hope you soaked it up, enjoyed it, every moment of this. I had such a joy and pleasure to bring it to y'all. Shout out to everyone that helped make this team possible from Arrowhead, from a design perspective and Gridiron Pictures from an editing perspective. I appreciate all the support I got along the way. And if you've been soaking it up with your boy King Sponge to this point, consider hitting that subscribe button. It makes a world of a difference. And I got plenty of fresh college football bangers right around the corner, including some absolute heater new series for EA Sports College Football 25. Keep it here.